Hey, 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 hey! Good afternoon, good evening, good night, or good morning, depending on where you are watching this very special Q Corner Convention 2021! QCC 2021! Can you believe it? It's finally here. We've been waiting an entire year! And we're finally back to it. One year. One year. What? One year of this craziness. Oh, yes. So, first of all, let's just say um, cheers. There we go, cheers. Thanks for joining us. First cup of tea of many. Absolutely. Um, somebody just said there that watch on the TV and on the computer so they can follow the chat. Uh, most TVs now, you can actually watch the chat. You've just got to switch it on. Um, it's an option. Watch it on, on there. both because there's going to be two streams at any time. Anyway, also, so. as well as that, to get through the entire 72 hours back to back, you're going to have to have it on different devices. So, why not? Yeah, you're going to have to go and make a cup of tea at some point. Are we excited for part one? I am. I know, I'm looking at these pictures some of the from things behind are coming us. Up. Uh, we've got so much exciting. And what we've got as well is in the wings, for those that are here, we've got a few of our uh, friends from Zoom here. Oh. Don't worry, kind of in front of them all. It's just my back shoes up. caught oh, my other shoe under can you do the desk. Over thing so that what? they can see everybody. Yeah, because I got my shoes stuck again. Have you? Three oh, times I knew that was sound. Happen. Here we go. Look at that. Hi, everybody guys. wave. What's, you a, can... what's a smart oh. jumper? I like it. I like it. Look There's our friends on on Zoom. Just wave on there. There's a bit of a delay, so you start waving now, and everybody can see you, and then you'll see yourself there wave in the future. <laughs> it's like a time machine. Wow. Would, who would have thought? It's like you know what's going to happen. Absolutely. But and I can see happen. that we have quite a few of our instructors on there. People that are... Uh, oh, look, there we go. Now see, we now Tina's more. joined in. You can follow that link. In fact, um, I can't see let, me, let me see if I can do... They keep moving. I know. This... Let it's me kind of see it. if you want to if you want to join in with that. We can go to here. Uh, I think. Are you going to share it? Yeah. I, I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to, so we can get as many people on there as possible. We'll fill it all people up. People are there. People are gone. Uh, one of them. We'll invite there. We'll do. I'm like the that Union Jackish. That work. That's Craig, right? It uh, is. He's a new instructor for uh, this year. For the 2021. In fact, uh, 2021. There we go. I send that. Does it work? That's us. What's us? <laughs> Hi, yeah. You're right. We're back on. What happened there? Did that work? No. Might have done. 
Could have done. That wasn't what we wanted to do. What were you doing? I was doing that. What were you doing? There, I sent the link. It's gone yeah, already it up the chat. The chat moves so fast, right? <laughs> it's wicked. It is. it is. Um, right, okay. Let's go back to us, Tom. There's more people that are just appearing in the there background. There we go. On there. That's what I, I want it. that down. It's back. It's uh, in. It's there. Yeah. Oh, do you know what I think we do need, though? What's that? I'm going to show you what we need. I know. And can I do it from here? How should I do it? Are you ready for it? Yeah, there we go. Set up. Look at this. Officially, the beginning of the Q Corner 2021. We came um, prepared this year, though. Hiding. We were yes. prepared. What One, did we be prepared with? Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Also, Check. as well as down here, got to stay hydrated. I have a bottle of we water, do. which is handy as well. What we else? have new chairs. <laughs> new chairs. Yeah, our old we chairs. We suffered last year. Yeah. That's all I'm uh, going to say. We yes. suffered. This, these ones even have lumbar support. Yeah, and that's important. It wasn't the lumbar that I had problems with. Yes. So. Uh, yes. That we need that for it. We need uh, we need snacks as well. We do. I've got, have we got snacks. snacks. I've got snacks. I've got, I've snacks? got, I've got snacks. What? I've got uh, some. Uh, What's this? A tea bag on a stick. Why would you want a tea bag on a stick for? All snacks taste better when they're on a stick. Is that true? Always. Mm. So we got some skittles and we got some other stuff over here. Yeah, but we have too. snacks on sticks. That's really the way to go, important. people. That's, That's the way to go. Uh, it's executive snacks. Those Ooh, snacks on yeah. sticks. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Tea bag on a stick. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, should we get some stuff on the road, Dom? Well, we've got three days, so we have got. But some... we have got a lot to squeeze into three days. Well, I tell you what we'll do is first of all, um, what about have we got a, a special friends ready? We have got special friends ready. They we are have. Up, ready to go. So, um, what we're going to do is, for the moment, we're going to say bye bye to our friends on that are watching on Zoom. Actually, we should join them because there's also a behind the scenes camera that uh, the guys on Zoom saw Ooh. earlier. Look, there's uh, us in the studio right now. See, we are real. We are. It's true. And I'm really having a cup of tea on there. Uh, so you know it's good for us because we know what's coming up. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we've got our friends no over there on Zoom. You guys, you guys won't, don't need to go anywhere. And in fact, on Zoom, what we'll do is we'll actually keep the uh, the studio cam running for a while on there. Why not? Why not? Uh, Just we shall uh, uh, scratching your face. Or yes, like have a, have a, a visit from a couple of friends. Yes. How about that? We can do that. Can we? Let's see if we can uh, link in. Yeah. Enjoy I'll be ready. a message from Ted and Betty. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Qualtech Balloon Professionals and Affectionados. Are you ready for another superb Q Corner convention? Oh my goodness, Ted. Do you realize it's going to be three whole days? Oh, but, wow. oh, but before we get started, got us a lot of thank yous to do. You know, I have to thank Dom and Keith. They are such, they have such energy and they're such advocates for the balloon industry. They are so, they, they just are leaders. And you know what? Do you know how many instructors we have? We have 80 instructors this time, wow. 80. And they represent 10 different languages, 22 countries and so many of them are really new, and they are new instructors. And diversity, you talk about diverse people. People are going to get so excited because they're going to learn things and see things that they haven't seen before. This is so exciting. I am just, oh, I'm just excited. <laughs> All spearheaded by the real Energizer Bunnies. To Dom and Keith, they are fantastic, as Betty said. But you know, we're coming off of a pretty tough year. I know it's been a tough one for everyone. Yeah. Uh, it's been mixed uh, with a lot of uh, uh, very difficult times, a lot of tears, uh, and a lot of struggles. But you know, one of the things that, that has come through so loud and clear, the love of balloons worldwide is still, uh, still living so strongly. 
and it is so exciting to be part of this world. We're so proud to be part of an industry that's represented by great people like yourselves uh, and by the kind of customers that are looking for us to deliver joy and happiness for them. You know, Ted, you, I couldn't have said it better. That's really why we're putting the convention together. And you know, I have to thank Susan, uh, Shani, they, and so many others. I look around and I think, oh my goodness, so many people are so excited and, and thrilled and they volunteer their time to really essentially share what they have learned from others during these difficult times. Uh, it's, it's been a tough year, but people have learned a lot and they're so willing to essentially share what they have learned during that time. I, I'm, it, it's just, it's amazing. It, it warms my heart. Well, we're certain you're gonna find the classes to be inspiring in every single way, instructive for your businesses day to day, and profit, profitably useful in how you conduct your business and how you make sure that delivers uh, the kind of profitability that we're all looking for. So, so you know, we know we're all still in the, essentially the pandemic, but we want to make sure that everybody stays healthy. That's number one. We, we want everybody to come through this, uh, and we know that not everyone has. So please stay healthy. And what we're looking for more than anything else is seeing you all in person one of these days. Very soon. We hope. Take care. Love you all. And have fun. Have fun. At this great convention. Oh, well, we're going to have fun too. You bet. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you very much. Mr. and Mrs. Qualitex, as somebody said yes. in the chat, Mr. and Mrs. Qualitex. The awesome Ted and Betty. Uh, so, you know what they, need? they need one of these, Keith. They do. And what's that all about, Dom? We were just going to that talk about that. That's a really good point. What? It's our golden heart, a golden nugget. It is. It's a golden nugget. It's just something that means something special to you guys as a balloon artist. Um, and basically, if you see something that you like, uh, throw on the golden nugget and you can have little bursts or we could do a so if you've never been on. on the q corner convention before or you've not followed along with q corner the golden nugget came about on last year's convention yeah. and it's something that you can put into the chat to say you know what that was a fantastic piece of information or that was a fantastic comment that was just something that meant a lot to you yeah. so that's why you'll often see the golden hearts there in the chat it's just everyone's way of saying Thanks. That that's a great tip, great idea, great design. It can mean whatever it is to you. Absolutely, because originally the golden nuggets for us is when we used to go on training courses, yep. um, full days or just when lessons. we were allowed out. Yes, um, we would go to that course just to pick up one piece of information. That's all we would want is one piece of information, and that was our golden nugget. And we would look. It was a it was a nugget of gold. It was something that we could take and inspire us or put in place into our own business and have a positive and measured effect. That's, That's right. what it was and It could be something about. that could improve efficiency. It could be something that inspires you. It could be absolutely anything. But that one thing that we could take away, that was always our golden nugget. Absolutely. Uh, and that's what we really want to convey. You know, you might see some guys today, you may have seen, I don't know, that design before. But actually, the technique that they're doing to make the design, that's the golden nugget. Mm -hmm. It can be anything. Because some of the things that these guys are sharing, uh, very, very, very thoughtful uh, yes. ideas in there as well. So and um, we really appreciate the time they put in. Yes, absolutely. I think um, the guys at Balloonland actually put a nice post uh, over there about explaining about the golden nugget and yes, what they it did. meant. Uh, so thank you for that. It was uh, it was a really nice post. It that was we a great golden nugget it. moment. It was. It was a great golden nugget. Moment. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, there thank we go. you guys out there. Uh, so what we're going to do so is um, we're going to say it. Say look. Uh, there, that's the studio cam. So if you're on Zoom, you can see the studio cam as well. Look at that. There's, look, there's me. Look. Up there. We've got instructors. Who we got? That's you. We've got Up Uwe there. from uh, Germany. Not one of our instructors, but a guy that I've seen that we, we've known for a long time as well. So it's really nice to see you, buddy. Uh, we've got these two jokers. We've got Alessandro from Italy. We've got Su Chin, who looks after China and other areas across there. We've got this guy from Belgium. 
It's like uh, your country. I, I think he's, yeah, he's, he'll be, is he hiding? Oh, no, it's because he, he can't say. Yeah, there we go. There he is. Belgium. It's like a country, but smaller. We've got another guy from Germany. We've got Marvin, who's teaching for the first time with us. We've got Miguel and Andre. We've managed to put them side by side because they are brothers. Uh, and we've got Craig Cash again. Another first timer for the Q Corner. Uh, he's a fantastic twister from the UK. We've got Teriyaki Ito from Japan. Let's see if we win. There Yay! we go. <laughs> yes, thank you for joining us. We have... Mm. Zion, Lee, Lee, as well, Lee. all the way from China, an uh, amazing twister, she's Plus. got some really cute designs that you're going to love, we have Avital and Nia yeah, from yeah. Israel, Yay. Oh, we've just Tina's just joined us, thanks Tina for joining us, uh, we have Karen from Israel and we have Olympia Munoz as well, I'm sure you guys already know her if you're anything part of the balloon community. So, second time at the convention for some of these guys. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these for the moment. Well. And then, I'd say what we're going to do is we're going to find out some information. If you need any information yes. about what's going on and you don't want to ask us for whatever reason. Why not? Um, because our English is bad. Our English is absolutely spot on. It's everybody else's. I know. Uh, I so know. what we're going to do is we're going to pop on over to a website. And which website would that be, Dom? Well, I find you can't go wrong with... Uh, Qualitex.com. Yeah, we would, but on this one, we're actually going for worldballoonconvention.qualitex.com. And if works. I go on to there, um, this is where it lands you right over here. But there's a very important button right at the top. That button is for the this event. Corner convention. Yeah, absolutely. You can click the little arrow and it'll give you more information regarding the... Uh, not if I do it on that one, because that's just a screen. That one. Uh, mm. I need to go... Too many screens. Too many screens. Too many things to look at. I, f I there lost we go. count how many we've got now. Yes. If I hover over it, you can actually get information from last year's convention and it still has Let all me, the uh, links on there. Are you going full that. screen? Wow. There we go. We're hidden. Um, yes, we can. You can click on there. It can go to last year's convention, and what you can. But if you just click on Q Corner Convention at the top up here, it takes you to the Q Corner Convention. Thank 20, you, Evie, the wonderful Evie there page. in the chat. Absolutely. Chat ninjas. Uh, it's called all about the competition, all about the instructions, all about the class schedule as well. So if we have a quick look at what's coming up on part one, what we can see here. That we oh, have our this. opening ceremonies um, to start the whole thing off. That's now. Um, <gasps> we're late. We're not. We're here. Oh, we're doing it. We're okay. all right. We're Oof. all right. Uh, we've got Jackie coming up. We've got Liz Aguirre. We've got Samar. We have Marvin. We have Juet. We have Avital and Nia. We have LaRonda. We have Nikita. And we have uh, Cindy Cronin. And that's going to take us through till, well, it's going to take us through for our first basically 10 hours. Wowzers. Ten hours we're going to get all the way through. That's a Two. good stretch. Good job. We've got yeah. snacks on a stick for the tea bag. It is. It's a good job we've got our snacks on a stick. And you can click on these and it'll take you through to the information and you can find out exactly what's coming up. It also has, uh, a lot mm. of them have product lists in there. So if you want to join in You've and actually... You've got 39 with... minutes to get your stuff together for the yes. first class. I recommend it. Absolutely. Don't worry about colours. If you haven't got all the right ones, yeah, just, just get the right, the right size sizes. Is the yeah. most important thing. Get, we're not, no one's getting judged here. This is just purely so you can follow along. Keep up, folks. And don't forget to post your pictures. Get them onto Facebook and tag hashtag... Qualitex Convention. See me. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag Qualitex Convention. Uh, sorry, Q Corner Convention. <laughs> oh. it's hashtag been, Q Corner Convention. You know, convention. it's three days for you guys coming up, but it's been many days for us yeah. and the, the convention team working... Many hours, absolutely pulling uh, this together, and of course the wonderful instructors who have been working so hard preparing these classes. Yes. Uh, so if you want to find out a little bit more about the instructors as well, you can go in there, and it's got everything about the instructors and where you can social find them media in links in there as well. Section. So if you've not seen them before or mm -hmm. you don't know where to kind of follow the work they're kind of doing, mm -hmm. that's a great way to hook up and. Uh, Start following them on their social media platform of choice. Absolutely. Ours is YouTube, by the way, right here, right now. Yeah, but what we want to talk about at the moment is the competition side because the registrations are still open. Um, some of them are getting a little full, but um, if you're a twister, the session two uh, twisted figure, which is on Tuesday, March the 23rd, 11 p 
p.m. UK time. Um, that's probably the best one for the Twisters. You might be able to sneak into today's, which is happening in just over two hours. Yeah, there is a world you're... clock on that um, yep. website as well. So if you're a bit confused by the times we're giving you, just check the time on there and go to the world clock link and you can convert it into your time zone. But it's got, you can click onto the session and it will tell you all about it, including the rules and guidelines. So yeah, if you can go back over the other one as well, because I want to, um, I've just realised that we would like to show them for the other stream, but for that I need to come off the, actually come I can off just that. do it off this, uh, I do that, do and then, there, that's better, yes, so you can sneak into those if you want, or just make sure that you follow along if you haven't seen it before, it's great fun, it, it's a competition, but it's for fun, it's so you can enjoy it, don't worry that you think, oh well I'm not going to win it, it's participation that counts. It is. It really is. You know, um, that's not it's, uh, well although they are fun to watch as well because uh, watching some of the creations that appear, especially the twisted ones, because it happens so fast. Yes. I mean, I love the deco ones. Don't that. get me wrong, I do love them, but they're a bit more drawn out, a bit more paced. The twisted ones starts off fast and furious. Yeah. They've got a plan in the head and they're going for it. I love it. Yeah. You've got no time to waste. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, so the facial expressions alone are worth following to... along for. Uh, what are you looking there. for? I I'm see, just what, gonna, you're you see what I'm doing. See what you're doing. I think. Um, so I tell you what we'll do is actually it's probably a good idea is um, we want to know more about the rules of each competition. We do. Yes, we definitely do. And now we can tell you all that, but, but we, we have two, and the information very... will be inconsistent. <laughs> we have two very special people uh, that are going to come along to explain the rules of each of the competitions. In the chat there as well um, from the lovely guys at Qualtex, they're just. In balloon dog apparel and click click have offered some prizes as well so there are prizes for this as well as some goodie boxes bags i think yep. we've got uh, yeah there's a box of a bag. it's probably a bag put into a box yeah goodie bags from qualitex um so it's worth some joining good in. stuff jam um, packed full yes so what we'll do is we're going to hand you over to them for the rules yes um, we've got so a few two very special people and they're going to tell you all about our competitions and we'll be right Back. Get ready to roll. Are you ready? Are you ready? Can we do this? Oh. Hi, I'm Cam. Olá, eu sou a Evie. From Happy Hour with Cam and Evie, a live balloon class. Do Happy Hour com a Cam e a Evie, a classe ao vivo. Broadcasted on the Mr. Q Facebook page. Transmitida na página do Mr. Q no Facebook. And IGTV at Evie Antonello CBA. E no IGTV arroba Evie Antonello CBA. Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Central Time. Terças-feiras, às 13 horas, horário central. Competitions are an exciting part of any balloon convention. As competições são sempre uma parte emocionante de qualquer convenção. And Q Corner 2021 is no exception. And Q Corner 2021 não é uma exceção. Competitions are a great way to show off your skills. Competições são uma ótima maneira de você aprimorar suas habilidades. They force you to push your boundaries and learn to adapt when things don't go the way you plan. Forçam você a ultrapassar os limites e aprender a se adaptar quando as coisas não saem como planejado. And you receive valuable feedback from our experienced judges. E você receberá valioso retorno dos nossos juízes mais que experientes. There are going to be a total of six competitions. Vai ter um total de seis competições. This is your chance to showcase your techniques on a global stage. Esta é a sua chance de mostrar suas técnicas em um cenário global. Our competitions are for everyone, beginner and advanced, every skill level. Nossas competições são para todos, de iniciantes aos avançados, todos os níveis de habilidade. Take a chance on yourself. Dê uma chance a si mesmo. Now, let's get into the details of the competitions. Agora vamos aos detalhes das competições. Twisted figure competition. Competições de figuras de distorção. The twisted figure competition lasts 12 minutes. A competição de figuras de distorção só dura 12 minutos. Competitors are allowed to use Qualitex latex to create a small twisted design. 
Os competidores podem usar os balões de látex da Qualatex para criar um pequeno designer de twister. It could be anything from an animal to an instrument. Pode ser qualquer coisa, de animal a um instrumento. As long as it can be twisted in 12 minutes. Desde que você possa fazer ele em 12 minutos. Twisted figures will be judged on. Figuras de distorção serão julgadas por creativity, criatividade, balloon manipulation skills, habilidade de manipular os balões, overall impact, impacto geral, finishing touches, toques finais, and quality of likeness. E qualidade com o original. And now back to the boys of Hugh Corner. E agora de volta para os meninos do Hugh Corner. Let's get the competition started. Vamos começar as competições. Deliverable sculpture or bouquet competition. Competição de esculturas de entrega ou buquês. This category kept a lot of companies in business last year. Esta categoria deixou muitas empresas em atividade no último ano. While we were dealing with lockdowns. Enquanto a gente estava é, lutando com os lockdowns. We're excited to see what competitors will create. Estamos muito animados em ver o que os competidores vão criar to impress our judges. para impressionar os nossos juízes. The competition is 30 minutes long. A competição tem a duração de 30 minutos. Competitors are allowed to use any Qualitex or North Star balloons. Os competidores podem usar qualquer balão da Qualitex e North Star to make a deliverable creation. para poder fazer uma criação de entrega. Deliverable sculptures or bouquets will be judged on overall impression. As esculturas de entrega ou buquês vão ser julgadas por um contexto geral. Construction. Pela construção. Use of balloons. Pelo uso dos balões. And the principles and elements of design. E pelos princípios e elementos do desenho. And now back to Doc and Marty. Vamos voltar agora com Buzz and Woody. <laughs> Table display competition. Competição de display de mesa. The table display competition includes centerpiece designs. A competição de display de mesa inclui centros de mesa. And large buffet pieces. E grandes peças para buffet. Anything that will fit on a table. Qualquer coisa que possa caber em uma mesa. Competitors will have 30 minutes. Os competidores têm 30 minutos. To create their stunning table design. Para criar uma peça maravilhosa para a mesa. Using only Qualitex and North Star balloons. Usando somente globos Qualitex e North Star. Table display pieces will be judged on overall impression. As peças serão julgadas por um, uma impressão geral. Construction. Pela construção. Use of balloons. Pelo uso dos balões. And the principles and elements of design. E pelos princípios e elementos do desenho. And now back to our dynamic duo. E agora vamos voltar à nossa dupla dinâmica. Let's get started with the competition. Vamos começar com as competições. Dynamic duo, eh? I'm, I'm Buzz. Yo, Woody. Is that right? <laughs> you got a friend in me. I don't know, ladies. We give you something to do like that, and you attack us? How harsh is that? I think we're probably fair game. Uh, to it be is. Completely it's, honest. It probably <laughs> is fair game that they did that uh, attack. Uh, yes. so I just great get information, though. Well. Great information. Oh, look, there yeah. they are. The right hook. There we it's, go. Um, They're just talking amongst themselves. That's yeah. good. Keeps Absolutely. Them Keeps them busy. Yes. Keeps them busy. We do have some more information from the lovely ladies. We do. I, I'm thinking now what names they're going to call us. I, I've got no idea. But uh, what, what do we have? We had uh, Buzz. Buzz and Woody, then, but uh, Cam said something else, and yeah. it was, uh, yeah. It's mean, it cuts deep, you know. Yes. But before we go back to them for the moment, um, you've got to take care of our instructors because our yeah, really instructors, uh, are, I've given up their time absolutely free of charge for, for this event, so it's an absolutely huge, huge, huge Thank you, and there's quite a lot of them in the getting chat. Getting paid in golden nuggets. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, oh, I mean, paid, sorry, yeah. I, just, I, that, I wasn't laughing at that. I was laughing at that. Wait for, wait for. Oh, okay. From Evie in the chat. Yes. Mm. So you guys are getting paid in uh, golden nuggets um, yeah. from our fantastic delegates uh, uh, from our watch. So you need to show them your love. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. Um, 
Shall we, shall we find out what the ladies have got to say about the fashion competition? I'm a bit worried. I, I'm always worried. Okay. But specifically about this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, over to uh, Norma and Jean. <laughs> Norma and Jean. Thelma and Louise. <laughs> Thelma and Louise. Okay. Here we go. Balloon fashion competition. Concurso de moda de balão. From hats to dresses. De chapéus a vestidos. The balloon fashion competition is all about wearable balloon art. O concurso moda com balões é tudo sobre arte em balões que pode ser vestida. Competitors will have 45 minutes. Os competidores terão 45 minutos. To construct the balloon fashion of their choice. Para construir a peça de moda da sua escolha. Fashion pieces will be judged on. As peças de moda serão julgadas por overall impression, impressão geral, originality, originalidade, balloon manipulation skills, habilidades de manipulação de balões, construction, construção, use of balloons, uso de balões, and the principles and elements of design. E dos princípios e elementos do desenho. And now back to Tom and Jerry. <laughs> And now back to Bert and Ernie. <laughs> oh, like that, is it, ladies? It, okay, the game's on, is it? The gloves are off. So The we're, gloves are off. So where Bert and Ernie? Yeah, which one's Big Bert? <laughs> I don't know. Right, anyway, um, I'm actually looking forward to the fashion. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to all the competitions, but I like the 12 minute twisting competition, like you said, it's just so fast, fast. and furious. It's I love the facial expressions. I'm yes. a people person. What can um, I say? We love the delivery one because that's a core of our business, anyway, right? Yeah. Deliverables is the core of our business. And like the lady said, um, a lot of businesses have actually been held up with, uh, held up by. Deliverables. Yeah, it's become the, the backbone and core yeah. of their, their business doing the deliverables. Yeah. And what's pretty good about a competition deliverable is that you've got a you've got a time frame to work to because quite often the conversion from everyday balloons decor into a deliverable, it, it's it's harder to say I'm gonna dedicate a set amount of time to it. You know, I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna reduce I have to reduce the amount of time that's spent on it because it's just not it doesn't have the same value as a as a whole decor event. So it's a it's an interesting one for inspiration uh, competition. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and then yeah, we've got I the like table that. display. Table display is interesting because sometimes you get them as centerpiece competitions. Yep. And um, as we've run it before, we specifically don't want um, the table center. We want it as a table arrangement. So it doesn't. It could be a table center, but it could be a buffet table, like different a one-sided display. Different uh, countries and different areas have different ways of using that style of decor. So Absolutely. we're not saying, yes, it has to be a centerpiece, which certain rules apply to. It can be a table decoration, so it's a much more open and we're not critiquing them on the, the use of it, yeah. but more of the, uh, the, uh, the kind of design. And then we have the fashion side. Now, the fashion one mm. is going to be Fast and Furious. Now, I know that we were asked to extend the time on the fashion contest, but we said no. Because we mean, we yes. didn't see a dress. I want a full dress. <laughs> the thing is, that doesn't have to minutes. be a dress. We didn't say it had to be a dress. No, we didn't. We said it had to be fashion. But we so still that want could the, be a handbag. We still want a dress. Or it could be a hat. Just so you know, if you do a dress and no one else does, you get my vote. <laughs> Which counts for nothing because we're not don't, even judges don't be, in this. Don't be just just getting so you know. Don't be getting the chloroprene. Yeah, we don't judge stuff because we're easily easily bought. Yes. Don't be getting the chloroprene and just throwing it on there and saying, there you go. Mm -hmm. That That's not... That's. I've just realised I'm swinging on my chair like anything, so I've got to stop doing that on these nice chairs. I know, but there's no... I know, we can oh. even do like one of these. <laughs> I know. So, so people were asking us, how, how are you going to manage... Power nap. How are you going to manage for three days? I'll show you how. Yeah, power nap. That's how I'm going to manage. That's how that's going to work. Power naps all the way through. That's a lever of love. <laughs> lever. I like that. I like, can't quite reach it. Sounds a bit rude, that. Don't. Uh, don't you're not allowed to say that. I really should learn internal monologue. <laughs> that's going to be taken out of context. Work through your head first to see, see if it hey, works. Hey, I tell you what, this convention's brought this year some fantastic memes that are in the Q Corner archives right now. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Thanks, Chris Adamo. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some beauties. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that'll go for our bloopers later as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've got we'll more next. information. More information from the ladies. Hang on, we have Bert and Ernie. Yep. Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. 
Buzz and Woody. Yeah, there was uh, what else? There was another one as well. Evie said another one, but I, I, I can't remember. We need two two ladies. I have to watch it back. Don't forget, this is all recorded. We can watch it again. <laughs> Uh, okay, so back over to the ladies of Hap. Not Dumb and Dumber, Paul. Who? Paul, you oh. can't call Evie and Cam Dumb <laughs> and Dumber. That's harsh. Where right. are they all going, Jeff? Okay, we're going to pass you back. <laughs> Here's the ladies again. Column competition. Competition de colunas. Columns are the foundation of any balloon decor business. As colunas são a base de qualquer negócio de decoração com balões. This competition will give competitors one hour. Essa competição dará aos competidores uma hora to construct an impressive professional column of their choice. De construir uma coluna profissional, impressionante e de sua escolha. Balloon columns will be judged on overall impression. As colunas de balão serão julgadas por uma impressão geral, construction, pela construção use of balloons, o uso de balões, and the principles and elements of design. E os princípios e elementos do desenho. And now back to Batman and Robin. E agora de volta para o Batman e Robin. <laughs> Let's get this competition started. Vamos começar com as competições. Yeah, I'll say Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin's okay. We, we, we're good with <laughs> Batman and Robin. Uh, but we already had that with a dynamic duo. That is that as well. <laughs> Uh, Paul Baker saying, hey, that was for the boys. I'm sure it was, Paul. I'm sure it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, Paul, yeah, the column you're competition. In now. <laughs> the, the, the column competition. Uh, another one that we've ran before, and we had some amazing results. In fact, Great it was stuff. so good. We, we ended up having to um, have, um, like, it was two judgments kind of thing. We had... Um, the semi-column competition. It wasn't no. the semi-column. Hey, That's tumbleweed. <laughs> what can I say? Tumbleweed. We're going to start off slowly and go downhill from there. So the column competition, we ended up it's having. Like this stuff. Uh, we had the judges' choice, and then we also had the viewers' choice. We uh, did chosen by Q Corner viewers. Um, you guys out there in YouTube land. In YouTube land, indeed. Uh, so we'll see what happens this time. We might even have some more judgments afterwards. Minnie and Daisy for Evie and Cam. Or is that uh, for us? I'm not sure. I, I, don't don't, know. I don't think I've got the eyes for either Minnie or Daisy. You sure? <laughs> so <Someone laughs> rehearsed. Do we ever? Rehearse. Do we ever? No. We did once, Luke. We did. We yes. did a stage event and we rehearsed it. And Didn't that's the last out. time I ever work with Keith when we rehearse. Yes. That's all rehearse. I'll say on the subject. Yeah. Improv. <laughs> Improv. Improv. <laughs> yeah, one job. Okay, have the girls got anything left left to they say? Have. Are you sure? Yes. Let's. I don't know what it's going to be, but here goes. I don't know. It's a surprise to us. Winners will receive a box of Qualtex products and other goodies. Os vencedores vão receber uma caixa de produtos Qualtex e outros brindes. We can't wait to see what our competitors create at the Q Corner Convention. Estamos super ansiosos de ver o que os competidores vão criar no Q Corner Convention. Be sure to watch our closing ceremonies. Tenha certeza de assistir a nossa cerimônia de encerramento Wednesday, March 24th, que será no dia 24 de março, uma quarta-feira, when we will announce the winners of the competitions. Quando iremos anunciar os ganhadores de cada competição. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you very much. I like the headwear they were wearing. Absolutely. Fantastic. Hey, have you not all been watching Happy Hour? I'm looking in the list here. And I don't know if everyone's been watching Happy Hour. You Why get not? Over there and watch Happy Hour with Cam and Eve. Or Mr. Q. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, like the lady said, the winners for all the competitions are going to be announced um, live at the end of the convention during the closing ceremonies. Um, we're also going to have a Zoom audience. Uh, say hi, Zoom audience. Hi. Wave, 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 Zoom audience. We'll get, we'll get in the wave, but yep. there we go, there so we wave and look. Will. And you get to see the uh, the other camera, which is the behind the scenes yes. camera. Yes, so if you wish to join in with the Zoom audience um, for the closing ceremonies, you've got to dress up nicely for that, oh, okay, so I'm you out. can be part of it. Uh, and you can join in hey. with that. And we'll announce all the competition winners. Just for the people who might have been wondering why we didn't wear our jackets this year. Lockdown hasn't been kind. <laughs> 
The, the, in the dry cleaners. Yeah, that's, that, what, yeah, that's, that's what, what we mean by was. lockdown hasn't been kind. The dry yes. cleaners was closed. Absolutely. <laughs> it's not that they don't fit. It's yes. not that. We resent that accusation. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. You it just didn't work with the chair. That's what it was. Luke, what Dom was. is in front of me. Isn't that always the case? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Luke. Am I... I mean, I mean, uh, you, I've took them off the screen. I mean, anyway. You're not anymore, Luke. You're not anymore because uh, we've switched you off the screen. There, look, I'll put you back on. I Go, felt, um, I felt, wait, wait. Look, I'm covering on. Oh, one second. He's up there. Uh, he's, up there. he's going to be here. He right will here. be. I'm going to do that. That's there it. we go. Oh, that's right. So we've got Alessandro, we've got Suchin, we've got Marvin, we've got Karen there. Oh, we've got loads more over here. That's right. I can't yeah, Marvin. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Marvin. You want to point over which there, way? There. I've got, I've got this it. way. You point this way. Oh, there okay. he is. There he is. Uh, we don't pick the Zoom Marvin's positions. doing a little bit of a dance there. <laughs> it's just to the music in his own mind. Now, oh, you have to do the Zoom test. What's the Zoom test? They have to see if they can point to the right person. Can Marvin... Point to Alessandro. He can't do it, he's not listening. Yeah, Marvin, can you point <laughs> to Alessandro? So, oh, there we go. So Alessandro point down. That's right, Miguel yeah. points to Luke. Oh, everybody point to Luke. <laughs> everybody so point to, to Luke. Sushi has to point down. <laughs> There we go. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all over the place. They're, They're all just over. Don't. This is what we have to work with. Yes. And some of these guys are your instructors. Never work with children, animals, or, or balloon you. instructors. Yes, yes <laughs> it's, it's a well-known thing. It is. It's fact. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Olympia's like pointed. Everybody's up for Olympia. It's all right. Yeah, when you just up. point all around, that's just yeah. called waving. <laughs> okay. Right, what have we got? We've actually got... Talking about our instructors. 82. Eight. Two. Yeah, 82 instructors, like which is more this. than last year. But we've got less time, Keith. I know, we've had to pack them in a bit tighter, which is why um, some of the classes that you'll be seeing, or a lot of the classes you'll be seeing, are pre-recorded. Now, we did this for a couple of reasons. Yes. Um, one Mainly is... For you. Yeah, it's entirely for you guys. Uh, one is we can pack more in this way. Squeeze it in. Yeah. We had some downtime last year. the technical difficulties we had due to downtime. Yeah, we, and we just, you know, watching back some bits and pieces, you know, there were some bits that the instructors did which were fantastic but were missed going out to YouTube just because of the technical constraints. Yeah, we had to, that, that we are, had to shorten us. some of the classes, which was unfair on yeah. some of the ones that came and, in. And we didn't end. want that to happen again. So we've got some pre-recorded sections. Yes. Um, they are freshly recorded. They're straight hot off the press. Never We're talking like before. yesterday yes. finished. In fact, one of them... Is it's just, just still coming into the it's studio just now. Failed. It's actually just failed. Don't talk to me about that one. Okay, I'll sort that one out later. <laughs> However, yes, they are fresh uh, but off in, the We've press. got them in multiple languages this time. We've got them in ten languages. Some of our amazing instructors instructors have even put um, subtitles on Fantastic. their videos, which we don't really forget, appreciate. Though, That's amazing. Well. We have it's balloonish amazing. as well because we've watched some of the content already in preparation and the ones that are, you know, not in English language, you know, which is the only language I sort of understand, you can follow along anyway because it's, it's balloonish. balloonish. It's That's great. It's very well described visually and it's a pleasure to watch. It really is. Um, but with that, though, the instructors are still with us, though. Okay, yes. They've not just sent us it and abandoned us. They're with us all the way through in the chat. Wherever so possible, sure, they yes. will be there. So if you do have any questions, ask them in the chat and they will um, do their best to answer. Yeah, and if yeah, you don't have any questions, just show them your love. So Because we've got ten languages as well, so we've got... Uh, We've got, um, a lot. It's a lot. yeah, we've got, we've got in French, we have Spanish. in Spanish, we have in Portuguese, yep. we've got a few in English, Japanese, yep. Chinese, yep. English, Northernese, no, just us, not so much, just us, just us. Um, from 22 different countries yes. too, so, pretty cool lad, uh, Hebrew, Hebrew That's is another it. one, we've yes. got, uh, they will keep coming as well as we see all the editing, Oh, we yeah. speak balloonish. And also, we've got some amazing people in the chat that do their oh, best. Fantastic. Yeah, sure, those translate. guys are love, though, yes. Thank you very much. And in Canadian, Canadians. yes. Reese's mom's back yes. with us this year. Yes. Yeah. Hashtag. Thanks, Hashtag. Reese. <laughs> Reese's mom, thank you. Hashtag. Thanks, Reese. Still got to find out. One of you guys were crazy so enough to it. buy a pair of leggings that had hashtag thanks Reese down And just side. so you know, it wasn't Reese's mom. No, it wasn't. Because she was being mean and tight. So. <laughs> It would be interesting to find out um, who it was. That Paul's, Paul's on with the uh, clips. Let's go, Jackie O. I think been... it was Paul. No, yeah. Was oh, it Paul? Paul, Paul did you buy them leggings? Have you got a pair of leggings? 
yeah. Jackie's got yeah. Jackie thinks it was Paul too. It makes sense now. Absolutely. It's just all put those pieces together. Yeah. I yes. know where we're going with that. So anyway, going back to the um, classes and the recordings, it does mean uh, that the they will be there um, afterwards because the whole thing is going to be recorded and it will be here on the channel yes. for you guys to watch whenever you want to and go back to and refer to it. Um, and fingers crossed, without any outages that we had last year. Yeah, we're going to try and best do our very best. Can't guarantee it. We are live for the next 70 Somebody's plus Somebody's saying there we're... we're Will we know which are live and which are versus pre-recorded? It's up to you guys to guess. That's the way that it works. You work it out. Uh, are we absolutely. recorded now? Yeah. Uh, are we no, watching this? Did I do that on video? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on a second. This is the... This is the versatility of a snack on a stick, guys. <laughs> Leave the <laughs> snacks on the stick. We need them to get through. Okay. So, uh, what else we got? We've got five minutes before we can go. Oh, I know. We'll five get minutes through to for Jackie O. Five so, minutes uh, before for Jackie O. Yeah. The schedule times are Oh, that a, was what we wanted to say. A, a guide, okay? So, yeah. don't hold us to the exact minute, people. We're going to try and get things away on time. We will do our very best. But... There's always going to be some a little bit of um, you're rewatching you hitting me on the screen on the other screen. I know, yes. I know. I was funnier yeah, than I thought it was actually. Wise. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if things start a little bit early, a little bit late, you know, do, be nice to us. Okay? Yes. We're doing our best to get. So it out there yeah, some, sometimes so, we might we may need to start a bit five five minutes earlier where we can so that we avoid going over yes. later on. Or sometimes we might run over a little bit. It's a kind of a loose schedule. But what it's, we'll do is afterwards, we'll go back and we'll put all the chapter links in after yeah. the videos have been produ produced. So you need to go back and see and it without missing anything. Clip. Okay. So don't be going away for making a cup of tea, you know, for too long. Yeah. Check back in. Make sure you're not going to miss anything. Also, as well, I was going to say something else. That's right. Yes. The streams. Don't forget, for anybody new this oh, year, yes. the stream this. changes. Okay. Well, so at the end of a, a, a section, first, yes. yeah, we're going to finish at a, it's not the same as last year. We've got different times for it. It is in the schedule, so it is advertised at when the stream will change. That means this stream that you're watching now will end. Now, hopefully, fingers crossed, it should direct you to the next stream. I didn't it's not, it. it's it's not going to Keep saying, no, you could have come up with a better reason than that. You uh, could have said, I didn't YouTube do it. algorithm had done... No, he's just I, said... I had, just, had, had a choice. I had a choice of 30 things that I could do, and that was down my list, unfortunately. Yeah. So. Okay, so we will direct you to the new stream. <laughs> yeah, that was not the way, That's not what <laughs> that we was wanted scary. to see there. So <laughs> we will direct you to the new stream. We yes. will go live as quick as we can. There is a half an hour downtime. What we should be doing as well is, a lot of people, what they tend to do is put the um, the new stream link in the chat just as we switch yeah. over. Because you can start watching it before it's live, yes. so you know where it is. And you can ha actually, if you're on a computer or a laptop or even something like an iPad, you can have two different windows open and you have the next one ready. Because I know that some people were struggling last year. I don't want to leave this chat yes. until I get to the new one. Dive on over to the new one. You can have both. Yeah, and That's we'll get fine. it going again Be greedy. before we go live properly. So and the other thing that, that we want to say, um, if I do this one, is for the competitions. Um, they are all happening on a separate stream. Yes. You can see that on our channel. So you can see there it's got a countdown 93 minutes until that first Twisted Figure contest 93 minutes. starts. Ooh, we've got a lot to do um, with so we're gonna, we, we don't want to just stream on one channel. We're, we're going to try and do two at the same time. So you can go to that. Make sure you are subscribed. There's a lot of people watching right now. We've got you know about 500 people watching live now. And all of you are not subscribed. So scroll yeah. down, hit the subscribe. If you're not logged in, just log in with your Google account. If you haven't got a Google account, create one. It's free. It's and fantastic. Can, yeah. And then what you can do is if you go back to our normal screen, yes. and then what you can do is... Uh, you can do it. Nope. Apparently I can't because it's, it's, been, it's not it. Oh, I it. know why you're not allowed to do it. We talked about this. Did we? We did. Yes. Okay. Not this you week. Do it. it was a previous day. Okay. You want and want... <laughs> So who, who who's no, up no first? No, no one's got it. Uh, I thought it hadn't been brought in on the new set. Uh, <laughs> who's up first? I don't know. Some crazy lady from Canada. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm right. It is. It's um, one of our most popular instructors from last year. Um, 
We're going to be able to go all the way over to the wilds of Canada. At this time of the year, they're usually fending off bears and digging out snow and things. I think this is normal for Canada. Am I right, guys? Totally normal. <laughs> crazy baby. Yeah, yeah, crazy cat lady. Um, so what we're going to do as well, we're going to, go to fly back to our guys on Zoom to say bye-bye because we're going to be shutting down the Zoom link <laughs> and see Liz has just okay. Liz has just arrived Liz. for us to Liz. say bye. Hi Liz, bye Liz. I'll keep going on the full screen so everybody can say there we go. Well, go, on, go on, you can do it. There we go. Right, Liz has just arrived for us to, in time for us to say bye. That's right. Get your glasses on, Liz. Thanks, We're Liz. Here. <laughs> everybody, wave. She's. I mean, she's been here that this quick that she's still actually connecting to audio so that's uh how fast it is when she watches this back she'll be like oh that, that's funny yeah now hopefully I'm not there. um we're gonna say bye to those guys and i think what we can do is we need to go over just a little bit earlier um, i'm sure you're looking forward to seeing all of these guys later so we'll say bye on there and then what we can do is i think we're about ready we're gonna go we are very, very close. I yeah. just need to bring up a few things and then we're going to go to there. I'm going to go to there and we're ready on that one. We're definitely ready on that one. Oh, I can never, never say definitely. Nor will I. Who knows? Who knows? It's always a bit, uh, it's a bit scary. It was a lot to do <laughs> and we chose to put snacks on sticks instead of something That was higher it. than having it so that the stream automatically connects to the next one. Next time, QCC 2022. <laughs> okay, we'll say um, bye bye for now, and we're going to leave you in the very capable hands of Jackie. We are. Oh, are we ready? I think so. Let's go. Jackie. We're going to start off strong. Let's go, people. Hashtag. Thanks, Reese. Tom and Keith and Ted and Betty, I'm so excited to get Q Corner started. Q Corner Convention 2021. I'd like to thank Qualitex and of course the entire Q Corner team. There's a whole bunch of people behind the scenes that made this happen for us. It's going to be a crazy couple days. I've had a sneak peek of a few classes and you guys are in for a treat. There's some fantastic instructors you guys will recognize from last year's convention and some brand new instructors that are ready to show you what they got. So I think we should get started. I'm going to introduce myself first. My name is Jackie O. I'm from With a Twist Balloon Creations and that's in Airdrie, Alberta, Canada. And I'm going to be showing you guys uh, some little tabletop pieces today. So I call these my little mini marquees. It's going to be a base with a foil balloon and then I always put a little twisted element. So it's balloon marquees with a twist. Okay, so I think we should get started. So what I do every time I start a new piece is I'm going to find my foil. So this is an 18 inch foil from Qualitex and it is called uh, Birthday Cactuses for a reason. It's covered in little cactuses. So I'm just gonna open this up here. And now when I'm looking at the foil, I'm looking for different colors that I can pull out of here, different ideas. Um, so what I'm gonna pull out of this is definitely some wild berry. Uh, so I'm gonna use some wild berry balloons to add some twisted elements. And I'm going to use also some magenta foils. Okay, so I just pulled that right out of this foil here. And I'm also gonna do a little bit of lime green in the foils as well. And these are just four inch foils from Qualitex. And this one is a nine inch foil. I am also gonna add some leaves and these are just the 13 inch tapers. 
And then finally, I'm going to add a number on top. So this is great to personalize the birthday balloon. So we'll say this child is turning eight and loves cactuses. So we are going to put an eight on top. And this is just a little uh, balloon number from North Star Balloons, and it is a 16 inch number. Okay. So I think we should get started. We're going to start at the bottom and work up. So the base balloons are going to be four chrome copper seven inch balloons. I have two inflated already. So I'm just going to inflate the final two to six pumps each. I'm putting my pump all the way in so I can get the balloon as nice and round as possible. Once again, it's six pumps of these. Squishing the air down and then tying them off. I'm going to tie them into duplets. And then just into a quad. So it's a very basic base structure. I use this for most of my centerpieces. So right now we have a quad of seven inch rounds. On top of that, I'm going to add four five inch white rounds. Now these are only inflated two pumps each. Now in all of my centerpieces, I always like to include a touch of white or a touch of black. And this is a little decorator's trick. It just helps anchor your eye. So on this one, we're gonna do the white. And I'm pushing the air to the end of the balloon every time I inflate. Now you can do this with a larger machine, of course, as well. It goes a little bit faster because you can do two at a time and then just tie them together. If you don't have a larger machine, this works great as well. So once again, tying together duplets and then making a quad. So now I'm going to stack these. I'm going to take my uh, chrome copper balloons from earlier. I'm going to take the nozzles up from the copper and then just tying it up. to get a water balloon or a sand weight, whichever you prefer, just something to hold it down. Give it a little bit of bulk. Okay. And that is going to be our base structure. Really simple. So now I'm going to take my birthday cactuses, my 18 inch Mylar balloon from Politex. I was just looking through the catalog and I saw that this is also available in Spanish. I was going to say it in Spanish, but I'm not sure how to, so we're just going to say it in Spanish. You can tell me in the comments. On Espanol, is that right? My language skills are legendary, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just going to inflate that and I'm going to take uh, one of my scrap balloons. And we are just going to roll that end up. Now I'm not going to roll it all the way up to the balloon. I'm going to leave a little bit and I'm going to show you why in a second. So I'm going to tie a knot here. Going to take my base and just pull it through the bottom. Switch hands and then just tie a knot again. And then I'm just going to cut off my excess. And it just goes in my bin. So I'm going to show you some of the tools I'm using as well. This is my premium smart twist. It's just a little inflator I have and it's super useful because I can take it on the road with me and it's battery operated. And this 
This is great. This is my little scrap bin. So anytime I cut something off, it goes in here. And if I need a scrap, I can always dig in here. And it's great because it keeps my work area clean. Otherwise you end up with scraps everywhere. Okay. So now I'm going to show you why I left that little bit here. Do you see how it just fills that space? I'm just gonna put this right towards the camera. So you don't have that strange dead space there, okay? So the balloon goes all the way into the base. All right, so the next step is to add a little flourish to the base. So I'm going to grab 160s in Wildberry, and I'm going to use my 160 cap on my Premium Smart Twist. Inflating it all the way and then letting the air out. I'm going to grab a pocket pump, the little Qualitex pocket pump. You can also use this to inflate 160s. I like to use them to curl my 160s. So right now I'm just wrapping it around flat and then I'm going to inflate it a second time. Let a little bit of air out. I'm going to tie this in a knot, grab the tail, and then tie it to itself. Okay, I'm going to do this three more times. So we're going to pre-inflate. Let the air out. And then once again, wrap it around my 160 pump. And I like using my pump because I know I always have it with me and I know the coils are always going to be the same size. Creates a uniform look. Now, if you don't have a little uh, powered inflator, you can also use a floor pump. That works great. Um, you can uh, use a friend, <laughs> wrap the balloons around their fingers, and then inflate with a hand pump. I've seen quite a few contraptions that people use to curl balloons. But it's basically the same idea every time. You're going to pre-inflate just to stretch that latex out, wrap it around something, and then inflate again. And I love coiling the 160s because you get such a nice tight little coil. They're super cute. Now if you want these to last quite a while you can also high float your 160s and your 260s. They are typically the first things that will soften on a balloon. So you can just um, get a little pipette and stick it right in your 160 or your 260, squeeze a little bit of high float in there. It, uh, it makes for a little bit of messy work, but it's worth it because they will last a very long time. So we're tying the ends together. And then, just like we did with our base balloons, making our duplets, we're gonna do the same thing. However, when we tie these together, I'm taking the nozzle ends, the nozzle scraps, and we're gonna give it some slack. Now, because I tied the nozzle ends together, when I pull them, there's a little stoppage, okay? They can't go anywhere. So I'm grabbing these again. I'm going to grab the nozzle scrap end. I left that for myself on purpose. It's about an inch left. And I'm just tying them together and then pulling it, okay? So you're ending up really with about six inches when you pull it. Now this is important because I am going to take it, go under my five inch balloons, switch places with them just to make sure they're locked in there. And just find a little home for them. They're gonna nestle in nicely where they wanna go. I'm going to grab my other two. Once again, sliding them under my five inch rounds. And just finding a nice little home. So we're going to move on to the twisty bit of the segment. Now, if you're like, Jackie, I'm not a twister. I'm never gonna be a twister. You do not have to add this to your piece. 
But I find adding that little twisted element really just elevates your piece. And if you have a few uh, balloon decorators in your market, this is going to set you apart from those decorators, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to make my little cactuses. Um, I don't like really complicated twisted designs. You're gonna find my designs are quite simple. So I think you're gonna be able to do them. So let's go step by step. We're gonna do two separate cactus designs for this piece. So my first one, I'm going to actually double stuff. So this is just a balloon stick and I'm going to take this green. It is emerald green in the 260 and the chrome silver. So we're gonna double stuff or color blend these balloons. So I'm going to pre-inflate my emerald green. Stretch it out. So you see that this is a see-through balloon. It is transparent. And this is why when we put our chrome silver in there, it really makes a gorgeous color. So I'm also going to do a little cheat here. I'm going to snip off the nozzle bit of my emerald green 260. Now I do this because it just makes it so much easier for me to slide it over top of that chrome silver. So I'm putting the silver on the stick. If you have a crochet stick that works great as well. And now I am just sliding the green right on top. Just use my body and just slide it down. I'm grabbing the ends together. I know I have two of them there and just pulling. Now we don't need this entire thing blown up because we are only gonna do five bubbles on this. So I'm going to only inflate a bit of it. You see how beautiful that green is though? Gorgeous. Okay, we're gonna leave quite a bit of tail for ourselves just to make it easy to tie. I find a lot of first time twisters uh, they will try to tie the very tip of the balloon and it's such a struggle. I mean, I can't do it very well. So what you're going to do to make it easier for yourself, just give yourself a little extra bit of balloon. Makes it so much easier. Okay. Now I'm going to give this a squeeze because we have two balloons together and especially since we have a chrome in there, it is quite thick. Okay, so I'm gonna measure about a four finger bubble and I'm bending it over and measuring another four finger bubble. And I'm going to take that nozzle, twist it, and then pull it through the middle just to lock it in. Okay, so right now we just have two bubbles. I'm going to go back and make one more the exact same size, go over top, make one more. So we're making a cluster of four right now. I'm going to find another slot and just cross over and make one final bubble. So we have a cluster of five bubbles. Now we're gonna hold on to that and snip off the tip. Now you gotta be careful that you're not gonna lose the air here. Just let it out slowly. And I'm going to take the rest of this balloon, letting the air out, and just wrap it around to secure. Make sure everything is nice and tight. I'm also going to take this end and do the same thing. Just wrap it around to the other end. Make sure everybody has a little home and that it's quite symmetrical. All right, so this is what we end up with. So our next step is to make a little flower that's gonna go on our cactus. So once again, I'm just using this foil as a guide and I'm taking this little wild berry flower that's sitting on top of the cactus and I'm going to put that on my little twisted cactus. 
So I'm going to inflate a 160 in the Wildberry. Just about this much, maybe eight inches left. And I'm going to make a five petal flower. And these petals are going to be quite small, two finger petals. So I'm just making one loop twist and pulling the nozzle through, matching it, doing a third. So what I'm doing is making a loop, twisting it off, and pushing it around the middle. Now if you're struggling with this step, I would suggest that you go to with the twist balloons because I have so many, you like that? So many little videos on there of just my hands with my manicured nails that I probably painted about five minutes earlier on there and it's just my hands twisting the, the six and five petal flowers. So it just makes it really easy to practice. Just watch and uh, do it along with me and I promise you that you'll become a master flower twister after binge watching my flower videos over and over. So on top of those five petals, we are going to do three little petals. I'm just going to show you what that looks like. It's the exact same thing. I'm making little loops and putting them on top of the five petals. Okay? Can you see that? So there's five petals on the bottom and then three petals on the top. I'm going to pull this up through the middle and do one final last little loop. And that is it for our little cluster. It's just a little flower explosion that's gonna sit on top of our cactus. So five petals, three petals, and then one petal. So I'm just gonna take this and put it on top of those five bubbles that we made earlier for our cactus wrap it around and through and then down and i'm just doing this with the scrap of wild berry that i have left if you don't have that much of a scrap left you can grab another balloon and just use that i'm going to give it a twist just to lock it in there and then i'm going to take those first five bubbles and i'm going to lay them flat so now we have five petals sitting on top of five bubbles. So I did that strategically. Sometimes I think ahead. And I'm going to put them in between, okay? So we have bubble, petal, bubble, petal, bubble. You get the idea. Yeah. And then the three on top, and then the very one, last one on top of there, okay? So that's what we have for our little cactus so far. So this has another element to it. We are going to grab a couple 260s, just give it a little puff of air, okay, and then we're going to tie it off. So it's just puff inflated, there's no bubbles at all, it's just got a little bit of air in there. Just using my 160 pump just to make sure I don't get too much air. So I like to put a little bit of air in there and then just let it out. Tie it as close to the nozzle as you can and then tying the nozzle bits together. Okay. So I'm gonna take those and tuck them in under my flower cluster like that, and we are just gonna use these to line inside of the bubbles, okay? So wrapping, going around, and then back up, and then back around, and then whatever you have left here, you're just gonna tuck in. Okay, now we're gonna use the other one, and we're not pulling here, we want it to sit nicely in the little slot. It's like it was made for it. 
Okay, so we're not pulling, wrapping that around. And then we can just tuck it in the extra bits and just get it out of the way. Okay, so that's what we have right now. So we're gonna finish up the cactus now. I am taking a 160 in lime green, pulling the air out of it and just making a little ribbon. Going to split it in half and run it down two segments on opposite sides, tying it into a knot at the middle. And that's just going to help secure everything together. And we now have a connection point as well. So we're going to make a little pot for our cactus to sit in. Now, if you did watch Q Corner Convention last year, you'll also notice that I made a cactus then as well. I kind of have a theme that I like to run with. This is the same idea for the pot that I did last time. So you guys should be pros in making pots for cactuses right now. So I am inflating my seven inch in the copper, in the chrome, and just letting a little bit of arrow. Now I'm just kind of eyeing it, trying to see what it's going to look like when I apple twist it. That's why I'm kind of pushing it down. We don't want it too big because our cactus is quite small. Okay, so I kind of want it to look like that when I'm done. So I'm just squishing it down to make sure I know what it's going to look like. So I'm going to tie this right at the end of that nozzle. So what I did is I tied a knot and then I rolled it up. And that really is the secret key of a good apple twist. You got to pull that, that's great English. You have to pull that knot all the way up to the nozzle. Okay, now I'm going to squeeze the air into the end of the balloon. So we have a little tube structure happening right now. And then I'm going to tie my scraps. You can use both if you like, or just one. I like to use both onto the end. Now we want about that much slack. I'm going to snip the end off, both ends off, that one's 60. Pushing the air up again, sticking my thumb in the nozzle area, and then just pushing it through and finding the center of the balloon on the other end. We're gonna give it a twist. I have that knot that I made in my fingers going into my trusty scrap bin that now has some scraps built up. Taking a 160 in lime green and just capturing that knot that I've made for myself. And that should now not go anywhere. You can cut off the scraps of this as well if you'd like. And don't worry if you grabbed a scrap that doesn't match because this is going to be sitting on top of another copper balloon. So you're never going to see the bottom of it, okay? Now, just to make our pot look a little bit cuter, we are going to add one more balloon. And it's going to be the chrome copper in a 260. I am going to make two little pinch twists. Give it a squeeze, wrap it around the top of my cactus. Now it's very important here you don't make this too tight because it will pull the cactus away from the base. So basically we just want it to sit there and not have any tension whatsoever. I'm gonna tie this in a knot so that we don't lose any air and then snip off my ends. I'm just going to position those pinch twists, one up and one down, and then 
just give it a little bit of a zhuzh. Find where I want my front to be. So you're gonna find kind of the prettiest side. There will always be a prettiest side. So I'm gonna choose that side. So we have one, two, three bubbles sitting in the front there. Okay, and this is going to be our little cactus that we're gonna use just to, I think I'm gonna put it right here. See how cute that looks? Just adds a little bit of something. Now, do you have to add this? No. Yes, actually you do have to, you don't, honestly. You don't have to add this. I just find it really adds that much more to your piece. Okay, are we done? No, because I am so addicted to stickers. I can't even tell you, it's actually embarrassing how many stickers I have. So these are just little, they're called enamel dot stickers. And I just found them online. They're just little dots and they're raised. They're super cute. Um, I'm sure you can find them even at a dollar store near you, at a craft store, at a Michaels. They're just simple little dots. Now what I'm going to do with these is just stick them on. I'm going to use nine of them. So I'm going to use them on those three front bubbles. Once again, do you need to do this? No, you really don't, but look how sweet. It just makes it look that much cuter. And I really am a crafty twister, I decided. I love doing all the little crafty bits and adding the stickers and gluing the things. I know a lot of twisters are really into the no glue, no markers, all that stuff. And I always say I'm all the glue, all the markers, all the sticky things. I just like to make things pretty. So I am not ashamed of adding a little bit of glitter, <laughs> a little bit of sparkle, and a little bit of stickers to something. I think it's so sweet. Okay, <laughs> I think we're done. So this is going to be our little cactus. So now we have to stick on our little masterpiece. So I'm going to grab my U glue dashes. These are by a company called Oasis. I think most balloon artists are quite familiar, familiar now with the U glue dashes. I love using these. These are probably my favorite adhesive to use. They never let me down. Now, I find it depends what climate you're in as to what works for you. We are in um, quite a dry climate here. We're landlocked right in the middle of Canada. And I find these work great. And they work great even in the winter here. So if they get cold, they don't get brittle. Um, I like using hot glue in the summer, but it doesn't work so great for me in the winter. So these are definitely my go-to. They work fantastic. So I'm going to find a little home for this guy. Make sure that side that we decorated is in front. And just stick it on our piece. Okay? So now we have an added little bit that looks really fancy and it's super cute and it completely matches our mylar. Okay? So I'm going to make one more little cactus. This one is a much simpler design, but it is also super duper cute. So this one is made from a heart balloon. I'm gonna use a lime green heart for this one. And I'm going to take one lobe and give it a pre-stretch. Just the one. I'm gonna show you why I'm doing that in a second. I'm going to take my pump, stick it in the lobe if I can. And inflate it. You see how the one lobe just kind of gets a little bit longer than the other one? I'm gonna squeeze a bit of air out and tie the balloon off. Going back into my scrap pile, I'm getting another little piece of that 160 in the lime green. And I am going to take the other lobe that I did stretch, grab it, and twist it. Now don't be afraid, although yes, it may pop. Okay, so I'm just going to twist it around twice. 
grab my 160, wrap that around as big as I can, and tie a knot. And then I am just snipping off the excess. a little shape and it's just a really simple way to make a cactus balloon. I'm going to put it on a little base and that base is just going to be a six petal chrome flower. We're using the chrome copper and we are making a little flower base. Once again, we are utilizing our six petal flower making skills, making a loop, twisting it off, and going through the middle. And making a loop, twisting it off, and going through the middle. It's the same every time. And then one final loop. to inflate one more little balloon for this. It is going to be a wild berry 160 and we're just going to make a simple little five petal flower. And this is just going to put a little bit of color onto our cactus. And once again just pulling those colors out of that Milo balloon. And matching everything right up. So just making tiny tiny little loops. and then running it through the middle. I'm gonna run it around a few times and snip it off. I'm gonna grab a couple of my dashes, put it on two of the petals on opposite sides hold it down a little bit, peel the back off, and then just find a little spot for him to live. And that might be the easiest cactus in the world to make. <laughs> so if you're like, Jackie, I'm not doing this cactus, make two of these. Honestly, they're nice and simple, and they still add that little twisted element that a lot of people won't be adding to their pieces, right? That makes yours extra special. So I'm gonna find a spot here for this guy. I think I'm gonna put it on this side and I'm just gonna grab a couple dashes. We're gonna stick one on the back just to get it stuck onto the mylar and then I'm going to put one on the bottom for now and then just see if I need any more. Right now I'm just adjusting my 160s to find him a little home. So I'm going to stick this onto the white balloon and then take this 160 and put it on the bottom. I'm going to decide if I like that and if I do, I'm going to seal the deal by sticking it straight onto that 18 inch mylar. So this is where we're sitting so far. So this can really be a finished piece right here. You can hand this out. I think it's pretty darn cute. We're going to add a few more pieces just to kind of make it uh, a bigger, more expensive piece. So I'm going to show you what we need to do for that. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of color blending here. 
So once again, I'm going back to my foil and taking a look at some of the colors. So I pulled the green from this cactus already. Um, got a little bit of lime green here. So I want to take a look at this color here. Now it's a little bit of a softer green. Now in order to get that, what I'm going to do is take a green balloon, stick it on my chopstick, and I'm going to double stuff that into an ivory silk five inch balloon. So these are both five inches, sticking the green in. Ivory silk is such a wonderful color to color blend with. Um, a lot of times we just use white, but I find the ivory silk just brings that warmth into the color blending. So we're going to see how good we did with our match. I always lose my pump. <laughs> okay, so we are sticking the balloon really into there so that I can put a lot of air into the end of the balloon. Ooh, that is pretty. So I'm squishing all the air into the end. Let's see if we, there we go. Very nice. So I think that matches pretty good with that cactus. It's kind of a sagey color. So I think we're gonna go with that. Now, the reason I'm doing another set of duplets, we're gonna do three pumps on these, and eventually quads, is because this is how I'm going to attach my number to this piece. So this is how we're going to make this piece a bit bigger, a bit of an upsell. I have a couple different um, levels when I offer my centerpieces to my clients. So this would be, let's say the first level. And what we're doing now, adding the next level would be um, the upsell to my centerpieces. And then there's another level as well to make it bigger. So I, I like to give options because sometimes when people ask for pricing and they're like, oh my gosh, that's too expensive. It's usually like, my husband is never going to say yes to that. And it's like, well, there is a, a smaller piece that I offer as well. And then it makes it sound that much more attractive. It's like, oh, but it's still a beautiful size. Okay. So we have made another quad. And I'm going to show you how to attach this to the top of the balloon. So this is balloon tape by Click Click. It's stretchy balloon tape and it's a one-sided adhesive. So I did pre-cut a little bit off of this and it comes with two little backing strips on it. So I'm going to remove those. See if I have any nice scraps in here. Ooh, this is a really nice little 160 I can use. So I'm going to find my center and just stick it down. And you're gonna use the heat from your hand to really make that stick on there. So I'm gonna get another piece and just make an X on top. So just go the other way. And that's just gonna make sure that doesn't go anywhere. So now what we can do is just tie a knot in that top and now we have a nice little attachment point that's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to take my quad and both of those scraps, pieces, and just tie a knot again. Snipping off the end. Line those up nicely. So our number is just going to go right on top of that. So this child I have decided is turning eight. So this is the 16 inch number balloon from North Star. I love these. I use these all the time. Just 
We're just going to unravel it. Take our pump. And in place. So they do have these hanging tabs, which are great if you're hanging, but if you're not hanging them, they're just kind of an eyesore. So what I'm going to do is just cut some of my dashes in half and just use them to stick down those tabs. I always say I should buy shares and ugly dashes because I use them so much. They really are a lifesaver though, they're fantastic. Okay, one more. This little guy has four tabs on there. Back into my scrap bin, found another 160 scrap in white. Because you're not going to see it, it doesn't really matter what color it is. I'm rolling up the neck. And just tying it off. Going back to my piece. And I'm going to tie that in. And just cut off the excess. Make sure everything is sitting nicely. a few little star mylars just to set the piece off. Our next step is going to be inflating our four and nine inch foils. So I have these really cute magenta and lime green foils from Qualitex. I am just inflating with my pocket pump. I'm going to let a little bit of air out and I'm just going to heat seal this with my maxi seal. So I'm just pushing it down and holding it down for a little bit and sealing it again. You want to do at least two good seals. Now do you see how my foil is a little squishy? Now for these stars I do it this way because I'm going to pull that tab up. Now when I pull the tab up it makes that star really firm. So I'm going to take one more of these Yuzu dashes and just stick it under the tail of that and push it up. So now our foil is nice and firm. Okay, so this is one I did earlier. Once again, we are just pulling the tab up. And if you do over inflate these, it just doesn't look quite as nice when you pull the tab up because you'll have this little odd bit here. So once again, you're just pulling that up just so it looks like a star. Now for these foils, I also like to push all these cute little ruffles to the front. Just a little OCD thing that I do. Okay, really cute. And now we're going to do the bigger nine inch. So inflating, but not too, too much. Letting a little bit of air out. And then I'm just going to hold down to seal. And then we're going to do one more. I'm going to pull up the tab on this again. And because we didn't inflate it all the way, it's going to look like a beautiful five point star. Push all those ruffles to the front. And then one more time. Push and hold and push and hold. Okay. 
And then the last foil that we're going to add is going to be that taper leaf. And this is the 13 inch taper that Qualitex makes. I love these, I use these all the time. So what we're going to do to make this um, a little more leafy, that's the word, is I'm going to stick the end in and just give it a little seal. Now the trick here is to hold it down until that seal cools. So it's gonna seem like a very long time. Okay. And we're gonna do two of these on this side. Holding it down. And then releasing. And then we're gonna do two on the other side. We're going to stagger them, so I'm going to do one in the middle of those two that we did. And we're not going straight across, we're just going about two-thirds of the way in. And then one more. So you're not going to be able to see this very well, but I'm going to show you. I made a seal here and here, as well as here and here. So we're going to inflate that really gently. We're going to use our 160 pump. Give it a little bit of air. And once it's full, we're going to seal it off. Going to grab a 160 in the lime green and just roll that tail up. Tie it off just so that we have a connection point. Now, do you see how cute that leaf is? Super adorable. Okay, so we are done with our heat sealer. So I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to find a nice little home for our leaf. I think I'm going to slide it in right here. I'm just getting it under those ones, those white five inch balloons. And I'm just going to snip off the end and then just take a look at it and see how it looks. stars now. I am going to use Balloon Bond, also by Click Click. Now this is a two-sided ad adhesive. So these come in strips and they happen to be the perfect length for these stars. So I'm going to just push this down. Now if you do want to be a little thriftier with this, you can cut this up into some strips and just put a couple strips on either side. I like to use the full piece. Taking the backing off, and I'm going to find a happy little home for this as well. I think I'm gonna put it about halfway up. And it just adds some color to the right side of the piece. So I'm just holding it on there and giving it a little bit of a squish just to make sure it stays. So I'm going to grab our green star and another piece of balloon bond. Once again, running it all the way down to the bottom. And you're just using your heat from your hand to get that stuff on the floor. So 
when you're doing this, it doesn't really matter where you put it. I just don't want to make it completely symmetrical. So you're going to want to put it a little bit askew. So either a little bit higher or a little bit lower than the pink one. I'm going to do a little bit lower, I think, this time. So it's going to sit on top of our cactus, but not touching our cactus. So once again, just holding it there, you have to have a little bit of patience with this. Just giving it a little squish. Okay. Super cute. So now our job is just to fill. We're gonna fill a little space here, some here and some here as well. And then I think we're gonna be done. We're gonna add those other two little stars as well, but we're gonna save those to the end. So I'm just going to inflate two more 160s in my wild berry. And this is just gonna add some continuity to our piece. So we're pulling the colors that we used on the bottom and the same shapes that we used with the coils and we're just adding them to the top of the balloon. So just tying the knot exactly the same way. We're going to make a duplet out of these 160s. Now if you get lazy while coiling these and say, I don't want to pre-inflate it, why do I have to? You kind of do have to. I've done that before where you're like, it takes forever, but it just doesn't end up looking as nice if you don't pre-inflate the balloon. Tying the ends together. And I'm just gonna move that out of the way, tying the nozzles and then leaving some slack. This is going to go under our quad here, switching places with it. just creating a little bit of color on this side and it's playing off this balloon as well. Just creating a little bit of balance. So we're going to take a seven inch round in the chrome. Over inflating it and letting some air out. Now you can use two balloons to do this part, but I'm going to torture myself and try to do it with one. But basically what I'm trying to do is to get four lobes out of one balloon. So you just basically have to wrestle it. You use your hands. I mean, we are balloon artists, right? We are super strong. So our hands are super strong anyway. If you don't want to wrestle your balloon, you can use two chromes for this. But it's nice to challenge yourself, right? It's funny, I always joke at how, how strong and sinewy our hands get as balloon artists. I mean, how many times have you had to ask anybody to open a pickle jar, right? It's like, no, I got it. <laughs> I'm good. Do you know what I do for a living? I twist balloons, right? So we're going to grab our little cluster of four. Find a nice spot for it and just stick it on our piece. So I've prepared one more cluster of four and I'm just going to stick it down on the bottom. Just right beneath that magenta nine inch star. Okay, so once again, all we're doing here is looking for balance. Finding happy little homes for everything. I think we're getting there. Our last step is going to be adding those little four inch stars, which are adorable. So I think I'm going to take this one and add a little pink to this side of our piece. 
maybe right about here. Does that work? I think so. And then finally, our green star. And this one, I'm going to add a little bit of color, probably up here. I'm just going to find where the mylars touch. Also adding these little bits also really helps to solidify the piece. It keeps everything really nice and tight together. So there's no little loose bits anywhere. You know, everything's really firm. Okay, so this is our finished piece, our little mini marquee. Happy birthday with our cactus foil. We have used this foil to dictate the entire piece. We have pulled colors out of it, we have color blended, and we have also made it extra special by adding a super simple cactus and one that's a little bit harder but still manageable. <laughs> and I think it looks pretty good. Do we think we can do this? It's not too complicated, right? I think we got this one. So this little mini marquee structure that I made is actually a formula that I use for a lot of my pieces. So what I do is I start with the mylar and then just add. So let's say this was a pineapple mylar. I would just add a little twisted pineapple piece, change the colors, do a different number, and they're basically all very similar. So I just want to show you what this looks like with a different theme. This may seem like a strange piece, but it makes sense when I tell you the backstory. I had a contract for about a year with an orthodontist. So um, every dentist that referred his clinic uh, had a happy birthday balloon sent to them. So I made a lot of dentist balloons for a year. I made three or four dentist balloons a month. So they were going out like crazy. So I kind of had to figure out how to do a mouth and a tooth. And I came up with this. So this is the same structure that we used for this piece. You can see how the base is very similar. I did use 11 inch balloons on this base and they're inflated a little bit more because the chromes do inflate bigger than normal five inch balloons. So these are an 11 inch balloon on the bottom, but it's a very similar structure. So we have our base, our two tier base with our coil balloons. We are pulling colors from this mylar. I decided to pull out some red and some Caribbean blue. We made a little twisted mouth and also a toothbrush over here and then a cute little tooth balloon, which is adorable. And my son <laughs> pointed out that the tooth has a little butt, which is, right? Yeah. He's 15, so yeah, that was really quite humorous for him. Little butt on the tooth, so. <laughs> but it's super simple, and like I said, twisting does not have to be complicated. This little tooth is so simple to make. It's just a little heart, and then four rounds, and then some tiny little arms attached to it. Really easy. I hope you've enjoyed my class on little mini marquees. And this is just the beginning of the Q Quarter Convention. I'm so excited. There's so many fun classes coming up after this. So stay tuned, stick around, and subscribe. Way to go, Jackie. Yeah, way to go, indeed do. Did we enjoy that? Did we enjoy the first class of the Q Quarter Convention? Q Corner Convention 2021. Although I did think I was watching the rerun with all them cactuses. Hey, but you've got a theme, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something there, but it was what? an inappropriate joke. I wasn't going to go there. She's prickly. No, it wasn't that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, we hope you guys did enjoy it. We are, can see that there's a lot of love being shown in the chat right now. We can see our flood of golden heart nuggets there. Oh, no, I love that chat all the way through. It, it, I couldn't decide which bits to watch. I did miss some bits, Jackie. I'm going to have to watch it on the rerun because I was reading the chat. Yes, actually, one of my favourite comments, which I jumped in on as well, was the fact that there were... <laughs> um, Joette asked, 
Jackie how long it would take yes. um, if you weren't talking, if you weren't teaching it through. And Jackie said that she uh, <laughs> she said that when she's not talking all the way through, it's between twenty and thirty minutes. Um, and I said, so you've never tried. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, hashtag <laughs> thanks. Very good. Recently. No, I love that. I love the modular designs. Yeah. Uh, the adding those twisted elements is a, a really great way to add value, uh, really boost your profit margin with those inexpensive, super cute add-ons. Absolutely, love them. Um, love, them, love them, love them. That was amazing. It's great to see the questions coming through there, and uh, Jackie was able to answer uh, many of the questions in the chat. It's another thing that we couldn't do last time because of the instructor being live. So Just another thing extra we can bring to you on yep. the Q Corner Convention 2021. Who knows what 2022 will bring? Yeah, Maybe and that is some time we can sleep. Super cute little cactus there from Jackie's class. Uh, we hope that you you kind of talking some loads of hints and stuff. tips. Are you? Yeah. What are you preparing? I'm preparing our next he's amazing a, he's playing Candy Crush. Is it, what he's, he's actually candy, doing. You know, you know I'm no good at Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck at level one. You crazy people. No candies are being crushed here, buddy. Um, so uh, what's going to happen um, in uh, in a short while is that we're going to be passing over to the next class. I'm Whoa, just lining the, up all the goodness. While the next class is on, we're going to test something for the very first time in the fact that we're going to be streaming um, two streams uh, at the same time. So we're going to be streaming the this main channel with all the educational side on, but um, at around 2.30, so in about 30 minutes' time, we will be streaming the live Twisted competition. So um, those that are taking part in the Twisted competition, you should have already received a link with how to connect through um, to the, the Zoom call for that. Um, and that will be going live. You'll be able to log in um, in around 15 minutes time um, to the Zoom side as well, so you can get yourself prepared. Um, if you are part of, if you haven't received that link, um, please get in touch, uh, send please a message do. or email. Uh, Ishani's been looking after that. Really appreciate uh, all your help, Ishani. Thank I can no longer read chat. It's just all I know. yellow hearts. I know, it's great. Let's pick out a couple of things okay, on yes. there. Oh, we I'll need to pick out that thing for... Oh yeah, I'll yeah. Pick out, yeah, we'll get that soon. Pick out yellow, yellow hearts. hearts. Yeah. Oh, there's another yellow heart. Somebody's asked there. Linda said, "Caught it in the caught the end. Is it replayable? Yes. Um, in fact, you should be able to do it right now. It kind of works. You can go back, but don't. Yeah. Don't because Stay what's with the next us thing? Now it's recorded. Yeah, it's there. You're not going to miss it. Sometimes it takes a while. Depends on how much we've been streaming. Well, this so stream is going to be ten hours. Yeah, and this, and so it's, it's going to take a little straight while. Straight away, it will come. Yes, okay. but it won't be like last time. Last time. Uh, specifically, no, it won't. One. Specifically, Jackie's the segment that Jackie was in. We were getting so many requests for it, and there was a little bit of a problem with it um, due to hashtag some copyright audio. Billy hashtag broke the internet. Billy broke the internet. Um, and then, if you don't know um, what we're talking about, it took a while. You didn't watch last year's. You need to go back and you need to watch it. Yeah, start again. Um, to do it. You can see there's a lot more of our instructors that are appearing in the chat too. Um, Very picking good up guys. On other ones. I saw that um, Steph Morris uh, appeared, and there is uh, Jasenia is in there as well. Uh, Jasenia is El Salvador. Am I right? I think so. I also noticed it's so. Yes, Peter. Hello, Peter from nowhere. Some uh, some. Some comments are getting held for review. Don't worry about it. Our lovely chat moderators will release them as, as they can. It's just that sometimes, because you've been doing so many hearts... Yeah, don't do more than about 10 hearts on the same line. Otherwise, it generally gets held for review. Liz has just managed to get one through, though. But uh, she, Susan Swern's she, there. She's, There's another she's, twister from New York. Bro. Thanks, Susan, for joining us. Thanks um, for joining us. You are going to be yeah, on Yeah, someone just overdid some it with about 47 remember. hearts. I'm trying to remember when Susan was on. Was it Section 70? Or something. Well, anyway, you guys can have a There's look. There's pages at of the want. stuff here. Pages, I know. Pages, pages, and all of our notes regarding instructors oh. and various things. So yes. Yes. But who have we got coming up next, Keith? Who Felicia said there she's not an instructor, but she's here, and we appreciate it. In fact, if all of the instructors are here, it might be a little bit more lonely a place. But uh, we appreciate everybody that's there. We do. Um, we do. We do. We do. Also, it's I know it's a little bit early for some of you guys um, over on the West Coast side. What do you mean? Those what? guys. What about us? It's two o'clock in the afternoon. We're all right. Shh. We're well, we've been right. up since five. Well, we, that's, that is true. That is true. <laughs> 
Um, who we got up next? Actually, we have Liz. Liz yeah. Aguirre uh, is coming up next. And I here is a little bit Liz. Not like the Zoom call, Liz. <laughs> it's turned up for the end. Just in time. Like, she oh, spent oh, all oh. her time. She was making a balloon hat, I think. And then I, she turned yeah. up with the... Extra prep uh, yeah. for the class. Somebody said there as well, that was a brutal class. We, we agree. enjoyed it. We absolutely agree. We give the cue card. Yes. Bumblebee is in the <laughs> chat, uh, which is handy because I think that's going to be perfect for Liz's class. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stick around, Popo, because uh, yeah. this one's all about you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bumblebee. <laughs> we were teasing him yesterday, though. Uh, yes, yeah. Um, so Popo wanted us to add some music um, for his class, and obviously you've got to be really careful with copyright um, situations on YouTube and don't everything. We want to so have the stream go down again. We don't want to have that happen. So we were being we've been very very careful um, about the music that we use, and he asked us um, for a track that he could use. And we did did indeed oblige. <laughs> we, we did. We, we spent many was, many 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 best, minutes. It was looking. the best music. And, and it was a song about a bumblebee. And I don't know if he liked it as yeah, much I, as we did. I don't think he appreciated it. Uh, we'll leave it to we you, though, it. to decide. Yeah. We had to. But he's not on today. He's not on tomorrow. That's like uh, days he's, away. He's one of the last guys. You're going to have to hang around for him. You can see it all. If you're still up and with exactly. us. Exactly, yes. Somebody else is still trying to do that many hearts in the chat. It's not going to work. Yeah, you it's can't do that many. many. You just can't take that many. Coffer. You can't do that many hearts. It You've just got to says hold no. it back a bit. Do it in doses. Hold it back. Doses. Okay. <laughs> uh, Good old copy and paste function. Yes. Yes. Um, Martha is in the chat translating into Spanish. Um, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, Max has arrived. Hello, Max. She's Hello. another one of our instructors. Fantastic. Very good. Um, and Yuri as well. We've got loads of people. We have There's loads of people. Something yeah. as well, if you've not watched before, the chat is recorded as well. So if you watch this on the rerun and you think, oh, these guys are talking about loads of comments in the chat, which I've missed. I, there's a conversation that's gone on there that I don't seem to be a part of. You can go and watch it again. You Absolutely. can watch it and watch where all that came from. Yeah. Okay? It's all in there. So remember, whatever you say, it's in there forever. It is. It is indeed in there forever. So, you know, if you want to say things like hashtag Q Corners is awesome, <laughs> things like that, just which pop is it kind in the of, chat. Which is kind of obvious. Duh. Yeah, goes without saying. We like it here. Yes. And what do you think of our new studio, anyway? Yes. Look, Look at all this goodness. What are we on? Oh, yes. We haven't said about that, have we? So, um, when you guys... So we, did, we did a... Ah, yeah, the, the new chairs. There's a new desk, but you can't really see yeah. that on this camera. If you get yourself invited, though, to the uh, uh, exit ceremony... Yes. <laughs> the closing ceremonies, we'll be having a YouTube, uh, YouTube. we'll be having a Zoom a virtual audience again. So oh, you We've got can... various uh, Mr. Q's around the... Yes, spot them. See how yeah, many Mr. How Q's... Many studio, can, around the studio. How many Mr. Yes. Q's you can spot uh, around our studio. That's quite fun. Hiding but around. Um, all of these words that are around here, these are based on your inputs that you guys gave us um, when we were... Did a bit of a word cloud yep. about what Q Corner and the Q Corner convention means to you. Um, I, so I think I've just seen a cup of tea. Cup of tea over there oh, on yeah. the oh, I know exactly so, yeah, a cup of tea. One is. It's in the kettle case. Um, there's <laughs> one that didn't actually make it onto here, but it probably should have, which is insomnia. Yeah, uh, in fact, the TV. Was, what happens is on the type of word cloud that we created, uh, it becomes more uh, bolder and bolder, yeah. and bolder and bolder. The words get bigger, the, the more... The people, people choose. Yeah. I mean, if if six, seven, eight people choose the same word, that word gets, gets bigger. bigger and bigger. Uh, and insomnia, insomnia got was big. rather large. It was the one that took over the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, we did put our entries in that many times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know what? My plan for this year. What's that? Was to take it easy on the run up and get plenty of sleep. But if that didn't happen, though, yeah, we had too happen. much to do. Yeah. Too much to do. We had. Oh, a... we got another teacher there as well, Carolyn. In the chat. Carolyn Truby's class is amazing. I know, I have, there's I a lot of them there. Are, there's some, them we, we have some well. amazing classes. And there's so much going on. Artists. We've only seen snippets of different bits and pieces. But I love Carolyn Truby's style of class. And um, there's, a, there's something that I really want to try from her class. Well, well done for not saying it. I know, I know. I'm doing Keith, my best. Like loose I'm doing my best. Ships. I'm doing my best. Olympia is there too. Right, okay. It's just not going to work, buddy. What's not going to work? The hearts. He's trying again. Yeah, one line at a time. There we go. Someone oh. release your comment. Yes, it's out there in the chat. That's the most hearts you're ever going to see in one go. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Right, so we're already going to give it a bit of a whirl for going early this time, though, as well. So we're kind of we're gearing up because for this second stream, that's what Somebody we need said to do. about insomnia, and I missed it. Insomnia is fairly short. I'm not sure about that. It's not. It's just we didn't put it. It's not the fact that it was too. It's not too long. It was the fact that it was big. Yeah. Yeah. It, got, it, got, yeah, the, it gets bolder and bolder and bigger and bigger because more people had said that word. I also want to talk about the um, the different types of classes that are in this particular. Um, yeah, this, the variety yeah. of the styles, as in the like. Uh, retail, there's a lot of balloons. Decorator. Well, it's not just that, but there's a lot of balloons. Obviously, there's a lot yep. of balloons. However, there are also a lot of. Um, non balloon classes. Yeah, non non building classes. So, you know, business. business. Yeah, we were at, you guys asked for it. Business, and marketing and thoughts on actual kind of going about your business. Yeah. yeah. And we we love the design stuff. We do. Of we love the we technique do. stuff. We do. Yeah. We love the retail stuff, the decorator stuff, the twists and stuff. Because I think now people are really starting to get that it's not one or the other. There's so many crossovers that you can blend into your business. You can do what you want with what you get there's, there's so many it's so versatile yes uh, i saw antonio in the chat there as well i just want to say uh, hello antonio i haven't supported your ages brother take care stay safe it's uh, um having that um uh, extra kind of thoughts from very successful businesses that they've put you know they maybe has got some marketing background they've got some business background that they put yeah. into their business that has accelerated their growth which is fantastic and these guys are sharing it with us as well which is which is phenomenal. You yeah, know, absolutely. We, we love to share, you know that. Um, but these guys have taken their time, their energy, and put a lot of work in to share it for you on here. We've, so. been, we've been absolutely blown away. Pardon the yeah. pun, but we, we've been absolutely blown away by the level of content that we've received for this particular version of Q Corner um, 2021. Tom yes. says, Oh, <laughs> Uwe! People can get banned from the chat. You know. <laughs> Dom, can you show the animal in a bubble again? Yeah. So, so yeah, why not? We'll do that. Yeah, we'll uh, do it live, both <laughs> of us at the same time, with specific rules. And we'll get Cam and Evie to lay the rules out. Yes. Because they know rules. Linda's asked, how can I print out a class schedule? They are too small to print on a PDF to read. Don't print it out. Save a tree. Zoom, zoom in. <laughs> Just keep it on your computer and zoom in. Yeah, yes. the, at least with the with the PDF as well, what you can do is you can, um, it's searchable, so it's easy to flip about. Yep. Uh, Qualitex have just said that they're excited for LaRonda Butler, colour mixing pro oh, with yes. merchandise and experience on Fifth Avenue, New York. Fancy street. Yes, uh, that is, a, 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 I mean, it's a special, it's a very special class. It's a bit good. Um, and we're blessed to have her on board or part it of is. the team. Um, also, talking about schedule, if you go and um, look at the video, the actual the stream itself, it has everybody on there, and it's got the timings in yes. there. And afterwards, once it's been on and aired, you'll have chapters. So it has the YouTube chapters, which will appear. Uh, we'll go back and do them as it um, has finished being live, and you'll be able to just click on the different people and jump straight to them as well. So it's a lot more searchable, yep. a lot more interactive this year as well. So there's been a lot of work that's gone on behind the scenes to make that happen for you guys. So once it's said and done, you'll have a really easy way to go and find any of the content that you want. It's got the descriptions in there, the class, it's got all the stuff they're doing, it's got their names, it's got all, all that good stuff. So yes, we understand it's a massive amount of content and it's like... <gasps> yeah, it's, it's overwhelming. Yeah, it's overwhelming. Oh, I need it. I remember sort of seeing it. Where's it at? Yeah. I want it. Yes. So it, we've made it as, as easy as possible because we understand that same issue of going, you know what, I watched it, I didn't fully absorb it, I need to go back and re-watch it before I actually go and make it. Yes. We get that, we understand that. So you can bookmark the videos, you can create your own playlist, and you can then even go and just look at the chapters and jump straight to the instructors, which is, for us, the best way. Yes, Kerry said in the chat that uh, she loved the instant responses from Jackie. Yeah, this is a, um, this new, is thing. a new thing because uh, we have the instructors in the chat wherever possible. Um, it means that they can do the instant response Responses um, to your questions yes. as they come up. Um, that which, which certainly we should helps. have most where possible instructors available in the chat on yeah. or after their class uh, to make sure that they can uh, 
answer as many questions as you can. Somebody's asked, sure what knows. do you do after signing up for the competition? You should receive an email with a link um, and where to go log in at the right time. Just remember that the times are London-based times. So, but you can use a world clock yes. to find out the time in Miguel your Miguel's in there as well. Marlis, yes, Marlis was on last year, but she just missed getting here on time. <laughs> so she had to be afterwards. Yes. She was on the Q Corner channel, but she didn't make the convention, although she put so much work into it. But Brazil turned the internet off, I think. Brazil did turn the internet. This time she's in, and I think it was Section 46. Is, I'm, I'm right as well. I believe so. Section 40, segment 46. So we, we love Marlis, and she's here. She's actually made it. On time to QCC 2020. Qualitex has said we'll be updating the Google Drive spreadsheet and the website with links to each individual class after the streams are over. So you asked, we provided. They delivered. They, well, they delivered, yeah. We'll take the glory. No, we'll, yeah. Thanks, QCorner team. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You guys have Qualitex no idea team. how much work goes. We just smile and see yes. things in front of the camera and. The work that goes behind, People it's like very it's, hard. it's the whole idea of the swan, is it? Where the swan <laughs> glides gracefully over the surface. I'm not saying that we glide gracefully <laughs> no, over the surface. But what you're saying is, that's the swan's own legs, but this is not our legs doing all that work. <laughs> no, this the other legs, the other team. Leg, kicking like crazy underneath. <laughs> kicking like crazy underneath. Oh, it's been a busy keep it couple of weeks. It's Somebody said, uh, Felicia's asked, it's not too late to sign up for the contests, unless they're full. Um... The, this one that's about 40, to start, no, 40, that one's definitely... There are 40 <laughs> slots, I think, for each, VL, yeah. each competition. So if they're not full, sign up. You know, if you want to, sign up, why not? Have mm. a bit of fun, join in. Exactly. We'll be there, egging you on. You we'll can do, do our it. best. Yes. Welcome, Frank. Nice to see you in the chat, buddy. Yes. Um, it's okay. Right. Are we are about we ready? going to it's, we're let going over Liz... Liz on this fantastic Q Corner audience. Are you guys ready for Liz? I know. I want to. One, two, three. Yeah, they're ready. And Are you guys? Are you ready? Yeah, oh, excellent. there we go. Qualitex have just confirmed if the competition is full, it won't allow you to sign up anyway. So, yes, if you can get in there, get so in there. So, if you can sign up, Hello, you can sign Sven. Up. Everybody's here. We can, we can start now. Sven's Great. here. Fantastic. Pioneer Canada's ready. Oh, Canada. <laughs> um, and Evie's ready. Let's go over. That's and at least six this class is in Spanish, if I'm not excellent. Wrong. I've been brushing up on my Spanish and uh, in English. So excellent. Uh, Jason's balloon corner did not receive a link. We'll see if we can get one of our teams to get that link to you, buddy. I'm sure we okay. get that resolved. Right, superb. We're going to say bye bye for now. We We're going to leave you with the wonderfully uh, talented Liz Aguirre or yes. Aguirre, and. Um, We'll be back shortly. See you soon. Thanks for the invitation. It is a big, big pleasure for me to be here in Virtual Cool Corner Convention. It is the first time for share my balloon art with all the people. My name is Lisa Aguirre CBA from Mexico City. And my project will be Petit Bouquet. What is Petit Bouquet? Okay, it's here. It is Petit Bouquet. It's a little, little delivery 
may balloon figures and delicious candies and twisty. Yay! I am Twister. Are you ready for twist today? Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. My class will be in Spanish because it is my language, okay? But if you have questions, you can find me in social media by Liz Aguirre CBA. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, okay? Follow me. Okay, chicos, eh, el día de hoy, Agradezco la invitación por estar aquí en Virtual Cucorne Convention. Muchas gracias. Como comentaba yo hace un momento, yo soy Lisa Aguirre, CBA de la Ciudad de México. Y el nombre de mi proyecto se llama Petit Bouquet. ¿Qué es Petit Bouquet? Bien, en lo que yo traigo el día de hoy, lo que vamos a diseñar el día de hoy, es precisamente figuritas como esta. ¿Ok? Esto es un pequeño... Eh, ramo de entrega, podemos llamarle, no sé, un regalo que puede ser entregable con dulces y twisteado, ¿ok? Vamos a estar twisteando el día de hoy, vamos a estar retorciendo globitos y claro, eso es lo que más nos gusta. ¿Estás dispuesto a aprender el día de hoy? Ok, ¿qué es lo que vamos a necesitar para este proyecto? La lista completa de los materiales la puedes encontrar en, creo que la van a subir en Corner o puedes encontrarla en la página de Qualatex, ¿ok? De cualquier manera, si tienes alguna duda sobre los materiales, puedes contactarme directamente, ¿muy bien? Como principio, lo que voy a hacer es utilizar un globo 260Q amarillo para la figura que traigo el día de hoy, que mi temática, pues como estás mirando, es la de abejitas. ¿Sí? ¿Ok? Bien. Vamos a realizar esta figura. ¿Y qué es lo primero que vamos a necesitar? La base de esta figura es una cesta de twisting. Y vamos a necesitar seis globos amarillos, 260. ¿Ok? ¿Cómo lo vamos a trabajar? Este lo vamos a llenar con cuatro pumps. Me gusta mucho trabajar con la máquina manual independientemente de que pueda yo trabajarlo con la máquina eléctrica. En este caso, lo que me interesa es que ustedes aprendan la técnica y sepan alrededor de cuántos pumps necesitas para poder hacerlo. La medida es bien importante para no excederse del tamaño del balón buquet. Para twistear nuestra cesta, lo que voy a estar utilizando son puros globos 260. En este caso, lleva cuatro pumps, repito nuevamente. Ok, yo aquí para que el video no tarde tanto, lo que hice fue inflar los seis globos que necesito. Para poder hacer nuestra cesta vamos a utilizar seis globos 260, en este caso color amarillo, ok. Ok, yo ya los tengo. Ok. Todos están inflados a cuatro pumps, todos están inflados a cuatro pumps. Lo que voy a hacer es unirlos directamente en duplas y voy a trabajar tres parejas de globos, ¿sí? Ya que yo tengo listas mis tres parejas de globos, los voy a unir en uno solo. Pero primero voy a trabajar un pinch twist más o menos alrededor de tres dedos de ancho. Tres dedos, ¿ok? Hago la burbuja, hago el pinch y entonces ya puedo yo colocar los demás globos. ¿Ok? Después de que yo ya los coloqué, es bien importante que todos los mecanismos, todas las, el exceso de material que tenemos, lo bajes. Porque después lo vamos a desechar, lo vamos a cortar, todas las mecánicas las vamos a cortar. ¿Ok? Ya que tenemos esta figura, acuérdate, los globos de 260 están a 4 pumps cada uno. 4 pumps each balloon. ¿Ok? Entonces... Aquí es bien importante el manejo de medidas que vamos a tener. 
todas las medidas que vamos a estar trabajando va a ser cuatro dedos, ¿ok? Todas las medidas hasta terminar la cesta, ¿ok? Four fingers, four fingers. Entonces, voy a tomar la referencia del primer globo aquí, cuatro dedos, cuatro dedos, y voy a hacer una burbuja, ¿sí? Corre un poco el aire. Es indispensable que para twistear siempre estés manteniendo el aire corriendo para que puedas trabajar y tu globo no se reviente. Aquí ya tengo los primeros dos a cuatro dedos y entonces los voy a unir con el siguiente a cuatro dedos también. Tomo la medida de cuatro dedos, ¿ok? De esta manera lo paso y continúo. Todos van a estar a cuatro dedos. Esto va a venir quedando como si fuera, eh, bueno, para los que ya han trabajado el twisting, esto va quedando como si fuera un sombrero, como la base de un sombrero, que en realidad pudiéramos decir que es un sombrero, ¿ok? Si tú tomas como referencia cuatro dedos para cerrarlo, para hacer todas las medidas, te va a quedar la cesta de manera correcta, ni muy grande ni muy chica, ¿Ok? Por eso estoy utilizando yo el 260. Si tú me preguntas si se puede realizar con 160, sí, sí se puede también hacer con 160. Obviamente variaría un poco las medidas y tendrías que escalarlo. Aquí estoy introduciendo, para terminar, estoy introduciendo en el último, en la última burbuja que estaba cerrada y esto te va a venir quedando de esta manera. Si te das cuenta, como te comentaba yo, es como la base de un sombrero, como cuando tienes que hacer un platito, no sé, ¿ok? Entonces, este pinch twist que tenemos al medio, no te preocupes porque al final es el que va a venir hacia adentro, ¿ok? ¿Qué es lo que vamos a hacer aquí ahora? Voy a continuar con una pequeña burbuja de este lado, más o menos a la mitad del globo, o sea... ¿Cómo te explico? El ancho, el ancho de esta burbuja es la mitad del ancho de este globo, ¿ok? Esa es la que vamos a colocar aquí y del otro lado, en el siguiente globo, también voy a colocar una burbuja del mismo tamaño que vendrían siendo más o menos dos dedos, ¿ok? Dos dedos. Esto lo voy a cerrar y como estoy trabajando la medida de cuatro dedos, aquí también va a ser cuatro dedos, acuérdate bien. Para que te pueda quedar parejo y abierto a la altura de la entrada donde van a estar los dulces, siempre mantienes la, la medida de cuatro dedos, ¿ok? Entonces, voy a continuar aquí tomando siempre cuatro dedos, cuatro dedos, haciendo mi burbuja de dos dedos aquí en medio, tomando cuatro dedos. Otra vez aquí. Mantén el tamaño de esta burbuja en todos los laterales para que te pueda quedar parejo, ¿ok? Sigo manejando aquí cuatro dedos. No te preocupes si al principio te queda un poco separado tu tejido. Finalmente te voy a enseñar un truco que te va a servir, ¿ok? Sigo twisteando, sigo twisteando y cuando yo llego ya al último... ¿Qué es lo que voy a hacer? Voy a tomar la medida de mi burbuja, que sería cuatro dedos, y la voy a marcar. ¿Ok? ¿Te das cuenta aquí? Los cuatro dedos la voy a marcar y la voy a introducir desde atrás, desde adentro, a, agarrando mi burbuja, agarro mi burbuja y saco mi globo con mucho cuidado para que logre asentarse a donde yo hice la marca. ¿Ya viste cómo queda? Ok, aquí ya tenemos la segunda vuelta. Ahora, yo necesito aquí para poder colocar los zapatos de mi bebé, de mi muñequito, de mi petit bouquet, necesito hacer pinch twist. Voy a utilizar más o menos unos pinch twist de dos dedos en todos los laterales. Ok, entonces hago mi burbuja de dos dedos y tengo aquí mi pinch twist, ¿sale? Ok, continúo de este lado. Siempre corriendo el aire, recuerda que es importante correrlo 
Porque al twistear, si no lo haces, se puede reventar tu globo. Evitemos eso. Si tú utilizas globos de calidad, en este caso a mí me gusta Qualatex. ¿Por qué? Porque es el único globo que de verdad aguanta el uso rudo de mi twisting. <risa> ok, continuamos haciendo eh, nuestras burbujas de dos dedos para todos los laterales. Sigo twisteando, sigo twisteando. Y ya que yo tengo todas las burbujas de todos los laterales, voy a continuar con lo mismo. ¿Ok? Tomo la misma medida. Aquí ya terminé. Es la última bubble. Ok. Si te das cuenta, ya todos tienen bubbles. Todos tienen sus pinch twists. Todos tienen sus pinch twists. Ok, ¿qué voy a hacer ahora? Voy a continuar nuevamente con una burbuja de dos dedos, así como hice la primera, recuerda, bubble to fingers, pinch twist, bubble to fingers, ok. Entonces aquí continúo, tomo nuevamente la medida de dos dedos, two fingers, aquí four fingers, cuatro dedos, y voy a continuar haciendo exactamente lo mismo. Esta es mi tercera vuelta. Ok, burbuja de dos dedos, burbuja de cuatro dedos, burbuja de dos dedos, cuatro dedos, aquí nuevamente, espero que se vea claro. Burbuja de cuatro, de este lado. Ok, y ya llegué yo al principio. Vamos a hacer exactamente lo mismo, ok. Vamos a atravesar tomando primeramente la medida de cuatro dedos. Aquí tengo ya la burbuja de cuatro dedos y lo voy a volver a atravesar por la parte de atrás, asegurando mi burbuja para que no se vaya a zafar. Con mucho cuidado, lo paso, asiento, y aquí ya tengo yo mi tercera vuelta completa. Vamos a hacer así mismo una vuelta más, ¿ok? Continuamos, otra vez, two fingers, dos dedos, aquí dos dedos, two fingers, two fingers, four fingers, ¿ok? Nuevamente, esta va a ser nuestra última vuelta. Eh, nuestra pequeña cesta debe de llevar cuatro vueltas en sí, en total. Ok. Hay que tratar de mantener la medida desde el inicio, tanto de burbujas, de burbujas de los que están en los pinch twists como las burbujas que están tejiendo, ¿sale? Ya llegué yo al final de mi cuarta fila y voy a hacer lo mismo, siempre protegiendo mi burbuja interna. Ahí. Asiento. ¿Y qué es lo que voy a hacer ahora? Ya tengo yo aquí mis cuatro filas. One, two, three, four. ¿Ok? Ahora voy a trabajar pinch en todos los alrededores. Ok, voy a hacer una burbuja y pinch twist. Aquí hay algo bien importante. A lo mejor las primeras veces que tú estés twisteando tu cesta, no te va a quedar parejos todos los lados. A lo mejor vas a tener alguna diferencia en las medidas. No importa con eso, con el tiempo y con la práctica vas a ir mejorando. En este caso, si no te quedan parejos, busca el lado que va a ser tu frente, ¿ok? Las burbujas que te hayan quedado mejor de los lados, 
esas van a ser tu frente, ¿sí? Recuerda que al cliente siempre debemos de demostrarle lo mejor, ¿sí? Yo encuentro que aquí son las más parejas que fue donde yo comencé y voy a trabajar dos pinch twists para el remate, ¿ok? Aquí yo ya tengo one pinch twist y otro another one pinch twist, ¿ok? Voy a hacer dos pinch twists para ese lado. Del lado contrario a este, del lado contrario a este pinch twist, voy a hacer exactamente otro, ¿sale? Del lado contrario a este pinch. Quiere decir que si yo tengo aquí dos pinch twists, en la parte de aquí atrás voy a trabajar otra vez dos pinch twists. Es importante que es donde va a venir la cabeza de nuestra abeja, en este caso. Quiero que hagas los pinch twists un poco más grandes de lo que se ha venido trabajando. Ok, me parecería bien poder hacerlo de tres dedos. Three fingers for pinch twists. Ok, entonces sería tres dedos, aquí más o menos, tres dedos el pinch twist. ¿Por qué? Tú me preguntas, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué lo estamos haciendo así, Liz? Ok, porque este es el pinch central que va a estar sosteniendo la cabeza. Entonces, yo necesito que sea un pinch más grande para que le dé un soporte adicional a la cabeza. Ok. Todo esto que yo ya tengo los pinch twists aquí listos, lo que voy a hacer es cortar el excedente y aquí es donde viene el truco. ¿Recuerdas que te comenté? Voy a anudar aquí. ¿Recuerdas que te comenté que no te preocuparas si tu tejido te quedaba abierto? Ok, aquí viene el truco. ¿Qué es lo que voy a hacer? Voy a tomar el excedente que quedó de mi globo. Lo voy a pasar por la parte de adentro. De adentro. Y lo voy a sacar de este lado. ¿Ok? De esta manera lo que va a ocurrir es que cuando yo jale, cuando yo jale, mi tejido se va a cerrar, ¿sí? Sí se nota la diferencia. Entonces, yo tengo aquí el excedente y lo voy a sacar del lado contrario sobre la burbuja interna. Como yo ya lo tengo aquí trenzado, lo que voy a hacer es cortar el excedente, ¿sí? La tijera se me pierde, esas tijeras, creo que a todos los decoradores, ese dolor de cabeza de todos los decoradores. Aquí yo tengo una bolsita en donde yo voy a estar poniendo todo mi excedente. Es importante que cuides todos esos residuos de globo. Hay que trabajar en pro del medio ambiente. Ok, voy a continuar haciendo una burbuja y un pinch twist. Además de los dos pinch twists que tuvimos de este lado. Un pinch twist, two pinch twist, front. Este es el frente y esta es la parte de atrás. Ahora todos los demás van a tener solamente un pinch twist. Aquí voy a cortar. <coughs> Perdón. Voy a cortar. Y voy a hacer exactamente lo mismo. ¿Ok? Para que mi tejido se vea cerrado. Entonces voy hacia abajo. Jalo. Saco el excedente. Y lo subo sobre la burbuja. ¿Sí? Aquí mismo adentro voy a cortar el excedente porque obviamente tenemos que cuidar todas nuestras mecánicas. ¿Sí? Continúo. Tú me debes estar preguntando muy seguramente, pero Liz, esa parte de abajo del buque, esta parte de abajo está como que boluda. No. Eh, no, no va a quedar así. Espera. Entonces, yo continúo aquí. Sigo sacándolo. Sigo haciendo el nudo. Hay algunos que no hacen el nudo. Pero yo prefiero asegurar más mi trabajo y que de esta manera pueda durar más tiempo. Si tú quieres que tu trabajo tenga una mayor durabilidad, la verdad yo recomendaría el uso del High Flow siempre. ¿Ok? 
Esto permite, tanto en lugares cálidos como en lugares fríos, que nuestro globo tenga un menor grado de degradación. ¿Ok? Bien. Sigo cortando mi excedente, limpiando mis mecánicas. Ahorita vamos a trabajar la parte de abajo. No te desesperes. ¿Ok? Este es el que tiene los dos fish twists, ¿recuerdas? Sigue haciendo nudo, voy bajando. Sigo cerrando mi tejido, cambiando del otro lado y pues literalmente ya casi terminamos con nuestra cesta, ¿sale? Otra vez hago mi pinch twist aquí. Tú dices, wow, ¿qué finalidad tienen esos pinch twists? Créeme de verdad que este proyecto está bien estudiado, bien estudiado, todo tiene una finalidad. ¿Por qué unos tienen dos pinch twists? ¿Por qué unos tienen solamente uno? Todo lo vamos a descubrir. Ok, yo sigo cerrando aquí. Sigo asegurando mi cestita. Ya solamente nos queda uno. Limpiando mecánicas. Nuevamente vuelvo con el último pinch twist. Sí, este es el último. Solamente saco aire, anudo y me voy para abajo. Ok, corto mecánicas. Ahora te enseño qué es lo que vamos a hacer con la parte de abajo. Ok, bien, esta parte de abajo lo que vamos a hacer es pasar... Nuestro pinch twist central hacia abajo. Con cuidado lo vamos a pasar para abajo. Y todas las mecánicas que están de este lado, todas las mecánicas las voy a sacar. ¿Ok? Todas estas boquillas, que el trabajo quede bien limpio, que no se vea nada de esto. ¿Sí? Ok, aún así como está, todavía no queda plano. Para que nuestro petit bouquet pueda sentarse sobre una mesa, yo necesito hacer para adentro el fondo. ¿Cómo lo voy a hacer? Simplemente voy a acomodar todas las burbujas que van adentro. Y de esta forma queda completamente plano hacia atrás. Ya puedo yo asentarlo de manera estable, de manera firme. Y sobre todo, quiero comentarte algo. El hecho de que tengamos una burbuja central en la parte de abajo, el hecho de que la tengamos, lo que va a producir es que puedas colocar los dulces. Si te das cuenta, las aberturas son mínimas y tú puedes perfectamente colocar los dulces. Este que está aquí no tiene absolutamente nada adentro más que su base. Y mira los dulces y la cantidad de dulces que tiene. Está perfecto, ¿ok? Vamos a estar trabajando el mismo tamaño, las mismas medidas. Remember, four fingers and two fingers. Four fingers, two fingers, ¿ok? Cuatro dedos, dos dedos. Cuatro dedos, dos dedos. Este es un ejemplo también que al final de la clase te voy a estar mostrando, ¿ok? Vamos a avanzar. Y entonces ya tenemos nuestra cesta. Y ahora, eh, ¿para qué? Va, ¿Cuál va a ser la funcionalidad de estos pinch que tenemos aquí? Volvemos nuevamente con nuestro centro y vamos a trabajar en la parte de aquí donde están los pinch twists. Vamos a colocar los pies o más bien los zapatitos de nuestra abeja. En este caso yo ya tengo hecho uno para avanzar, pero de todas formas voy a mostrarte cómo lo hice. ¿Ok? Voy a tomar un globo 260 negro. Y voy a colocar cuatro pumps. ¿Ok? Four pumps. Ahí mismo voy a trabajar un loop twist. Tomo la referencia para que esté bien el mío. Y de todas formas te voy a dar la medida. Vendrían siendo unos cinco dedos. Five fingers. ¿Ok? Lo voy a cerrar sobre su boquilla y voy a atravesar la boquilla por en medio. Aquí está la boquilla. 
Asimismo voy a hacer una burbuja, corro el aire, voy a hacer una burbuja aquí abajo. Si te das cuenta, esta tiene una burbuja de tres dedos, perdón, tres dedos así, tres dedos y la voy a convertir en pinch twist, ¿ok? Igual, giro uno y dos. Por lo general, luego el globo negro es un poquito más delicado, entonces tienes que tener más paciencia para trabajar tu pinch twist, ¿ok? Bien, aquí donde estoy voy a tomar la medida desde acá, desde aquí abajo voy a tomar la medida para eh, que quede completo lo que vendría siendo la parte de en medio de mi pie, de mi piecito, ¿sí? Tomo la medida, veo que quede parejo, de esta forma, y entonces ya puedo retirar el excedente. Trata de no cortar tan pegado para que eso te permita poder colocar el pie en los pinch twists. Esto lo voy a atravesar por la parte de adentro y ya lo saco aquí, ¿ok? Entonces, ya te quedan los dos piecitos iguales. Ok, los dos piecitos iguales y los voy a colocar en donde están, tomando la referencia de los que tienen los dos pinch twists, acuérdate que este es el frente y esta es la parte de atrás, <risa> tomando la referencia voy a colocar en los laterales los zapatos, ok, aquí mismo voy a atar de donde están los pinch twists, entonces voy a comenzar, con eh, el excedente lo voy a colocar en mi pinch twist, gíralo, solamente le das dos vueltas y ya quedó completamente asegurado, ¿ok? Ahora voy a cortar mecánicas. Desde la parte de abajo, si te das cuenta, aquí yo tengo la boquilla y con esa boquilla voy a atar el siguiente pinch. Con mucho cuidado, lo paso... Y ya puedo cortar los excedentes. Corto excedente y voy a acomodar del pinch twist para que quede bien afianzado mi zapatito. ¿Sí? Aquí mismo me quedó una mecánica que voy a sacar. También la voy a cortar. De esta manera mi zapatito queda afianzado. Voy con el siguiente. Acuérdate que este es el medio y aquí en el, en el siguiente donde están los dos pinch twists voy a colocar mi zapato. Vuelvo nuevamente a tomar la mecánica a toda parte de arriba. Dos vueltas y voy a tomar la que está aquí abajo y lo voy a colocar en el siguiente pinch twist que está en medio. Corto mecánicas y ya puedo acomodar mis dos zapatitos. Mira cómo queda. ¡Uh! <ríe> Bien lindo. Ok, continuamos. Vámonos de volada. Ahora voy a continuar con la cabeza. El, el globo que yo estoy utilizando es un Quick Link del número 12. Ok. Te recuerdo que la lista de los materiales de mi clase los puedes conseguir, posteriormente va a ser subido de manera oficial. Entonces, para la cabeza de mi abejita voy a utilizar 12 pumps, 12 pumps. ¿Cómo lo voy a trabajar? Voy a emboquillar y voy a tratar de llevar el cuello de mi globo sobre mi bomba, ¿ok? Voy a poner 12 pumps. Listo. Este es el tamaño de mi cabecita, ¿ok? Cierro y mucho ojo aquí porque vienen unas técnicas para poder colocar lo que son las antenas de la abeja. Primero que nada voy a utilizar un globo 160 color negro y este sí lo voy a inflar con la máquina eléctrica porque casi lo voy a llenar completo. Ok, más o menos voy a dejar solamente como unos 10 centímetros de largo y necesito que lo suavices sacando aire para que me permita estar manejable, ¿sí? Esto debe de quedar suave, no tenso. Entonces, dejo aquí más o menos unos 2 centímetros de boquilla y voy a atar a la parte de la boquilla del globo blush. 
¿ok? Ya lo tengo yo aquí sujeto y entonces voy a empezar a medir a donde está el conector. De aquí del conector voy a tomar la medida de tres dedos, tres dedos, three fingers, aquí, y aquí voy a cerrar, hacer una marca, ¿ok? Aquí tengo una marca y en esta voy a hacer tres pinch twists. Más o menos de un dedo, one finger, ¿ok? Ahí estoy haciendo, si te fijas, dos pinch twists. Y voy a poner one more, another one more, otro más. Tienen que ser tres, tres pinch twists. ¿Ok? Ahí mismo. Este mecanismo que estamos trabajando es lo que te permite poder colocar las antenas. Entonces, ya quedó de esta manera aquí. Y lo que voy a hacer de este lado, voy a tomar la medida más o menos de un dedo y voy a hacer una pequeña burbuja. Más o menos de un dedo. Aquí voy a hacer un pinch twist. Another one pinch twist. Another one pinch twist. Two pinch twist. ¿Ok? Ahora que yo ya tengo este mecanismo, three pinch twist, two pinch twist, tres pinch twist, dos pinch twist. Ahora que yo ya tengo este mecanismo, yo ya puedo sujetar, ya puedo sujetar al conector de la cabeza y lo voy a atravesar por los dos pinch twist. Voy a hacer un nudo y voy a cortar el excedente porque esto ya no me va a funcionar, ya no me va a servir. ¿Ok? Entonces esto queda fuera. Trata de ocultarlo y voy a continuar. ¿Qué es lo que voy a hacer ahora? Si yo tomé la medida de un dedo aquí para dejar una burbuja, voy a dejar aquí una burbuja y tres pinch twists de la misma manera como hice estos. ¿Ok? One bubble. One pinch twist. Another one pinch twist. And another one. Three pinch twists. ¿Ok? De esta forma yo ya tengo el mecanismo que va a servir para colocar las antenas de mi abeja. ¿Ok? Ahora yo cierro aquí y ojo, voy a atar de la boquilla de mi globo negro. De esta boquilla de mi globo negro, ahí lo voy a atar. No lo ates a la boquilla del globo color blush, ¿ok? Todos los globos que vamos a estar colocando para hacer la cabeza de nuestra abeja tienen que ir de manera individual, ¿ok? Ok, ya tengo yo aquí el mecanismo. ¿Qué es lo que voy a hacer ahora? Voy a colocar un globo 160 color amarillo. De la misma forma voy a inflar casi completo. Casi completo, estoy dejando, no sé, unos 10 centímetros. 10 centímetros. Y lo mismo, voy a sacar aire. Voy a sacar aire para que pueda quedar suave mi globo. ¿Sí? Anudo y voy a ir directamente otra vez. A la boquilla, pero lo voy a empezar a atar, no directamente de la boquilla, del blush, sino de su misma boquilla de color amarillo. Que es lo que te decía, hacerlo individual. Ok, aquí lo que voy a hacer ahora es hacer la diadema de mi abejita y voy a tomar la siguiente referencia. Ok, así como está... Aquí, de este lado, en este, en este grupo de pinch twist, voy a hacer un pinch twist con el amarillo, ¿ok? Así, ahorita te lo muestro. A la misma altura voy a hacer un pinch twist más o menos de three fingers, tres dedos. One pinch twist, three fingers, ¿ok? Ahí lo cierro. Ahí lo cierro y ¿qué es lo que voy a hacer para sujetarlo? Voy a tomar un excedente de globo negro, un pedacito de globo negro, lo voy a atar a los pinch twists que tengo a este lado 
y esto me va a servir para sujetar la, el pinch twist del globo amarillo. Ok, aquí lo paso y de esta manera ya va a quedar sujeta todo el adorno de la cabeza de mi muñeco. Continúo aquí abajo y recuerda atarlo directamente a su propia boquilla de color amarillo, ¿sí? Hasta donde llegue. Lo ato con su propia boquilla. Y anudo. No te preocupes ahorita si se mira abierto, no pasa nada. Corto los excedentes. Corto los excedentes y va quedando de esta forma. Mira. ¿Ok? Ahora voy a colocar otro igual en la parte de atrás. Voy a tomar otro globo amarillo 160 y lo voy a inflar de la misma manera, casi completo. ¿Ok? Estoy dejando tentativamente igual unos 7, 8 centímetros. Saco el aire. Quiero que quede flojito mi, mi globo suavecito y lo voy a atar de igual forma a la parte de abajo donde está la boquilla del brush. Nuevamente te comento que se tiene que atar de manera individual a su propia boquilla, ¿ok? No toques la boquilla del brush porque esa tiene que quedar independiente. Ok, ahí está. Te muestro cómo queda, ¿ok? Y me voy otra vez nuevamente para cerrar. Lo que voy a hacer aquí es colocar dos excedentes de globo negro en cada uno de los pinch twists para que pueda servir para afianzar el, este, la diadema que sigue, ¿ok? Entonces estoy tomando dos pedacitos y lo voy a colocar en los pinch twists negros que tengo aquí. pedacito y voy con el otro pedacito en el otro pinch ok ya que yo tengo los dos excedentes de esta forma lo que voy a hacer con el amarillo es tomar la medida hasta donde llega con el pinch twist y hacer un pinch twist amarillo de two fingers dos dedos ok voy a hacer over And pinch twist. Este pinch twist lo voy a afianzar con el excedente que coloqué aquí de color negro. ¿sí? Eso me va a permitir que se mantenga firme todo lo que tiene en la cabeza mi abejita. Lo coloco ahí y lo pierdo. ¿sí? Okay, ahora sí ya puedo cortar el excedente. Ahí. Y aquí mismo voy a hacer lo mismo con lo que sigue, ¿sí? Aquí en el que sigue, en el pinch twist que sigue. Vuelvo otra vez, lo tomo, hago una bubble, two fingers, y lo voy a atar con este excedente. Trata de que quede bien asegurado para que no se esté corriendo, no se esté bajando lo que es la, de la, el adorno de la cabeza de nuestra abeja. Con este excedente que tenemos aquí, lo único que voy a hacer es darle como una forma redonda aquí y lo voy a atar a su misma boquilla. En eso quedamos, ¿va? Dejando libre la boquilla del brush, ok, atamos do, dos veces y corto excedentes, ahora sí ya puedes cortar todas las boquillas de los demás globos, todas las boquillas de los demás globos y esto te debe de quedar de esta forma, ok, bien, 
Aquí ya tenemos la cabeza de nuestra abejita. Y si te fijas bien, esta que está aquí, lleva un moñito que es lo que tapa la mecánica de abajo. Ok, te voy a enseñar cómo hacer el moñito. Lo voy a utilizar con globo, en este caso es rosa mexicano 160. Voy a tomar un pedacito nada más. Estoy inflando más o menos unos, eh, que será 20, 25 centímetros. Ok, anudo y voy a cerrar en un loop. En este caso, le doy vuelta, lo anudo y corto, ¿sí? Este sí, no necesito que tenga ahí los amarres ni nada de eso. Voy a cortar el excedente y voy a dejar solamente la pura boquilla, ¿ok? Entonces, tomo la mitad del moñito, trato de que sea exactamente la mitad del moñito, lo giro y con la boquilla voy a amarrar, voy a dar vueltas, voy a girarlo, ¿ok? Lo voy a pasar por abajo de uno de ellos y ya quedó el moño, ¿ok? De esta manera yo ya tengo mi moño, que es lo que voy a colocar en la cabeza de mi muñequita, ¿sí? Entonces voy a agarrar este que es más pequeño y lo voy a colocar en la cabeza, ¿Cómo lo voy a colocar? Voy a agarrar el pinch twist que está en un lado de la cabeza de la abejita, aquí, y lo voy a atravesar en, en el pinch twist, ¿ok? Con mucho cuidado para que no se vaya a romper, porque es un pinch twist central y puede romperse. Este lo que va a hacer es venir a tapar toda la mecánica que está por la parte de atrás de la cabeza, ¿sí? Sin embargo, aquí todavía tengo mecánicas donde estuve amarrando todo eso, quítalo. Ahí quedó. Y ahora nada más vamos a hacer las antenas. Voy a tomar más o menos la medida de unos 20, 25 centímetros para la antena de la abeja. Aquí tengo yo ya una. Y la voy a hacer con un 160 negro. ¿Sí? Lo necesito de la parte de donde está la punta del globo para que mi trabajo se vea lo más profesional posible. Entonces, no voy a utilizar todo el globo, lo corto a la mitad y voy a agarrar únicamente lo que es la punta, ¿ok? Aquí vamos... Ok, aquí yo voy a medir la cantidad que yo tengo tentativamente con el otro globito. Más o menos, te comentaba yo que es como unos 20, 25 centímetros para las antenas de la abeja. Ahora sí, le voy a dar vuelta y cómo la voy a trabajar, le giro y le voy a dar aquí un pequeño pellizconcito. ¿Te diste cuenta? Uy, uh, bien rápido. Mira. Le doy vuelta y le doy un pequeño pellizconcito. Y ya queda. Y si no me gusta todavía, le voy a girar más como un tipo caracolito. ¿Ok? Así es como deben de quedar las antenitas. Bien. Ahora, aquí en la parte donde trabajamos los tres pinch twists negros, es donde yo voy a colocar las antenas. Entonces, con el excedente que tengo aquí, voy a colocarlo. Acomoda los pinch para que te permitan tener estable las antenas. Ok, ahí quedó una y ahora voy con la otra. Todo el excedente que está aquí hay que retirarlo para que no se vea feo el trabajo. Ok. Ahí quedó. Acomodas tus antenas a la forma como a ti te guste. Ahí quedó una más. 
doblada que la otra porque le di más vueltas. Y ahí están las antenas de mi abejita. ¿Ok? Bien, vamos a continuar. ¿Ya viste cómo se colocaron? Ahora ya es el momento de preparar los brazos de mi, de mi abejita. Y voy a utilizar un, un 260 negro para los brazos de la abeja. ¿Ok? Voy a partir este globito a la mitad. Lo voy a cortar. Le voy a hacer nudo. Y voy a utilizar primeramente el que tiene la boquilla. Esa la voy a llenar y le voy a colocar más o menos tres puntos. Vamos a ver si esa es la medida. Siempre debes de medirlo a contra lo que es del pinch twist central, que quedamos que es donde va a estar la cabeza. Perdón, ya se, se zafó. Se lo vuelvo a poner aire. Vamos a agarrar otro más. Aquí. Más o menos es lo que te comentaba yo, que a veces el globo negro es un poquito más delicado porque se siente como un poquito más delgado. ¿Ok? Bien. Esto que tengo yo aquí vendría siendo el brazo de mi muñeca, pero sin embargo, como uno se me rompió, voy a, a tener que tomar la mitad de otro 260 negro lo voy a llenar y de todas formas esta medida es tentativa ¿por qué tentativa? porque yo necesito ver el ancho de donde va a venir del, del pinch twist central que te dije de donde va a venir yo voy a tomar la medida los voy a atar a los pinch estos son los brazos ok voy a atar uno y voy a atar el otro y entonces de esa manera voy a medir que me queden parejos los brazos. Ahorita te voy a decir por qué. Ok, los ato yo ahí. Y lo que yo quiero aquí, no sé si se alcanza a ver, no sé si se alcanza a ver. Lo que yo quiero es que llegue literalmente a estos pinch el color negro debe de quedar literalmente hasta estos pinch porque aquí es donde van a venir las manitas, ¿ok? Entonces, toma la medida y te decía yo, Liz, ¿por qué hiciste tantos pinch twists? Ok, estos pinch twists que están en los laterales, lo que van a venir a hacer es ajustar los brazos de la, de la abeja. ¿Cómo los van a ajustar? Ok, yo voy a tomar la medida, la medida de mi brazo lo voy a tomar hacia abajo de ese pinch twist, como si la abeja estuviera abrazando la cesta, ¿ok? Entonces, ya que yo tomé la medida, llega hasta el siguiente pinch, ahorita te lo enseño, y voy a cortar todo el excedente, ¿ok? Corto ya el excedente, y ahí es donde va a venir la mano de mi abeja. Aquí tengo yo ya hecha una mano, para que tú veas cómo la voy a afianzar con el pinch del bracito, con el, el bracito que tengo aquí, ¿sí? Entonces, vamos a hacer la siguiente manita para que veas cómo la hice. Voy a utilizar un 160 blush. Voy a inflar más o menos unos 30 centímetros, ahí más o menos, ahí más o menos. Para hacer mi manita. ¿Cuánto mide la manita? Dices tú. Ok, vamos a ver cuánto mide la manita. Esta manita viene midiendo más o menos unos entre 3 y 4 dedos. Ok, entonces tomo la medida. Tomo la medida que quede exactamente al mismo tamaño. Voy a cerrar en un loop. Paso la mecánica por atrás. Y voy a hacer dos pinch twists, ¿ok? Estos pinch twists pueden ser de un dedo, one finger, ¿ok? Entonces, ya tengo los dos pinch twists y voy a cerrar. Este es un estilo de manita básica. Si tú quieres, puedes ponerle todavía más arte a tu diseño, a tu diseño según como tú lo desees. Aquí voy a amarrar todos los excedentes. Ya quedó mi manita. 
corto los excedentes, voy a cortar uno de los excedentes, ¿ok? Y este ya lo voy a atar al bracito. Entonces, lo voy a pasar hacia abajo del pinch para que tenga la sensación de que está abrazando su cesta. ¿La viste? Ok, ahora lo voy a afianzar con el mismo pinch para obligarlo a que vaya hacia abajo. Y de esta manera lo que voy a hacer es cerrar con la manita, atravesar los pinch twists de color blush. Los voy a atravesar y ya puedo cortar, aquí yo ya puedo cortar el excedente del negro, ¿sí? Ahí. Como yo dejé la boquilla del color blush, este va a venir a atarse al pinch twist que tiene donde está el zapato, ¿sí? Entonces, aquí voy hacia abajo nuevamente, agarro el pinch twist, ahorita vas a ver cómo queda, ¿ok? Ok, si no tuviera yo el pinch twist, el brazo me quedaría de esa forma, levantado. Pero precisamente por eso dejé este pinch twist para obligar a mi bracito a que quede de esta manera como si estuviera abrazando su cesta. Vamos con el otro brazo, ¿ok? Exactamente lo mismo. Tomo la medida, corto a donde está precisamente el pinch Saco aquí, corto y voy a atar la manita. Si te das cuenta, aquí tengo el excedente que me va a servir para atar el otro. ¿Sale? Aquí voy pasando los pinch twists. Voy pasando los pinch twists por... del color negro ¿por qué corto el excedente del color negro? porque nada más es el negro porque yo estoy trabajando color claro que en este caso es el amarillo y si yo lo pongo sobre el pinch twist se va a notar más la mecánica entonces prefiero atar el color blush que es un color más clarito voy hacia abajo y ato hay que tratar de no utilizar tanto pegamento, ¿sí? ¿Por qué? Porque este tipo de arreglos, por lo general, se los dan a los niños y entonces lo que sucede es que los niños lo, lo quieren estar tocando y lo que pasa es que, pues, con el pegamento se puede romper. Entonces, para evitar que todo esto suceda, es mejor utilizar los conectores, ¿sí? Ok, si te das cuenta ya quedó esto, ¿sí? Aquí estoy viendo yo una mecánica negra, que es lo que te digo, cuando trabajas colores claros se nota mucho. Entonces ya quedó aquí eh, lo que es la cesta. Voy a colocar ya la cabeza, antes le voy a poner la carita. Para que tú veas cómo le hago la carita, súper fácil, súper sencilla. Ok, te voy a explicar. Yo utilizo unas etiquetas de color blanco o negra, si tú, las, si tú las tienes, si las puedes conseguir. Yo utilizo dos etiquetas, las pinto con un marcador. En, el mío, en mi caso es blanco, pero yo las pinté con el marcador blanco y posteriormente utilicé pintura y esta herramienta. ¿ok? Esta herramienta es una herramienta de puntos que te puede servir para utilizar con la pintura blanca, si te das cuenta, aquí tengo yo una muestra y te voy a enseñar cómo funciona la herramienta. Tiene diferentes puntas, son cuatro puntas las que tiene, diferentes tamaños, según el punto que tú necesitas hacer. En este caso, mis puntos van a ser con la misma medida, pero tenue. Ok, entonces voy a agarrar una de las puntas, solamente aplico pintura ahí y la voy a colocar sobre 
mi etiqueta negra, le pongo aquí uno y le pongo otro. Y allí tengo mi ojo, ¿ok? Como ya tengo yo aquí dos ojitos que ya está seca la pintura, son los que voy a utilizar. De cualquier manera tú, si tienes máquina cameo o otra cosa, puedes utilizarlo. Yo en este caso así lo hago, ¿sí? Entonces, ¿qué es lo que voy a hacer aquí? Voy a colocar mis ojitos tratando, buscando de que sea lo más en medio posible, lo más centrado. Aplico mi etiqueta. Voy con la siguiente. Ya ni sé cuál era la que estaba seca. <risa> bueno. Ok. Entonces voy con la siguiente y pego mi otro ojito. Me quedó. ¿Viste? Y le voy a poner sus pestañas porque a nosotras nos encanta la coquetería. <risa> Entonces aquí ya le pongo sus pequeñas pestañitas chiquitas, coquetonas. Una, dos y tres. Ahí quedó. Y luego la otra. Una, dos y tres. Listo. Unas pequeñas cejitas. Ahí. Una pequeña naricita. Y una pequeña boquita. Ok, creo que le pinté la boquita chueca, pero bueno, ahí quedó. Ahí quedó. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que voy a hacer aquí? Voy a colocarle sus chapetitas con un poquito de pintura rosa, que yo tengo aquí guardada, una pintura rosa, solamente con un poquito de mi dedo aquí. Se lo pongo a los laterales. Ahí, ahí, ok, no hagas caso de la boquita, quedó un poquito chueca, pero bueno, ahí tienes la muestra original, que con calma la realicé, y ahora sí voy a colocar el cuello al pinch twist central, que es lo que yo te había dicho, ok, entonces acomodo, acomodo los pinch para poder introducir la boquilla de mi abejita, la boquilla del blush, ¿ok? Esto lo voy a atravesar aquí abajo, bien firme, y ya puedo yo llevar al frente mi muñeca. Baja el pinch para que el pinch te permita acomodar tu cabecita de manera que quede completamente centrada, ¿ok? Aquí ahorita le, a la muñeca le hace falta lo que viene siendo el cuello, ¿sí? Para tapar toda esta mecánica. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que voy a hacer aquí? Voy a utilizar un globo rosa. Voy a utilizar un globo rosa. Y voy a inflar más o menos unos 20, 25 centímetros. Ahí más o menos, ¿sale? Ahí yo creo que se le llevó a 30, más o menos. Entonces saco el aire. Voy a hacer dos pinch twists. Más o menos de unos two fingers, ¿ok? Two pinch twists, two fingers. Lo voy a hacer como tipo loop twist, atravieso la boquilla y ahora sí, cierro aquí, ¿ok? Este vendría siendo el cuello de mi muñeca, pero para que yo cree unidad con el corazón que vamos a hacer ahorita, voy a introducir un pedacito del globo rosa que tengo, que es del mismo color de mi corazón, ¿sí? Entonces, esta la voy a llenar solamente una pequeña burbuja, un suspirito de aire, si te das cuenta, más o menos dos dedos, chiquito, y voy a cerrar sobre sí misma, uno y dos, 
¿ok? De esta manera yo corto excedentes. Solamente me está quedando un pedacito que es el que yo voy a unir a la parte de los pinch twist. ¿Sale? Ahí mismo saco el excedente. Saco el excedente y esto te debe de quedar así. Eso va a venir atado a donde está el cuello de la muñeca. Ahí lo voy a dejar por mientras. Voy a trabajar el corazón de distorsión que debe de llevar al frente. ¿Cómo lo voy a hacer? Voy a utilizar un globo color rosa mexicano y voy a tener que hacer una pequeña distorsión. En este caso voy a introducir un blush 160. No es a la mitad, es un poquito menos. Lo introduzco completo hasta donde topa la boquilla. Trata de que quede bien, que introduzca bien la boquilla, porque esa va a ser la medida del corazón. Ok, si te fijas, ahí quedó, ¿sí? Ok, primero voy a inflar el que está afuera, el globo rosa, un, dos, tres, pums. Y después voy a utilizar la bomba de bolsillo, la pocket. Y la voy a llenar hasta donde yo sienta que ya toparon las dos puntas de mi globo. Ahí quedó, ¿ok? Ahí están juntas las dos puntas de mi globo. Esa va a ser la medida. Saco el excedente y voy a atar. Aquí yo estoy haciendo un pequeño corazoncito, a little heart for the front, ¿ok? Bien, ya si te das cuenta, la boquilla me queda, me queda de este lado. Yo la necesito en la parte de atrás porque la voy a unir para los, las manitas de mi abeja. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que voy a hacer? Echo aire, ahí, y voy a empezar a girar. Hacia dónde yo quiero mi boquilla, ¿sí? Hacia qué altura quiero mi boquilla. Yo la quiero en la parte del medio del corazón, si te fijas cómo está esta. La quiero en la parte del medio y ahora voy a distorsionar la figura. Entonces bajo, provocando que se cierre en forma de corazón. Mira qué hermoso quedó. ¡Wow! ¿Ya viste? <risa> Bueno, entonces hay que divertirse con el twisting, ¿ok? Bien, ahora ya quedó aquí, ¿y qué es lo que voy a hacer aquí? Si te das cuenta, yo dejé aquí un pinch twist, dos pinch twist, y allí voy a atar el corazón en medio. Voy a pasar por el medio de las bubbles, lo paso del otro lado, y lo amarro para que evitar que se vaya a zafar, ¿ok? Lo estoy amarrando por las burbujas internas, las burbujas internas. Corto el excedente que me quedó en la parte de atrás. Ahí corto el excedente y ahora sí voy a acomodar el corazón de manera que mi abejita quede agarrando el corazón con sus manitas. Esto sí que es una curiosidad. ¿Ya te diste cuenta que no utilicé pegamento? Bueno, el pinch twist que está en la parte de abajo está sirviendo para obligar a que quede sujeto el corazón y aún así está amarrado por dentro. Los dos pinch twists están sujetando el corazón, ¿ok? Ahora, la manita de mi muñequita la voy a obligar a que toque el, el corazón, como diciendo, aquí está eh, mi corazón, ¿ok? Allí yo la obligo a que toque con sus manitas. Todo es cuestión de que tú manipules los pinch twists que tienes abajo. Y tentativamente, ahí está quedando... Acomódalo para que no quede chueco el corazón. ¿De qué forma? Uh -huh. Y ya nos vamos ahora con el cuello de la muñeca. 
ahí está quedando. No hagas caso de la cara. Acuérdate que me salió chueca, ¿eh? Es así como que... Mmm. <risa> ¿Ok? Bueno. Ya tenemos este mecanismo que es para el cuello. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que voy a hacer aquí? ¿Qué es lo que voy a hacer aquí? Lo voy a atravesar por el cuello de mi muñequita. Y posteriormente, ya por último, para terminar, ay, para terminar, lo que voy a hacer es las alas. No hay que olvidar las alas. Acuérdense que las abejitas tienen alas. Entonces, voy a atravesarlo por el cuello, por la parte de abajo. Saco el aire aquí para que no me haga espacio en medio. Entonces, esta la voy a atravesar por la parte de atrás del pinch twist. Ok. Allá tapando la mecánica. Para que quede bien coqueta. De todas formas, le vamos a poner unos bonitos brillitos para que se vea más coqueta, ok, acomodamos todas las antenas, todo, y ahora vamos con las alas, sí, vamos con las alas, ¿qué necesito para las alas? Voy a inflar un globo rosa, del color que estoy utilizando en el cuello, para poder hacerle unidad a todos los colores que estoy trabajando, ok, ahorita va a agarrar estabilidad mi cabecita cuando yo coloque las antenas. Voy a llenar todo el globo, todo el globo lo llené completo y voy a sacar el aire, saca el aire para que pueda estar suave de la misma forma, porque también lo voy a twistear, entonces aquí lo amarro la boquilla con la colita del globo, voy a tomar la mitad de mi globo aquí y lo voy a cerrar. Y aún así lo voy a amarrar juntos para que no se safe. ¿Ok? Esto le voy a dar forma. Le voy a dar forma a mi abejita, mis alitas. Y con este excedente que tengo acá lo voy a atar al pinch twist central que está por la parte de atrás que vendría siendo este. ¿Sí? Ahí lo voy a atar. Con cuidado, lo voy a atravesar. Y así ya quedan listas las alas de mi muñeca. Voy a acomodarlo. Acomodamos todo, que vaya quedando ya todo parejo. Okay. Tiene todo completamente eh, parejito para que se vea homogéneo nuestro trabajo, ¿ok? Medidas, rectificando todo, que quede correcto, el tamaño donde debe de ir. Aquí se sacó mi moño, lo voy a volver a colocar, que estaba yo manipulando y bueno, ahí quedó. Bien, ¿ya viste cómo están quedando las alas? Ya quedaron las alas, ya quedó la viejita de frente. Solamente estoy aquí acomodando el muñito que tengo de lateral. Ok, para poder tapar mi mecánica. Sí. 
Y bueno, de esa manera es como viene quedando. Yo de todas maneras a esta que tengo aquí, que es la que tengo yo de demostración, yo le coloqué unos brillitos. A mí me gusta mucho trabajar con los brillitos. Aquí están, son las piedritas que venden allá en las mercerías, no sé. Las puedes conseguir ahí. En cualquier parte están las papelerías. Entonces lo que hago yo solamente es cortar una piedrita y colocarla en la parte del moñito, ¿sí? La coloco aquí en la parte del moñito y de esa forma queda muy coqueta mi muñequita, ¿sí? Entonces, ya que nos quedó la muñequita, ya que nos quedó esta muñequita, lo que yo quiero ahora es enseñarles otros diseños de Petit Bouquet para que ustedes puedan ver. Ya les había mostrado el de la hada, el que está aquí, y también quiero que vean este. Este es otro diseño de Petit Bouquet, diferente, ¿sí? Pero dentro de la misma, eh, dentro de la misma modalidad de Petit Bouquet, si te das cuenta, es la misma cesta, la misma cesta. Y lo que yo hice solamente es twistear la palabra mom, ¿ok? La M, el corazón viene siendo la letra O de mom y dice mom, ¿ok? Aquí yo apliqué este globos foil de los nuevos de temporada, los que están en tendencia, si te das cuenta, los decoré allá en la parte de arriba con unos corazones para crear unidad, ¿sí? Pero es la misma temática de Petit Bouquet, ¿ok? También dentro de la tendencia de Petit Bouquet, tengo yo otra modalidad que voy a mostrarles y la dejé para lo último. Quiero que lo vean, se las voy a mostrar aquí. A ver. Este es otro proyecto que yo quiero que ustedes observen. Y este se llama Petit, se llama Piñata Balloon. ¿Ok? Piñata Balloon. ¿De qué se trata este proyecto? Este proyecto es un proyecto inspirado en los globos foil de Qualatex. No sé si se alcanza a ver allí. En la cámara se alcanza a ver el globo de hasta arriba. Ok. Inspirado en el globo foil, en cualquiera de los globos foil, <coughs> se hacen las piñatas. Ok. Esta piñata está hecha a la forma y la figura del globo de arriba. Y me encanta este proyecto, yo creo que es un proyecto muy noble, porque tú puedes sacar el buquet que tienes adentro. Obviamente cada uno tiene sus bases, como debe de ser, sus bases individuales, y la persona puede utilizar la piñata para introducir dulces, para introducir dulces de regalo para la persona. Esta piñata te puede servir tanto de adorno para fiestas, de alcancía, ¿ok? Es muy noble, muy fácil. Tú puedes hacerlas tú mismo o puedes mandar a hacerlas con alguien que haga piñatas, ¿ok? Tomando la referencia de cualquiera de los globos cualates, ¿ok? Si en este caso yo tengo un hada, yo puedo mandar a hacer la piñata, la piñata de hada, ¿sí? Y la puedo mandar a hacer exactamente a la orden de la figura. Entonces, puedes colocar aquí adentro ropa, regalos, joyería, dinero, fruta, lo que tú quieras con eh, la entrada grande de la piñata. Es muy dura. Y las bases pueden usarse de manera individual, llegando la persona puede transportarlas Aquí la persona las puede transportar individualmente, ¿sí? En cualquier tipo de transporte porque es pequeña, ¿ok? Esta está diseñada para ser de 45 centímetros máximo. Entonces, puedes utilizarla con el buquet o sin el ramo de globos. Mira. Llega a la fiesta, saca el buquet y la piñata te sirve. ¿Qué te parece? Thanks for watching my class. If you repeat my design, please put attachment or put my name there, hashtag Liz Aguirre CBA. Okay? Muchas gracias por observar mi clase.
Chicos, espero de verdad que puedan replicar algunas de las cosas que les he mostrado este día. Espero que les haya gustado. Y bueno, muchas gracias, Food Corner, por la invitación. Bye, bye. My name is Samar Kilani. I am from Syria. I be a balloon artist before 18 years. Uh, it's eight years in Syria and 10 years in uh, Keller, Texas. Uh, and this is my friend Rosie, and she balloon hey. artist also. <laughs> and she gonna help me today uh, for to translate for her. me because <laughs> I do a lot mistake with speak English. Me too. And <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So what are you making today? Okay, I my project today for do the big head for the rabbit uh, front door. It's all the project. Let's go with uh, quick link. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Let's start. All right. Ok, bueno, pues eh, como dijo Sisi, vamos a hacer este proyecto de las orejas de un conejo. Para celebrar las fiestas pascuas vamos a hacer eh, esta oreja en eh, tamaño grande. Eh, también vamos a hacer una canasta con unos huevitos muy bonitos y unas zanahorias. Así que vamos a empezar. Ok, so let's start. Uh -huh. All right. Ok, now we can start to blowing the balloons. I blowing the balloons already and I do the half arch already because it needs it's a lot of time for uh, connecting. Sí, okay. ella, ella ya comenzó la primera parte a inflar porque toma muchísimo tiempo el estar conectando. Okay. We need for this project it's a 12 inches quick link white and 12 inches quick link pink and 6 inches quick link white and 6 inches quick link pink. And we need 5 inches white balloon and 5 inches pink balloons. Sí, pues lo que vamos a necesitar para este proyecto, eh, vamos a usar de 12 pulgadas quick links, de 6 pulgadas quick links y 5 pulgadas en blanco. Los de 12 pulgadas vamos a utilizar blanco y rosa, rosa pastel, y los de 6 pulgadas también vamos a utilizar uh, blanco y rosa. Go ahead. Now I have to blowing the balloons. It's uh, nine balloons, uh, eight inches, and two two lane. We can tape together, and for the connecting, we can do separate balloons. It's ten balloon uh, blowing. It's eight inches. Okay, let's start to blowing the balloon. So, lo que vamos a hacer, vamos a hacer dos cadenas de nueve globos de quick links inflados a 8 pulgadas. Y vamos a hacer las conexiones de 8 pulgadas uh, para conectar las dos líneas. Las dos cadenas de nueve globos quick links de 12 pulgadas inflados a 8 pulgadas. Es lo que vamos a empezar a hacer. Do it's nine balloons like this connecting together for make like this. It's two time. It's two nine balloons. Okay. Sí. Se van a hacer dos cadenas de eh, la cadena de nueve globos inflados a ocho pulgadas. 
now I blowing single balloon it's eight inches and we're connecting between two lame balloon and now we do for connecting it's five inches and blowing this one at one inch <laughs> And now we have to connect them together. Ahora las vamos a conectar. para que se vaya formando la línea aquí ya tenemos unas preparadas y las vamos a ir armando ok ok now guys I want to connecting the two lane H1 it's nine balloon and I want to connecting together So vamos a conectar un globo de 12 pulgadas quickly inflado a 8 pulgadas con 5 pulgadas inflado a 1 pulgada. And the last one. And this is the last one. Uh -huh. El último. Ok. Now well done this is the side here get well done this one okay. let's go to start to do the another side i will do this one before and now the same but different size okay now we have to do the another side we have to do two lane it's 10 balloons we have to blowing the balloon it's first three balloon it's six inches and seven balloon we're blowing it's five inches and for between we have to blowing all the balloon it's come it's five inches and connecting together so esta cadena is de 10 globos los tres primeros van a ser de seis pulgadas y los otros siete de cinco pulgadas vamos a usar las mismas conexiones con un globo de 5 pulgadas inflado a una pulgada para conectarlos. That looks wonderful. For I'm done the other side. This is como queda la otra línea. El otro tamaño que viene siendo la parte de adentro. Now we have to do to connecting the two sides together. Two. Okay, now we have to connecting its two sides together. Okay. To be connecting, we have different size for this one okay now this one right it starts its big one okay so we can start in the big balloon here at six inches and five inch balloon in the top and now we can start for added this one together with the connecting balloon it's come it's five inch i use the 12 inch balloon and blowing It's five inches. Ahora vamos a empezar a conectar la parte del medio y lo vamos a conectar con uh, 12 pulgadas quick links inflado a 5 pulgadas, igual con las mismas uh, 5 pulgadas inflado a 1 pulgada para empezar a conectar. Ok, now I use it this one for los tres primeros. Dos. Three balloons, first three balloons bigger, six inches one. And now We can start here for the different size balloon. Ahora vamos a empezar con los tamaños más chicos que vamos a agregar uh, de 3 pulgadas 
y tres y media y después tres y media, cuatro, cuatro, cuatro y media y así sucesivamente. So we're gonna add three to three and a half. We're gonna add now it's three different size balloon, but I wanna see the cut Maya. Now we can start to add its uh, balloon in the middle. Uh, I use its two balloon in the middle. It's different size. Uh, I start in five inch, uh, six inch balloon, quick link, and this one it's come, it's uh, blowing, it's three feet, three inches, and this one three and a half. And we can. So ahora vamos a inflar, inflamos ya eh, quick links de seis pulgadas, inflado a tres pulgadas y tres pulgadas y media para la conexión. And we can do the different size it's go half inches for each one this one is three and three and a half and can we can do now here it's three and a half and four so se va a agregar cada media pulgada y así sucesivamente si es tres tres y medio después tres y medio cuatro después cuatro cuatro y medio y así sucesivamente four and four and a half cuatro cuatro y medio Okay, now four and a half and five. And five and five and a half. Five and a half and six. So you're adding half an inch as you go. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it okay. looks. Now we have to do the another side, the same. We can start for the first one, this one here. And now the first one is three, three and a half. Mm -hmm. This one is smaller. So now you are connecting the back side of it. Uh -huh. to add the lane between okay now I have to add in the middle connecting it's h1 like this connecting and here I use it seven balloon I 
blowing this one it's six inches between for connecting the two sides together and this one I blowing this one at six inches Okay, now we've done this side and we have to do the other side. Uh, where's my balloon? Ahora vamos a voltearlo para hacer el mismo procedimiento. It's seven balloons. Siete globos inflados a seis pulgadas. Okay. Now. Oh. A second one. Right? Here. I need one balloon here. Here you go. Okay. Now we can use the same balloon connecting. Okay. I'm blowing the balloon. It's the same. It's a quick length thing, 12 inches. I'm start in six inch, five, four, three, right? Correct. And I do two, and I twist it. So inflamos en los mismos eh, las 12 pulgadas de quick links inflado a 6, 5, 4 y 3. Ok, where the white one? Here. No. Oh, right here. I think so. Right. Yeah, yes. And I do this one. I make, it's the first two here. one it's four inches and this two it's five and this one one two three four five six it's six inches okay entonces 
eh, hold, it, hold it so I can explain to them in Spanish. So, estas dos son de 4 pulgadas, 5 pulgadas, y 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, de 6 pulgadas. Okay. Let's start here. There's one side here. Oh. The other ear. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Maya. Yes. Yay. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Oh my okay. god. <laughs> Let's see. para hacer la parte de arriba que va a ir quedando así it's gonna look like this this is the, the top part yeah now we have to do two sides we have to add it Just like this, quite like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're good. One more? No, no, fine. Okay. Now, are we missing one here? One no. and five inch? Yeah, one five inch, please. Okay, now the look. And I made this one before. Ya le habíamos adelantado a hacer la otra parte, la de arriba, okay? And we can now add it together. Entonces lo vamos a conectar. Also, we have to connecting together. I want to start to connect the ear 
Here we have x2, 1, the corner, and another one here. because I want to connect him with this point together. Ahorita ya estamos terminando lo que es la conexión entre la oreja y la base de abajo. Y así es como se va a ir formando. Okay. Now to connecting two pieces together, I use the same and the five inch balloon Para conectar las dos orejas va a ser una de cinco, de doce pulgadas quickly. And six, two inches. Y ahora dos, uh, doce pulgadas inflados a seis pulgadas. Six inches for the last one. Y ahora la última cadenita va a ser de doce pulgadas quickly, quickly inflados a seis pulgadas. For connecting, we have to use its two balloons here. It's come like cross. Okay, to connect here, I use its two 12 inches balloon. I blowing this one, it's four. to do the same for two sides it's come together we have to put one two three balloons for do the two level together uh i blowing this one it's six inches okay okay so rosie uh, with the small balloon you know the small the little ones the five inch no rosie between here or this uh, one, this one is six inches, it's come between. Not. We can add it, this little one. Four inch connecting area. Seguimos conectando. Okay, and let's go to do the another side. Vamos a voltear por el otro lado y hacer el mismo procedimiento con los conectores. Entonces, vamos a inflar uno de cinco, tres de seis y dos de seis. Ahí está, ahí está, ahí está, ahí está, ahí está. So how long, on average, a job like this would take? Uh, I need, we need three to four hours. Yeah. To do the bunny. The day before. To start brewing yeah. the day before. <laughs> yes. Of course. Four, size four. Blowing. Blowing okay. size four, yeah. Size four. 
Si no, los últimos dos globos de 12 pulgadas se van a entrar a 4 pulgadas para conectar eh, una B así atrás de las orejas. Ustedes ven estos huecos que se pueden rellenar con la globo de 11 pulgadas para que se rellene el hueco y se sostenga más, se haga más firme. Ok, now we're going to fill these, these gaps with some 11 inch, inflated probably to 6 or 7 inch. Y vamos a terminar ahora de rellenar estos huecos con 11 pulgadas, eh, más o menos inflados a 6 o 7 pulgadas para rellenar estos huecos. Ustedes van a ir viendo cada hueco, ahí le pueden meter huevos para llenar. So we have to fill, you know, all these gaps with some 11 inch. You know, white, and if it's a pink, well, we can use pink. Different sizes. To make it, you know, and make it more firm, the base. So, para que esté más firme la base. And now for nose, I do this one. Para la nariz vamos a usar uno de 16 pulgadas. Está narizón. We have a big nose. We <laughs> have a big nose. It looks it? amazing. Right? Yes. Really nice. okay. And the ladies have worked so hard on this. It looks okay. amazing. Now we're filling up the gaps. We need here is one, two, three, four, five more. So we keep filling all these gaps and try to make sure the nasal goes down so it doesn't choke. Vamos a seguir rellenando y cubriendo los huecos con los de 11 pulgadas inflados a 6 pulgadas. Well, the, the, did you see how it feels, you know, how it looks like already? Okay. More feel? Yeah. Se ve mejor, ¿verdad? Más lleno.
so we are going to use these little things that we can attach to the brake and then hold the uh, balloons. Esos los vamos a usar, son unos cuadritos de madera, honestamente no sé, los pueden conseguir en una tienda de, de ferretería o hardware, you know, con uh, hilo cáñamo, pero son muy buenos para detener globos. This is what I use it. So fish. Very easy. Okay. Fishing line. Fishing line. With this one. Some people use it for electric or something like this. It's plastic and you can here. Peel and stick. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I make already some basket and carrots. We can use it here. <laughs> you can try it. That's right. beautiful. <laughs> and also, this carrot is made with the uh, quick links as well. Okay, yeah. esta también está está hecha con las 12 pulgadas y 6 pulgadas quick links. All set. I'm done, guys. Okay. What do you think? It's awesome. We did it! Hey, look amazing! Thank you so much, guys. Make subscribe and like my classes i'm sorry i do a lot of mistake i know because this is first time for me i'm so nervous i hope everybody like it thank you hey al fin terminamos quedó preciosa que les pareció verdad suscríbanse a la clase con sisi eh, está padrísima la clase así que denos un like bye Mexico and USA. Woo! <laughs>
Hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Marvin Ohmstedt. I'm 27 years old and I'm from Germany. And I yeah, want to explain you something about personalized balloons and how to stand up from other competitors and uh, yeah, how you can go up your business with some new ideas maybe or maybe you use them but you don't already um, take them or I don't know so maybe you take a few ideas of them and you can use it um, yeah that is our timeline um, we want to watch out what is a silhouette cameo what is it for a machine and uh, what is it you how you can use it and I want to give you some tips and tricks um, on how to plot your foils and something like that but we watched out later um, I want to show you how you can make logos with your balloons and um, if you have a request from any company and they have her own logo, uh, how you can print it on a balloon without to order 100 balloons with, a, with the same logo on it or something like that. So you can personalize the balloons just for this company or with names or whatever you want. So it's a very cool idea. and. You can do it very easily. Um, we want to watch out what other offers um, we can do if we get a quote. So how to sell more. Um, if you get a request from a company and they say, ah, oh, yeah, I need 10 balloons or something like that. Um, what can we offer them? Because they didn't know what we can do with balloons or something like that. And um, yeah, I want to show you some tips and tricks round about this thema. Um, then I want to look up what we should do after the event. So if the event is finished, um, what you should do after it and how you should um, yeah, um, talk with each other or something like that. And all the rest is uh, other stuff or other things and uh, questions. So if you have questions, just write it on the chat um, and I can answer it. So just let me know if you don't understand anything or I can try to explain it to you. So that's it. Okay, so I want to tell you a little bit around my me and uh, my background so my name is Marvin Ohmstedt I did my CBA in 2014 in Bremen here in Germany um, yeah I live and work in Bremen it's in the north from Germany and I have a home-based company so you are today at home at my home and um, maybe you can see a little bit later one of my workspace um, so if we um, go and watch out to the silhouette. Um, you can see a little bit of my room where I uh, work and do all the stuff. Um, normally, if we are not in lockdown, so today we are in lockdown and we are not allowed to um, meet other people, um, just one person from one other house, so very less and we don't have parties. But I think it's all around the world, so uh, you know it. We all have very less parties and events. But normally I have uh, one or two employees who work for and with me. And so we can um, yeah, make all the events here in the north um, from Germany. I learned in a bank, so I'm a bank clerk. And um, so I have a little bit background from, from bank and all the stuff from having a company and something like that. Um, yeah, that's for me. And um, now we go to the next step. So what do I use for the silhouette? Um, I have some of these foils. Um, these may be around uh, 30 centimeters. And um, it's about 12 inch uh, wide. So I have them in many colors. Uh, I have white, black, green, red, uh, lilac, gold, silver, blue, pink, and yeah, some, some colors. You can um, try out yourself what it works best for you and your balloon. So you should um, know that it works better if it uh, fits to the balloons or which color you use in design, you should also use in the foils. Um, now for better showing because for the white background I have 
choose the color pink. <laughs> and this is, this is the foil. Um, I use Overcal um, 631. That's the, the name of it. And it's a very good foil for me because it's, uh, it fit very good to the balloons. Yeah. And um, to put it on, I have some of these transfer paper. You also can use a transfer foil, but for me it's a, the paper, it's better because it's not so sticky. So if you um, transfer the sticker to the balloon and you place them there, it works for me better with the, with the paper because it sticks, but it's not too sticky and you can um, place the, the sticker very good on the balloon. Yeah. And now we watch again with the silhouette how it works. Okay, so now we look up on the silhouette cameo. That is that one. And uh, yeah, here it's in German, um, but I think you can, you know what you have to do. If you open it, um, you have a place here where, can, where you can put your foils and uh, your foil into it. And that one is a knife and that one will cut out the uh, the foil yeah and on the settings you can um, say on your computer what you want to cut out and i set it to foil so you can also cut out some um, carton or something like that and you can cut it uh, through but uh, this foil should just um, should just here on the first I didn't get it out now, but you just want to cut out the foil and not the whole thing. And yeah, if you place it here, you can do it on this line here. You should bring it directly here and place it in. And now you are finished. Normally you can close it, but now I uh, leave it open. So you can see whatever you like. Okay, if we go to the computer, here you have your program and you can um, set everything as you like. Um, I have done it now in English, so I hope I find everything because normally I work here in German. And that one is your cutting area, so it's like your foil on this machine okay and if you begin you can just click this text button place it here and write whatever you want so in this case I write happy um, birthday so you can make it a little bit bigger and I just zoom in a little bit oh. so you can see it better oh okay we write happy birthday and that is a normal uh, font area but I didn't like it so if you select everything and go over here that are all the fonts you have on your PC so I have Boked a few um, a few new fonts for me um, that I can use something like that, okay. And if you click on it, you can see here how big it big it is. But it's not that one just here. It's the whole thing from here to here, okay. It's not just the form. So maybe you have to do it a little bit less or a little bit bigger to do it in a wide way. You need them. And uh, you don't should always go to this line here, to the red line, because the red line is the area where the knife didn't cut. So leave a little bit space here to just to get sure that everything is cut out white okay so if you have uh, to do a lot more of these you can just copy and paste them and 
you can put some more here so you can um, pre-cut them so if you don't have if you have a shop and you are very busy and you don't have the time to cut out if the customer is there you can just cut out a few thing things like happy birthday or i love you or yeah i don't know what you like um, but you can can do stuff like this so now i want to write the name it's the name of my sister but i want to take another font for that one maybe i uh, take this one mm. i think that one is good um, but we do it later in another color okay so now we just cut out the happy birthday and if i go here to the silhouette and it's connect um, to each other i think the new model will also do it uh, with wireless but now i have to use a cable and i can say start and the machine will begin to cut out <laughs> Now you can just prepare your balloons and if you personalize your balloons, just begin with the, with the printing process because now you have time where you have to wait um, and you can do your balloons and get everything finished. So if the printer is ready, you just have to place a sticker on it, okay? So. You didn't have to watch all the things. Um, I print it out for you and we see us later. Okay, now we are ready with the name and I just print my sister's name on it and we print it on the black one. And you just can see a little bit that it's pre-cut, okay? So now if you turn it around, you can see here all the lines and it's very helpful for you because you can watch how big your name is and yeah, just cut out the lines and you can cut very, very straight to it. So, and now you have the name. And you just have to peel off all the rest. You have to be a little bit careful. I do it just with my hands. Uh, you can also use a tool, uh, some metal or something like that um, to peel it off easier, but it works good for me. And now you have to do it with all of these as well. It's a difficult name because of all these ones. So every letter has one of these. Uh, normally you don't have it. And now you need your transfer paper. So just take a piece of it and place it here. Press a little bit. Oh. So and if you turn it around, you can go over with your nails a little bit just to make it sticky. And then I cut out all the things I didn't um, did not need. I do not need because um, it's more easy for me to place 
just this one to the balloon um, instead of place everything in it. Okay, so now I prepare the other thing and wait. Okay, so we are now finished with both of them and we can place it in two ways on a balloon. One way is to have some box like this and some uh, 260 Q here and you can place your bottle inside this one and it's very good for you because you have a line so you can see how how you um, print it on the balloon so you are very um, yeah very in one way but I do it today without this one because for me it's easier if I place them between a table and uh, between my legs. Um, if you do it with helium, you also can do it. Today I have filled it with uh, with air because it's yeah more easy for me now. And we begin with this one. I peel off everything here, and now you can see if you have scratched enough okay so and now you see that everything is on a balloon you have to stand direct to the table and your nozzle is here on the bottom and you place them here so if I want to have it this way and now I begin to to do it on the bubble and I begin in the middle. This thing isn't stick to the balloon. So I just begin here. Now I do the other side and just go from the middle to the edges, to the corner. Okay. And now you can peel off careful, carefully all this stuff. And do it very flat because it's easier to peel off. So, and now you are finished. Um, if you have something like this and it's a little bit so, you can peel off again and stick again to the balloon. Now it's it's gone. Okay, so you're already with the first one, and now we do the name on it. Here you can see it doesn't work. So okay. So we are ready, place your balloon right and begin from the middle. And also if you have the letters, go here and um, do, do it in one way. So begin in the middle and go here, go around here and this one also here, go just here and then here, always from the middle because it's much easier for you. So now we can peel off. So, and we are ready with our birthday balloon for my sister. And that's it. I hope you understand everything and you feel comfortable to test it out and try it. So it's not as hard as it as it sounds or something like that. Um, just try it out and yeah, do your best on it. So um, I just show you how you use uh, the fonts and the writings, but you also can do it with the logo. Okay. So now 
I can show you how you can do your logo with it. You just need a very uh, yeah, wide area and you put your logo just as a JPEG file in it. So zoom a little bit out. Okay, and now you see the Eiffel Tower and wait, I'm do it so you can see everything. Okay, open the trace window on this side and select trace area. Okay, and now you can easily place this one over it and you see a little yellow um, line between the Eiffel Tower. So you need the high pass filter in this area and place them very high until everything is filled with the yellow color, okay? And then you can trace. And if you put out the picture and you erase that, you have your Eiffel Tower here. And sometimes it doesn't work as good and if you double click here you see all the files and if you have one you have to correct you just place it here and you have a Eiffel Tower okay so you can also correct the points if you need to and now you can also select the, the size and then just print it or duplicate it and print a lot. You can do it with hearts or stars or whatever you like. And uh, you can always have a few stickers at your shop to stick it on the balloons. With this one, I just showed you um, how it works. You can do it with every logo. So it's very cool um, if you get a request and uh, you know, ah, okay, it's an easy logo and I can and do it on the balloons. So you did not um, do it with every logo. So if you got a request from just a normal customer and he wants a, a soccer club or a football club or something like that on their balloons. So you should know if you have the, if the logo has a copyright or something like that. And most um, big or uh, big companies has a copyright on it. So you're not allowed to print um, in most times um, to the balloons. So um, it can be very expensive for you if you um, print it on, on the balloon and uh, you are not allowed to. So um, maybe just text the company, is it okay or don't do it. It's mostly the easiest way and um, do some different things. So if you have a soccer club, just print a ball on it or if you want to do other things. So no, you should know what the customers want and maybe you can print some other stuff and who, who or what looks very similar to that what a customer want. You know what I mean? Okay. So now you know everything about the logos. And now we can uh, transfer and stick it to the balloons. So if you print it on the balloon and um, you don't use this transfer paper, for the first time I didn't know that uh, there is transfer paper on the market and I uh, peel off every piece and uh, put it uh, separately on the balloon and it looks like my logo. That was the first thing I've ever done. It was something like that and one, one stuff like that. So don't do it. Use transfer paper uh, or, or foil, whatever works best for you. And um, yeah, just try it out. Sometimes you have a logo who is very round and it's um, closed on all ends. And most of balloons, like the bubble balloons or some foil balloons, are a little bit round shaped like this. And if you put it on a balloon, um, you have some 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 rest of it. I can show you later close up um, what I mean with it. And um, just cut it out and 
um, press it over so everything is fine. If you need some more stuff like this, and uh, you can go to the shop in Silhouette Cameo. They, are, they have their own shop and you can uh, buy some stuff like this. Um, they have many fonts there who is wide to plot. So it's very easy if you buy the foil there and plot it. Um, you can go to the shop and um, also use some new designs or something like that if you need an airplane or you need a boat or I don't know maybe a tree or something like that you can buy these stuff there or you can do it by your own with um, the thing I told you with the logo so it works also um, with all other stuff if you google and uh, maybe you, you need a tree or something like that Normally I Google and uh, tree drawing or something like that. And if you uh, Google it in English, you have many results uh, with it. And you can um, maybe use one of these and um, do it with the stuff like a logo I, I um, showed you. Um, but it's like the logos, maybe sometimes you are not allowed to use them drawings because every pic, um, picture is copyrighted. So yeah. I think you I think you know what I mean but um, yeah maybe be a little bit careful with it um, but you can do some stuff like that so now we go over to the photos I have some photos for you um, what I have done in the yeah, last past years um, you can write the name on the balloon, like on a, a four, something like that. Um, it's a, a dark blue one and I put some snowflakes on it and um, write the name on it. Or you can um, use if you are on a um, on the event and you want to print your company name or something like that. Um, it's on the um, 18 inch uh, heart. It's a white heart and um, I just print out my um, my website so every, now, every person know where the balloons from and where they can order it. Or you can yeah, write the names on it or um, the stuff in the white thing um, is the North Star one. Um, you can uh, also put your um, logo on it um, or a logo from a I think that one was from a ice cube or something like that uh, they sell some ice and yeah I print the logo on it for it so um, we have some more photos just uh, some names of it and uh, sometimes you can watch out in the folds what you want to know and um, wait if you have a design you can watch out where you can print something like that so here you have free space so here you can print everything um, on it or you can uh, use this kind of foil and you see here is a star or the the band you can also write a name or uh, some some sign on it or whatever you like so it's very good for you um, if you watch out just the foils and you know what you can do with it um, also on a cloud it's one of my favorites um, because you have uh, very much space on it and you can print whatever you like you can um, print just the names or um, some sayings or something like that it's it's a very good balloon um, and you can do a lot of of it yeah so um Mostly I print the names on it or some signs. Um, you can watch out the photos, just a few ones. And um, I also print sometimes on latex balloons by, but I think, uh, but I can say something about these later in my workshop because there are some differences and it's sometimes it's not so easy um, to to print on a latex balloons, but I say later something like that to it. So if you have um, a special customer who wants to have uh, like these balloons on the left one, um, 
with a um, body builder or something like that you also can just go to the internet or go to the shop and um, search for your design what you want to use and um, just download it and, and use it and cut it out so you can do very cool balloons and very customizable however it spokes um, very customized yeah so um, I, I love this idea for the balloons. Yeah, also on the hard ones, one one of my favorites is also that one <laughs> because you have two hearts on it and um, two on each side. So you can print the name and the date or something like that or um, where they meet the first time or whatever you like. It's, it's a very cool balloon and um, it looks very like it's printed on the balloon with a sticker because normally you don't see um, see that is it is a sticker on it yeah um, if you have some person who like to ride a bike or a motorcycle or something like that you also can print something on the balloon and you can um, maybe do a figure like that and twist some balloon um, so you can do more designs and um, it's yeah it's very cool to see how it works and I really love the chrome balloons um, they have a nice color and if you place them on the balloon or into the balloons and print something on it it looks very cool for it yeah so now we look to the stability and um, sometimes some people told me yeah or tell me yeah there are some uh, bubbles or some some air um, between the balloon and the sticker how and why <laughs> why does the um, air is between these layers um, well if you blow up a balloon with air or with helium it doesn't matter um, it's full now if you blow it up but a few hours later, the balloon will shrink and will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, you just print out the sticker and most time you see it um, on the stickers who are very big. So if you have um, small thin fonts or something like that or small uh, curls or something like that, um, you didn't see it as much. But if you have a logo with a very big, um, big foil on it, you will see it very, um, yeah, very fast because the balloon shrinks and will get smaller, as I uh, told. And the sticker has this, the same size all the time. So you just place the sticker on it and the balloon will shrink and shrink. So you don't um, should do a balloon two or three days after you, uh, before you need them. Uh, you should print the balloon um, or you should put the sticker on it just before you need or before the balloon leaves um, your shop. So you get the best results if you do it on this way. Mm. As I told you, we want to speak about print on latex. So it's possible, it's definitely possible, but it's not so doable. Um, that means that the latex balloons will shrink uh, very, very f um, faster um, than a normal foil balloon or a bubble balloon because uh, the air or the helium will get out of the balloons all around the latex balloon. And on a foil balloon, it's um, just the, um, the small ventil um, on, on the bottom where the air can um, go through or on a bubble balloon it's also just the, the small ones on a on the side and you um, will close it very very um, tightly so the air didn't get out as far uh, as yeah as uh, fast as on a on the latex balloons and the latex balloons will shrink very fast um, so one tip from me is to make everything uh, finished for your deco or for your presents or bouquets or whatever and print out the sticker and um, just before the customers um, get these balloons or if they are in your shop just 
place them and um, put the, the sticker on a balloon and tell your customer that it will be shrink. So maybe the customers can go around and um, make the sticker um, very tight again if they are at home or something like that. Um, yeah, but I don't do it very often. Um, I um, normally put it on foils or on bubble balloons because it works much better and you don't have any any um, tellings or any uh, bad customers who, who come came back to you and say, oh, the, the print is off, uh, off and something like that. So yeah, do it better on, on foils and something like that. Um, I have done it on a, on a big one, um, on a three foot balloon. It also works, but um, yeah, it's, it's on a three foot balloon. It's a little bit better than on a 11 inch balloon because the 11 inch balloon will shrink uh, faster as a three foot balloon. And you can put the, the company logo um, for one day, it's fine. Um, and most events are just one day uh, where the customer comes or I don't know. So it's better for them um, if you print it on, yeah. You also can use glitter on your balloons. It's also a very good idea to personalize, a, uh, to personalize your balloons. Um, you have some glue pens in different sizes. Um, I can show you. Okay, so now we look up with the glitter and I have here some some uh, glitter glue pens. Okay, I have it in yeah two different sizes. I take the big one and for this workshop we write down a little, a little bit Q. So you can see it's just a little bit on it. And I have uh, all paper I place here. And I use this one, the crafting powder in silver. And now I just place them all over it. You can use a lot. It doesn't matter. So if everything is filled with glitter, you just turn it over your cartoon. And you are finished with your cue and if you have it done in this way you have the powder here and you can make this one open you open this one and fill all the glitter back so you can use them again okay so now we go to the next part, logos with balloons and think big. It's a good idea to get some, some new customers or to get some customers to something new. So you can do it with both. Um, if you get a request from any company or from a big customer, um, just send them her own logo in balloons. And I didn't mean that you should print a little logo on a small balloon or something like that, think big. Um, I have done it for for many companies now. And um, if they send me an email and say, yeah, I need 10 balloons or I need uh, some arch and something like that, um, I um, give them what they need. So I send them, I send them uh, an offer with 10 balloons and an arch and column and something like that. But I do a separate um, offer and um, do a photo montage, uh, a photo, photo workshop and photo shop um, and put their own logo into a balloon. 
logo. So that they don't get the email with the offer, I can do your logo with balloons. So they can see how it looks if it has done in balloons. Yeah. And uh, you should do it in a professional way. So use Photoshop or uh, Affinity Designer or um, mostly I use the um, program from Chris Adiamo. I show you uh, later. And um, if you go to the website from uh, Chris Adiamo, it's balloonpro.co, um, they, they have some very cool stuff there. Uh, you have a balloon column co calculator where you can calculate how many balloons do you need for a column. Um, if you have to do four meter balloons and you want to blow them up to 25 um, centimeter um, and you do layer of four balloons, you need 20 layers um, and with in total 80 balloons like in this example. It's very cool if you um, didn't know if you if you know how to how much you blow up your balloons and how um, uh, how uh, long it should be yeah so he has another tool it's the balloon arch calculator um, it's also on the on the, um, his website and if you have done a string of pearl arch or something like that you can say how high and how wide it should be and um, which space you want to leave between each balloon and um, how um, tall you want to blow up the balloon and he um, just say you how many meters do you need for arch line and how many balloons do you need so it's a very fast way to calculate how many balloons you need and how much um, arch do you need and um, what the total cost of it is so uh, if you get a request for 25 meters and two meters high or, or five meters high and 20 meters uh, wide, you didn't know how many balloons you need and you can't calculate how much helium you need, how much balloons you need, how much arch you need and something like that. And with this tool, it's very, very easy and you can do it very fast. Yeah. Um, you also can um, feel the ceiling with balloons. They also have a, uh, he also has a program on it. Um, you type in how um, tall the, the room is, um, what wide and length the room has, and um, you can say, okay, I want to spread 100% or I just want to cover 50% or something like that. And you can say uh, how many balloons um, you need. So you can um, mix them up with um, 25 centimeter balloons, 40, uh, 16 inch balloons, and um, maybe three foot balloons or something like that. And you can just type in 10% with uh, three foot balloons and um, yeah, 25% with uh, 16 inch and the rest with uh, 25 inch. Uh, a twit, uh, with 11 inch balloons or something like that. So yeah, I'm sometimes very confused with, uh, with um, inch and centimeters because in Germany we uh, calculate everything in centimeters, but now I want to do it most times for you in inch. Uh, sometimes it's very complicated for me. Okay, um, so now you need, know everything about the Balloon Pro tools and I want to show how I um, calculate and how you can do the balloons um, and put the logo on it, something like that. So you go, go to the design tools and add a model. Um, I put on the uh, 12 inch uh, X padders um, and put all the colors you need. They ha uh, he has all the Qualitex colors available. So you can just choose which colors you need and put it on. And then you have a, a big, um, uh, some big um, program and you can see all the balloons and just click um, every balloon or you can um, um, hold your mouse and go all over the balloons and they can uh, fill it on all with the, with the color you, you chosen. Um, so I have done it with a logo from our soccer club. Um, it's five meters um, 
five meters to five meters. It's it's very, very big. And um, yeah, I just um, calculate uh, how many balloons I need. That's also one of these um, cool uh, features of this program at the end. Uh, I exactly know how many balloons I need uh, in which color with 5 inch, um, 11 inch, uh, 12 inch quick links and um, so many in white, so many in green and, and something like that. It's very, very good for me to know and I just can calculate the costs around that. I just have to um, calculate my work um, time in it and then I have a good, a good price for it. So that's the finished product and um, I built it also here in my, um, in my room and um, because of the very big space, it's five meters to five meters as I told you, um, it was very different to get out to the door. So I just um, split it in two pieces, uh, that is where the red uh, line you can see. I just um, make the first one and the second one and I build it together on a location event and wing it to the ceiling. Um, it was good. If you have to split a logo with um, these sizes in two or three pieces or more pieces, um, you have to think about it. Because if you draw the, uh, the um, balloons and you uh, know how many balloons they are in a row, um, you should do because if you blow up the balloons, you can blow up two balloons at the same time, okay? So if you know that, you should not split with with um, five balloons or, or seven balloons or something like that. Do two, four, six, eight, ten balloons or something like that and do the split there uh, if it's possible. Because it's uh, much easier for you if you um, can all the time blow up if you can blow up all the time two balloons together and tie them and make everything um, finish. Instead, if you have to do uh, far, two times um, two balloons and then just one balloon because you split it wrong in the wrong way. So um, yeah, think about your design and um, what you do and then you it's maybe a little bit easier. Okay, um, but you can do it with a lot um, of logos, not, not just with, with uh, this logo. I have maybe that one is from a, uh, from a train here in Germany. Um, it's their logo. Um, I have done it as a wall for them and uh, they didn't buy it, but um, they uh, told me, oh, it's a very cool idea. Uh, now we have a smaller event. We just need the columns and something like that. Um, but it's good to know that um, you can do it and some stuff like that. Or from a um, high school, it's also a logo here. Um, I sent them uh, to him for to do some photos in front of that. Um, it's also a very, very cool idea. Yeah. And uh, you can design whatever you want. Um, mostly with quick links is very cool if you use this tool to design your balloons. Um, I have done it for uh, me in, in my bank where I work um, they have some, some um, special offer with some uh, new bank products and um, it was all around the house and I um, built the house um, in the color, in the company colors and um, you can see on the left side how it was designed with the tool. You also can um, export it as a PNG file. Uh, so you didn't have a background on it and you can put it uh, direct on the customer's location if you are there and um, you or you can um, uh, go to the customers uh, and make some photos or they can send you photos. So it's very easy with email or WhatsApp if they send you a photo from their location. So you didn't have to drive there and um, waste your time with just making photos or something like that. Um, tell them they should send you some photos where they have uh, want to have some balloons. And um, yeah, you can do something like that. And on the right side, you can see the finished product. So. I like it. 
Um, also, I don't know what Stadtwerke is in, in English, but it's also a company who has uh, some gas and uh, water here in our city. Um, and they have a logo with a heart on it and they um yeah they bought it um because i have designed it for them and um yeah it's it's a cool idea okay so now we go to other stuff or how to sell more yeah okay now we are on the next chapter other stuff and or how to sell more so customers didn't know what is possible with balloons. They just see normal balloons or an arch or a garland or something like that and they didn't know what you can do with your balloons. Um, and sometimes they just want a few balloons on the ceiling or something like that or a bouquet or something, yeah, I don't know, something um, bold stuff. Um, but photos say more than words. So you have to do some Photoshop work or do, I, I do it with Affinity Designer. It's a very good um, program for me and it's uh, very cheap. And um, you can do a package sale. So um, it's a, as it is cheaper for the customer if they buy more from you. So you can um, offer them, okay, I have a, a cheap version, it's this one, I have a medium version with these, these and these stuff, or I have a um, big uh, super luxus uh, version with all, um, with all you need for your event or something like that. And you always should be professional. So if you can do it with a program, just design it and place it um, not on a, on a normal background with, with white or, or blue um, in the background. Um, go to Google Maps and um, some, mostly they have street view. And if you go to street view, you can um, make a screenshot from, um, they, from, her, um, from her location or from his location and um, use this photo and place your columns or arch or whatever you like in front of it. So if you send it to a customer, it's, it's not, ah, yeah, you can do a column or something like that. It's, ah, it looks very nice. And it, um, customers see uh, today is there an event or something like that. And you should be professional if you do it. Okay, so um, yeah, just use the photos and uh, do some stuff like this. Um, I have also done it for uh, um, the train company. I told you with the logo, they didn't buy the logo, but they um, uh, just want to have some columns and I offer them some organic balloon garland. I show you a video with everything on it and uh, what I have done. Okay, that's it. So the video was very cool, I think, um, because I just sent them a photo um, with an organic balloon uh, garland. And um, so they buy a lot more than, than just the columns they want to have. Uh, they, yeah, you have to see it. Okay. So um, you can also customize this and um, personalize um, all the balloons and your figures. So. If you are on a, a wedding and you have uh, two, two uh, men or two girls or one man and a girl who married, um, just build themselves with balloons. So um, you can do some easy designs and you can look what the couple um, looks like. So if they are, uh, have blonde hair or brown hair or something like that, maybe some people a little bit bigger or a little bit thinner, you can customize your, um, your balloon decor and uh, all the stuff you have done for them. Yeah. 
Um, I also have done a toothbrush for a dentist. They just want a few balloons for the ceiling and I sent the, sent them a picture with a toothbrush and they say, oh yeah, that's a very cool idea. We want to have two of them and I just build it. Um, I also have done a bath tube. It was for a parade. And uh, for my sports studio, I have built some um, photo wall where the customers can go behind the wall and take a photo with um, their heads on it. Um, I have done it with a, a male bodybuilder and a female bodybuilder. Uh, it was also a very cool idea and they had a lot of Instagram and social media um, activities because all people um, take pictures with um, uh, with these balloons and with her face on it and uh, tag it with a with a gym. It was very very cool and very popular for the gym to do it uh, and stuff like that. Or I have done for a parade here to St. Patrick's Day. It was a I think it was a pub, um, an Irish pub, and uh, they celebrate St. Patrick's Day also here in Germany. It's not as popular as uh, in the USA or in uh, Ireland, um, but yeah, it's very cool here. And I have done a, um, a costume for them. So one man can fit into the um, St. Patrick's Day in a, I don't know the, the name of it, um, but one man can go in and walk around uh, and say, ah, yeah, you can go to our pub. And it was very cool. And also for the 90s party um, in our location here um, in the city, I have done a Rubik's Cube. Um, it was, I think, three, three meters, uh, two, three meters. And it was also a very cool idea for them. And they didn't know that I can do it. Um, for Valentine's Day, I have done in a church a very, very big heart. I think it was around four or five hundred balloons. I'm not sure now. It was four to four, four meters uh, high and we placed them direct in a, in a church. It looks very nice and it was for Valentine's Day and they got a lot of uh, social media activities um, um, yeah, as a gym because all the people come there and take a photo of the big heart. And yeah, it was very cool. And it was in the church. So what other offers we can do or what we can offer to our customers to sell more? Um, if they have a, a big birthday um, in, in a um, mall or something like that, you can build a cake. Build a big cake and um, place the numbers in it. It was a 25 year from the mall, uh, 20, 20 yeah, uh, years for the mall. Um, that one was a good idea. You also can offer printed balloons. I didn't mean printed balloons with a silhouette cameo because if they need many balloons of it and latex balloons, it doesn't work so good. But uh, maybe you have a company um, near to you or you can order them in the internet. So you just need their logo and you can also offer it. Just place it on your website and say, yeah, we can do printed balloon. Um, test it with um, your own logo or with, with the logo of a friend or whatever you like. And look um, if the quality is good. You can order direct from Qualitex. Um, if you need more balloons and um, they also can print the balloons for you. So um, yeah, uh, just test the quality if you order on some other um, balloon printers and um, say that they should print on Qualitex balloons because you want to have the quality of the balloons and not just cheap balloons where they can get all in the internet. So um, look up if you have a, a customer who um, who can print on your uh, Qualitex balloons and then send them balloons or they should buy the Qualitex balloons and print it on it because it's a very good um, way to have very high quality balloons with their own logo. And if you high flow them, they will still flows for uh, days and weeks. Yeah. You also can offer a photo box. Um, a photo box is cool for two sides because a lot of people look up in the internet for a photo box to rent. So 
you can buy your own photo box or you can just um, leave them from a photograph. Um, I work here in the city with a photograph um, together um, and uh, they offer me the, the, the photo box and I build a frame for um, the pictures. So um, I can sell my balloons with a frame and he can sell his photo box to take some photos. So it's a win-win situation. And if he offers his photo box, he always offers some balloons frame for me and send the customer some pictures and say, yeah, it looks very cool if you have a frame um, on your photo and something like that. One photo, many jobs. What does it mean? Um, I have done uh, Anchor in Chrome um, Blue and it was awesome on the internet here um, because very uh, many people see or have seen the, the photo on her social media page and all tag her friends and they say, oh, look to the colors. Um, it was, uh, I think, a few years ago when the chrome balloon just came out and um, the color was very new to the um, with the balloons and it was it was awesome. Um, and we live in the north, so we are very close to the sea. So everyone want to have an anchor. And I have done it for um, a big company. It was Anchor Crowd here in Germany. They um, have uh, yeah, ordered one of these in silver. And I have done it uh, for a few weddings as well. And um, customers love this design. And yeah, he just saw this one photo. So take a photo of every job and put it on the internet and uh, yeah, sometimes you have luck and um, you are lucky and the photo will go through the web. Okay, so we are very close to the end and we are on the next chapter after the event. Um, customers always speak about the event. Um, so you should be very professional just on an event, but also after the event. Um, if you offer the people discounts or sales, um, they speak. They speak all about um, these discounts. Um, so you have to think twice if you offer them something like that or no. Because if um, you say, ah, okay, you are, maybe if it's a good friend of you, you can do it. But if you do it to a company and they ask you, ah, can we do get a discount or something like that? And you say, yeah, 10% is okay. So if you buy it, Next time the same company comes to you and say, ah, yeah, I want to do a uh, decor. And um, yeah, we uh, always want to have the 10% um, because we get it the last time and we are a good customer. So you have to do it mostly to this customer again and again and again. And sometimes the customer has a good friend in another company and they speak together and they say, oh, yeah, we had a very good event and cool balloon decor and uh, ah, yeah, you want the number? OK, no problem. I can give them and just ask for a discount because we can get got 10 percent or something like that. So um, be yeah, very um, think twice about it if you want to get a discount or not. And um, you always should have some advertise, um, some flyers or some stickers or something like that in your pocket, not just on the location when you build your decor um, or you bring it or you um, take it back or something like that. Um, just if you um, if you are private and you go to the restaurant or just go to the park or something like that, always have your cards with you or flyers or some some stuff where your telephone number or email address is written on. Um, because sometimes you see a customer or you see a event and you just want to get them a card and you don't have them, always have one or two cards with you to hand them out. Okay, so we are finished now with my workshop. I hope you like it. And um, do you have any questions? Then just write it down to the chat and I can answer on it. Um, or yeah, if you need anything, just let me know. I hope you like it and I hope you can 
try something out and um, yeah, personalize your own balloons. And uh, thank you for watching and have a nice day. Thank you. Hey guys, this is Joette with BalloonCoach.com and today I'm going to talk to you about the future so bright you have to wear shades. I'm so excited to be here to share this fun little journey with you today. So put on your sunglasses and let's go get ready for a bright future. All right, here we go. So I'm Joette Giardina. I'm a certified balloon artist since 2008. My husband, Brian, is a teacher in Polk County, Florida, and my daughter, Marley, is now 21. In the picture you see here, she was just four years old when I jumped into the balloon industry full time in 2003. I purchased a balloon company called Party People in Lakeland, Florida. They had been a storefront and they had closed for two years, but I was renting helium from them and I had used them in the past for events and I loved their work. And I let them know if they ever needed help, I'd love to work with them, but didn't want to compete against them. And two days later, they offered me to buy the company. They had moved home base because their lease had doubled and they couldn't find any comparable retail space. The number one thing they told me was to always work from home and not have the extra overhead of having a retail space because Party City had moved in and other um, retail establishments that they're like, you don't need to worry about paper goods, focus in on the gorgeous balloons and people will buy from you. I had a van um, and then I had their 10 foot enclosed trailer and I brought everything home to my house. In 2015, I sold party people so that I could become ballooncoach.com to help other balloon professionals around the world grow their companies because so many people had followed me online, met me at conventions I was teaching at, and asked me, Joette, how do you market and grow your business? What is your secret to success? And I was spending so much time helping other people grow their business. My husband said if I was taking that much time from our family and from my business, I'd have to get paid for my knowledge. So I now produce Balloon Boss Summit once a year in Orlando and online training to help you take the next step in growing your business. So my question is, do you feel the sunshine right now? Are you ready to put on your sunglasses and make more money with your balloon business? Do you know that your future is bright? Or have you been feeling a bit deflated lately? <laughs> Do you feel a bit like you got a flat tire and you're clunk, clunk, clunking around? Or that your balloons just don't have any air in them because you haven't had a lot of business? I understand that the year of 2020 has been one wild ride. A year ago in March, we had a huge grand opening celebration for party people events. I was serving as the marketing manager and opening manager of a retail store. We had gone from three, about 2,000 square feet to 5,000 square feet from a warehouse space to opening up a retail location. And I had been there January through March helping 
get that transformation happening. And we had a huge blowout party inviting the chamber in to know about our new site. And the next thing I knew, I was home. <laughs> and I felt a bit deflated all of that time that we had put in to Jonathan Gerber's store was now kind of flat, right? And now what's the next step? What do we do next? But what I've realized over the last year is being able to focus in on hanging out with balloon professionals from around the world going through this crazy time in our lives is that sometimes people are going to feel deflated and that's okay. We can find places to pump our tires back up and get back on a roll. So today, what I'm hoping to do is if you've been feeling deflated, if you've been feeling a little bit clunky, I'm hoping that some of the things that I share with you will help you keep rolling in the right direction. So in 2020, there's been this mix of realities, right? For some balloon business owners, it's been the best time ever and others, it's been the worst time ever. So my question for you today is how are you feeling about 2021? How are you feeling about this next year? Are you feeling good? Um, so are you feeling like it's cloudy and rainy? <laughs> are you feeling sunny? Or are you feeling like the rainbow after the storm, right? So are you kind of doubtful and uncertain? Are you optimistic? Or do you see the unlimited possibilities in the balloon industry? I'd love to know your answer and for you to type it in to our chat today so that I know where you're at with things. And the main thing in this process is to know where you're at. Know how you're feeling, know what your current situation is, and then we can make a plan to move forward. I tend to be a person that stays on the optimistic side of things, no matter what the struggles are, because over the years, my family has faced a lot of struggles since I um, sold party people events and became balloon coach. My husband has had a lot of health issues. And then over the years, things got better. And this last year has been pretty awesome for him health wise. And so that keeps me more optimistic and sunshiny. But also during the times when things were tough, I always focused in on what the lessons are that we could learn from our situation and how I could help others through our knowledge and circumstances. So the future's so bright, you have to wear shades. These are some of my wonderful friends in the balloon industry with their sunglasses on celebrating life. Charlie on um, the far side um, by his amazing balloons, Van out on his deliveries, Belinda Barrier on the beach with her beautiful balloons in Jacksonville, Florida. And I am so excited to see how people are taking the challenges in front of them putting on their shades and filling up their cars with balloons and having a great success when we believe our future is bright. So one of the things that I have found over the last year is that it's really easy for us to live life with our blinders on. And if you've ever seen a horse in a horse race, they put these blinders on them so that the horse is looking straight ahead, all right, and not seeing everything around them. So what happens sometimes is that we can get into a situation where we think that everyone else is having the exact same experience that we are having. So for example, if we're an entertainer and we're currently been out of work for a year and our income is low, we may feel like everyone in the world is broke and not working. But the reality is much of the world is still working and has income coming in. So we want to focus on that. And if we're struggling and if we're low on cash, we may think that everyone else is broke. But think about who are the people that are still at work and where is the money at? teachers are still teaching. Now, my husband, he's been home for a year now, teaching from an uh, office in our bedroom, from a desk there, or on the living room couch. <laughs> so he's a teacher, but even though he now teaches for a school that is a virtual school, he is still teaching and having the regular income come in. Doctors and nurses 
many of them working more hours than ever during this last year. Amazon, who has not had Amazon delivered to their door during this last year? Amazon boxes have been in my doorstep almost daily over the last year with all of the different things that we ordered online rather than going out for them. Walmart, from what I understand, has had their best year ever because of the demand of people shopping. And one of the things that Walmart did really great early on is they were able to meet the needs of their clients and set it up where you could go and order ahead and pick up your groceries and the items that you need from Walmart in the parking lot and their staff would come right to your door and give you curbside delivery in the parking lot so you didn't have to go inside their store. So Walmart was one of those examples of how they met their clients' expectations and their needs and put in new systems during this time. Grocery stores are booming. Who hasn't been or seen the pictures of the grocery stores with all their shelves cleared off from toilet paper to paper goods, right? So if our businesses are growing during this time, we might think that everyone's growing and we might forget about the people who are in areas that are on more restrictions than we are. I live in Florida, and in Florida, we've been pretty much open throughout this entire time. We had a shutdown for a while, but um, Disney Orlando opened back up, and we were able to go and go to Disney Springs and hang out and have a meal. We're able to need to go there with a mask on, um, but they still have things open because during this time, Disney and other parks were able to change the way they did their business some to meet the needs of the consumers to make them feel safe during this time to still be able to experience their parks, but do it through social distancing. So are you still dreaming big? Even if you're currently going through struggles and in an area where you're on shutdown or just starting to open up, are you still dreaming big? So this is Charlie and Tammy, and I love their story. Um, they are in North Carolina, Amazing Balloons, and they have grown their business over the last year. They actually called me up and are like, Joette, we're so excited. We're going to expand out of our home and get our store, um, get a warehouse um, that we can work out of. And then after that, they're like, Joette, we've got so much going on. We are going to hire in staff to help us out because we're staying so extremely busy with all the social events and that, yes, their school events and their corporate events in some areas had gone down and other areas started expanding because they have done deliveries for Amazon for some of the really large um, corporate accounts. And one of those accounts they landed while they were in um, Orlando in November. And it was so exciting to hear them be like, I just got this contract. This is what we're bidding on. And that enthusiasm was there because they hit the ground running during social distancing. They didn't give up. They kept moving forward and meeting their clients' needs from the small deliveries to the larger things that clients needed. So one of the facts that I want to remind you about, no matter what your life circumstances have been back in 2020 and now as we go into 2021, is that some people, yes, had a totally shut down and due to health concerns and other concerns and restrictions where they lived, stopped working totally. Other people started working pretty much through the entire thing, but they had a change from being a large event company to doing deliveries and yard decor. Some have been really hit hard financially. Some, their income has stayed the same and other businesses experience growth in 2020 and tell me that they had their best year ever. So I would love for you to share, where are you at currently? Are you one of those people who stayed the same in 2020? Did you have a lot of financial hardships? Or are you one of those people that actually had growth in 2020? I'd love for you to tap into the chat and let me know how you guys were doing so that I can kind of gauge. All right. So 
here's the thing. This is amazing balloons. Doing balloons for realtors, I mean, sorry, for RVs, all right? Doing decor at Amazon. How many people have seen the boot go around, right? That everybody was making this big boot for Amazon. And here's the thing. Thank you to all of the balloon professionals around the world who are putting out quality balloon decor and having organizations like Amazon reach out and say, we want this. Now, I want to give a caution. If you're a person who's working on growing your business and you want your future to be bright and you want to work for companies like this, but you don't have the equipment, you don't have the vehicles, and you don't have the staff yet to pull off large events, please do yourself and our industry a favor. And when somebody contacts you to do this, subcontract out another company to work with you or get the training you need to make, make sure that this looks amazing. Because the way the balloon industry continues to grow is by professional balloon decorators going into corporate accounts and servicing the client with amazing decor that is sturdy and stays up. All right. And many corporate accounts want their balloons to be long lasting and stay a long time. And if you're being cheap and you're not using the proper framing and you're not using the proper balloons, what can happen is your balloons can deflate quickly and things can fall down and there can be a lot of um, damages made. So the other thing is, is if you dream big about having corporate events, you need to have a business license, liability insurance, and you need to have a vehicle to be able to transport this stuff to your clients. So we're going to talk a little bit about mindset. Have you ever heard of the difference between having a growth mindset and a fixed mindset? Well, the fixed mindset is limiting. They avoid challenges. They give up easily. They're threatened by others' success. They desire to look smart. Um, they want effort to be fruitless. Um, or they feel like effort is fruitless. Like, you know, there's no reason for me to try hard because it's not going to go anywhere. They ignore feedback. They don't want to hear constructive criticism. They don't want to hear ways that they can change. And they feel like their abilities are fixed, that there's no way to grow, change, or be different. On the opposite side of that, if you want to have a balloon boss mindset, I encourage you to work from going from a fixed mindset to having a growth mindset. And for some people, this takes time and it's hard. It doesn't always come naturally for people. In a way, many times humans are kind of wired to think that life is limited. But with a growth mindset, what happens is there is freedom because with a growth mindset, we understand that we need to persevere in the face of failures. I'm going to say that again, persevere in the face of failures. I um, often go to leadership training. And one of the trainings that I really enjoy is through John Maxwell. And um, John Maxwell in 2020, during one of his live events online, um, I was sitting in a group of business leaders and with the mayor of Lakeland and other cool people from big companies and um, listening to what John had to say. And he talked about how so many times that when we are setting our goals, we often think that success is a destination, but actually success is a journey and it's an ongoing journey. And he said that you want to go on that journey and just fail forward. That when you're going through life, that success is not about ease and no problems, but that success is about as you go through that road, that you're going to fail forward. So it reminds me of this growth mindset is that we know that we are going to have to face our failures and keep moving forward. Also with a growth mindset, effort is required to build new skills. We understand that we are going to have to take time and practice how to create professional balloon decor to make it look the best. Professional balloon decor is not just about organic designs that are all mixed match, different colors and different shapes and sizes. 
the backbone of the Qualitech CBA program, Certified Balloon Artist, is all about creating classic decor that corporates love, that schools enjoy, that birthdays look beautiful with, that classic design where everything is the right size and fits together with color, harmony, and balance. Well, for us to get that skill, we need to take training to understand more about sizing, proportion, scale, color. So with a growth mindset, we understand that we can build new skills. With a growth mindset, we find inspiration from other successes. And see, the other part of that on a fixed mindset is that you want to always look smart and be the smartest one in the room. But when you have a growth mindset, you're okay with other people racing ahead of you and winning. And you congratulate them and you're inspired by their success and you want to learn from how they're getting their corporate accounts and how they're staying so busy. At the growth mindset, you want to learn from those people who are succeeding. When you have a growth mindset, you embrace challenges, you accept criticism, you desire to learn, and you build your abilities. So my friend, I hope that today, if you know that you're a person that often has a fixed mindset, that life seems to be unfair to you, that you are often in a situation where you avoid challenges and you give up easily. I encourage you to dig deep and to maybe reach out to a counselor or a coach or um, a friend or family member and say, hey guys, you know what? I realize that I tend to have a fixed mindset. And over this next year, I'm gonna work on a growth mindset and I want to build my abilities and I want to learn new skills and I want to take my balloon business to the next level. So one of my favorite quotes by Henry Ford is whether you think you can or you can't, Either way, you are right. I'll say that one more time. Whether you think you can or you can't, either way, you are right. And here's what Henry knew, is that when you fill your head with, no one will pay profitable prices for my balloons. Nobody in my area will pay that much for balloons. There's nobody here that likes balloons. <laughs> When you feed that into your head every day, you're right. You're not going to find anybody who buys. But if instead you think clients will pay profitable prices for my balloons, people want to buy my balloons, I can make a living from balloons. And then I think great employees will help me serve my clients. All of those things are a balloon boss mindset. It's looking at your business with a growth mindset, looking at the world as abundant and knowing that there are opportunities are endless in the world. So I hope you're with me on this, that whether you think you can or you can't, either way, you're right. And if you know that you're a person often wakes up in the morning with a negative thought and that you're thinking negatively and that no one's going to buy from you, you're going to be right. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is when you wake up in the morning is just take some deep breaths, put on a smile on your face and think, you know what? Today is going to be an awesome day. Today, new people who need my services are going to find me and I am going to have an amazing day and sell a ton of balloons because now you're putting that energy out there for those people to find you and your services. So an abundant mindset. We mix the growth mindset with an abundant mindset and it is a team for success. So I look at life is that we live in a world of abundance, that there are opportunities everywhere. We think about those beautiful rainbows that are leading us to the pot of gold, right? And we talk about that, hey, the way that we get a rainbow is there's going to be some rain, there's going to be some clouds, but then the sun is going to shine through and this beautiful rainbow appears to guide us on our way. 
And when we think about the opportunities that are out there that are endless, I think about these fun, smiley faces on the graduation balloons, right? Because in today's society, we congratulate our graduates for graduating kindergarten and first grade, and then going from elementary school to middle school. And then we do a graduation for our middle school going to high school. And then we graduate our high school students going into college and then college graduation and then PhDs. There's so many levels of graduation alone. There are opportunities everywhere and all these different age levels that in the past didn't exist because for many years, we only really um, congratulated our high school seniors and our college graduates. But now the world that loves to celebrate celebrates every little step of the way and there's opportunities everywhere. So going back to that growth mindset, I want to talk to you about ways to build your abilities. The number one thing to do to build your abilities is to invest in training to know how to create balloon designs. This is one of the favorite designs that I've created over the years. This is a hot air balloon made out of quick links. And what happened is I would go to trainings, right? I've been to World Balloon Convention and several different states, which is exciting. Um, and they're coming to Orlando in the future. And I'm excited about that. Um, but when I go to the trainings, I always participated in the early bird stuff. When you get to a convention early, they always want you to help build designs. And so I got to hands-on build things with linking balloons with some of the best people in the world that work with linking balloons. Um, being there gave me the confidence that when my client said, we're doing a theme for a, an awards dinner that is through the United Way and the theme is, oh, the places you'll go. And we'd like you to make um, hot air balloons. And they originally talked to me about making three foot balloons with helium, with the little netting that goes over it into a basket. That was their original thought. But as soon as they told me about the event and that they were looking for a really cool photo op area, I remembered, hey, I know how to do this stuff with Lincoln balloons, and I'd love to make a hot air balloon out of it. And so I checked around with friends and nobody had a recipe. <laughs> Several of my friends had built them. And so I could look at the pictures for inspiration. And I had the training I had learned about linking and sizing, but no one had an actual recipe I could follow. So I had to figure it out on my own. So you know what I did? I went into my warehouse and I pulled out a bunch of linking balloons and I started inflating them. And people say, but Joette, if you don't know the size, you're going to waste some balloons. And you know what? Yeah, some balloons I popped, some balloons I untied and reinflated. But what I did is I created myself a pattern out of like purple, red, and yellow balloons that I had in stock to get my sizing correct and to write my own recipe down built on the knowledge I had from my training. And then I was able <clears throat> to order in the supplies I needed to make this beautiful blue hot air balloon. So sometimes what happens is when we invest in training and we understand the fundamental building blocks of how to create designs, we can then apply that to anything that a client asks us to create. But you have to be willing to invest time into trying it and practicing it. You have to be willing to invest in the product to use to make the designs and understand that this is a part of the learning process is that yes, you can learn online and yes, you can learn in a classroom with people, but life is not always about a recipe and an exact way to make things. But what's exciting is that we have the abilities as humans to be able to take this information and then put it together and make our own recipes and create the designs. So by practicing it, I was able to improve my skills. And then I, because of the training I went to, was able to make sure that I priced for growth and profit. Because here's the thing, sometimes people will look at a design like this and they'll count up all the balloons and they're like, well, I think we should just charge like a dollar a balloon and, and then, then we'll be good. Well, that's not necessarily true. 
some people will say, well, maybe it's $2 a balloon. But the fact is, is that when you're pricing for growth and profit, what you're going to consider is that even if right now you are a home-based business and someday down the road, you want to have a storefront and you say, well, I don't have to charge as much for my balloons because I'm home-based. That's a myth. It's false. What I actually did as a home-based business is I often charged more than some of my um, people that I knew that were within an hour of me because they had a storefront and they had more people walking into their store on a regular basis and they had been in business a little bit longer. They had more of a customer base built up to be able to be more profitable on volume, kind of like Walmart does, right? Walmart makes their money off of volume sales. Well, I wasn't a Walmart. I was a one person operation. And then I slowly grew to having my family help me and then my friends helping me and then getting crew as needed. Um, and as I built that team, I was able to think ahead and say, you know what, I want to be able to have other people work for me and I want to have the nicer vehicles. So I made sure from the get go that when I was pricing for profit, I included my insurance costs, the cost for a vehicle that I wanted to buy, the cost for the inflators that I wanted to purchase to have high speed inflators to help me quickly and efficiently inflate the balloons. I priced in being able to travel and every single year since I've joined the balloon industry, except for like one, I have gone to an alive event where I traveled, paid for my hotel, paid for my um, plane ticket. And in fact, one year I went to World Balloon Convention and took both my husband and my daughter as full paid delegates so that they could learn more about being a part of my team. So when I talk about pricing for growth and profit, think about all of those expenses and all of those things that you want for the future and then put that into your cost so that when your client buys this hot air balloon, they're not just purchasing that hot air balloon, but they're purchasing your ability to know how to make it and your ability to stay in business to make it for them in the future when they ask for it again. So when you're wanting to build your abilities, you want to invest in your training so you know how to do it. You then want to practice those designs and skills. And then you want to price for growth and profit and know that you are a valuable commodity and that you need to make sure that you pay yourself well. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to show you about our um, adapt to your customers needs. All right. We talked about this a little bit earlier with our Walmart um, scenario where I talked about in the midst of social distancing, Walmart did an amazing job at changing and adjusting to their clients needs. Typically, you used to just go to Walmart, <laughs> walk into the store and buy your groceries. But in the midst of social distancing, they could only have a certain amount of people in the store and people wanted to be able to still safely purchase from Walmart without having to go in the store. So what Walmart did is they made it where you could order online and then go drive and pick it up. And in some areas, they actually ship it to your door, right? So how are you adapting your balloon business? Did you do what? Jonathan Gerber, the owner of Party People Events, who purchased the company from me back in 2015, did you do what he did over the last year? Because he went onto our website and he built a new website during the downtime and he made it so that people can actually click here to order online. All right. So what you have to look at is over the last year, online sales and purchasing online has increased by over 40%. So our customers are now trained that anything you want, you can go online and purchase it from Walmart and go pick it up or have Amazon deliver it to your door, right? That's kind of the mindset that everything can be fingertips away, order what you need and get it right to you. So at this point, you as a balloon business have to figure out how you can adapt to your customers' needs. And if your customers expect to be able to order things online and be able to see things online without having to come to a store, then you need to make a storefront online for them to do that. 
And then through your process, when you're working with them and helping them out online or on phone or via email, you need to exceed their expectations by providing excellent customer service and making it easy to purchase and then follow up through the process. So um, at ballooncoach.com in your notes, I have put down that there's a program called Quote to Cash. It's a free thing that if you want to go and review and see where your systems currently are at, or maybe where you're failing at, you can go through that free program and be able to evaluate right now, what's it like for your customer to go through your sales process? Are there steps that you're missing along the way that need to be improved to help them pay you so that you can get to the cash? And is there stuff that needs to happen so that they understand what their next step is? Because what I have found over the last six years working with people and talking about the systems for growth is often we don't adapt. <laughs> we get stuck in our ways. As humans, it's really easy to be like, well, it's always worked in the past. We're just going to leave it the way it was. There's nothing wrong. And what we forget to do is survey our clients and ask them what they need, ask them what they expect and ask them how they want to have our services provided to them. In today's world, having things where people can easily purchase from you and know your pricing is super important. So I encourage you, like I said, you can go through that process to check out how you're doing from quote to cash and see if there's systems that you need to change up a little bit. But one of the number one things that you want to look at is, is there a way for your clients to give you money and purchase online so you don't have to have all the back and forth conversations if you've gone from being a large scale balloon de decorator and now having to work harder for your money because instead of going and doing one $1,000 or $10,000 event, you're now having to do 100 or 50 events to make up that same amount of money. So in your process, you want to be able to meet your customer's need and become as efficient as possible for yourself. When we were talking about a growth mindset, one of the things that was mentioned was find inspiration in other success. You know, when we're on Facebook and we're on Instagram, we'll see people's pictures come up and we're like Charlie's picture of the big um, boot and the arch. And we're like, wow, how did he get that? Some people are like, man, that's not fair. I wish I had that job. That should have been mine. But what I encourage you to do instead is be like, wow, that's awesome that Charlie and Tammy got that really cool gig at Amazon. I wonder who else needs balloons. Who else can I service because they did an awesome job. Now the world sees balloons in a different way. And wow, I'm inspired by what they did. I'm going to go find people just like that, that I can work for. Now it's not that you're trying to take their client. What you're doing is you're trying to find lookalike clients where you live that you can service. Another one of my favorite sayings is a rising tide lifts all boats. A rising tide lifts all boats. And what this reminds me about is with the Q Corner event. I'm very fortunate to be asked to back this year. I was a part of the team last year. And what is exciting about this program is how many people over the last year that were already in the industry but maybe doing things differently, have been able to hone in their skills. And then other people who had lost their employment found balloons as a way to make money and to help them keep their electricity on, pay their car payments and their house payments. Welcome to all the new people to the balloon industry. It's exciting to have you here. And the thing is, is rather than as a person who's been in the industry for a few decades, rather than to be fearful and be like, oh man, I don't want these other people to be successful. What I want to do is I want to rally behind and cheer all of us on for us all to lift the tide and for all of us to provide amazing professional balloon decor that has the proper bases, has the proper support systems, has the proper techniques and high quality balloons to create the best 
results for our clients because now what happens is as we're inspired by other people and we go out and we claim new clients, the world becomes more interested in buying more balloons. So with doing events like this, it's helping raise the bar that everyone who's providing balloon decor is doing it correctly, making it look amazing, and it makes our entire industry lifted high. So the more people that are in the balloon industry and providing beautiful quality decor at a profitable price, there's going to be more demand for professional balloon decor. For those of you who are watching who might be more on the hobbyist side, what I'm going to encourage you to do is really dig deep. And as you decide that you want to go out into the world and present your balloon decor for sale, please make sure to value your time, your knowledge, and your skills, and to price at a way that you'll be able to continue to grow so that you don't just survive through this time, but that you're able to thrive. So when you sometimes get stuck on social media and you see all these people around you being really busy, rather than being like, man, their life just must be easy, man, they, you know, they get all the luck. Instead, be like, wow, that's awesome that they got that. I wonder how they did it. Let me figure out a way that I can have success too, and be inspired knowing that these other people are growing, that that means there's opportunities for you to grow also. This is Belinda Barrier, and um, she is one of my friends in the industry, and I love how she is focused in on building her brand image with her business. And so I wanted to talk to you about when you're looking for new opportunities and you want your future to be bright, you want to make sure that you shine bright in a sea of a lot of options, right? So through your brand messaging, it's the way for you to communicate to your clients who you are, what you stand for, and what you can do for them. Brand is not a logo, all right? That's just one little piece of the puzzle. But brand is more about the experience that your client is going to receive by coming to you for their needs. So as you are going through your business development and you're growing your balloon boss mindset, where you're focusing in on how do I take growth steps to take my business to the next level? How do I stand out so people know that I can do a good job? I want you to research brand messaging and figure out what it is you want people to think about you first when they're purchasing balloons. Do you want them to think, oh, they're the cheapest in town? I know that's not what I ever wanted because <laughs> I wanted to be able to pay my electric bill and my mortgage and stay in our house because with my husband being a teacher, I have to make part of the um income for us to have the lifestyle that we have. So as you're building your brand, think about what is it that you want people to think about you? What do you want your business to represent and build your brand one step at a time and make sure that you're building it on excellent customer service, a wonderful product, and it doesn't have to be the most artistic product in the world, because oftentimes in our industry, the things that people need most are classic decor done really well and delivered on time and providing people this wow factor that can be done no matter what the style of balloon is. All right. So. As you move on and as you build your business and your brand, what you want to do is take the next building blocks to success. Continually invest in your business and training. Um, I was talking to someone the other day at a networking event for the events industry, and they talked about if you're not going to training, if you're not reading books, if you're not growing then your business will shrink. And it's so important for us to always go out and reach for new information. And I don't have a slide for this, but I wanna tell you about a book. 
that if when I'm talking about having a balloon boss mindset and when I'm talking about growth and expansion, that kind of freaks you out a little bit. There's a book that I would encourage you to read and it's called The E-Myth Revisited. The E-Myth Revisited. And it's by Michael Gerber and it'll be in your notes. I just don't have a slide for it. So I want to make sure that you know that with the E-Myth that it is about how to look at your business and the different layers of being a business owner so that you step out of being just the technician that builds these fun balloons, but that you step back and you become a manager, an owner, or an entrepreneur for your business where you allow other people to build your beautiful designs so that you can make more money and grow your company. So as you go through your building blocks of success with your business, continually invest money into your business and training. So you're going to price for profit so that you can dump this money back into your business so that you can pay for the travel expenses and the cost of the workshops and for your, um, you know, plane ticket, your hotel, the food. And when you're going through your business development time and there's other people in your area, sometimes people call that their competition. And they're like, oh, I can't call my competition because they won't like me or I don't want to make friends with them. Well, what I've done from the get-go, and I learned this from the entertainers in my area, shout out to Billy Damon and Mark Byrne. They're two of the top twisters in Tampa and Orlando area that I met many, many years ago at a jam. And what they did is they hung out in their house and invited other entertainers to come hang out with them to learn their designs. And I'm like, okay, guys, fill me in on this. Like, why would you train your competition and how to create balloon decor? <laughs> because aren't they your competition? Aren't they going to take jobs from you? And they said, no, Joette, that's not what it's about. Because as an entertainer, we can only be in one place at one time performing for our clients. And there's a ton of people, especially in Orlando and Tampa in a tourist area that want balloons. So by training other people how to do high quality work, now more people when they see balloons will want balloons because they're done really well. And I love that philosophy. So for over the years, I now have a group of people that are Florida Balloon Network that hangs out together and learns from each other when we're not in COVID times. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to make friends with those people that you see as competition and build relationships with them to understand what they do. Because like for me, being able to learn about those entertainers when my corporate clients or my um, at-home birthday said, you know what, I need a twister or I need a magician or I need a stilt walker. By having those relationships with those other with those entertainment companies, I was able to make a personal recommendation of people that I knew would do well. And then other times by building my professional network, by meeting other balloon decorators, I was able to handle jobs that I would not be able to handle on my own. One of the jobs that came up was a grand opening for a um, local department store that was um, doing their grand opening in six different locations in one night. And I had the delivery window of from 10 p.m. till 4 a.m. And there was no way that I could get to all of those locations um, that they had because they were too spread apart. So what I did is I called up somebody I had met and um, we were able to talk and I'm like, hey, I've got this great gig where we're going to be able to do this. And what we were able to do is by being together, we were able to talk about the right pricing because I had never done a grand opening for a department store before. So I wasn't sure if they were going to try to nickel and dime me or if I needed to make sure that we went out with a high price to be able to deal with some of the hiccups that might happen during an installation. So by talking to this person who'd been in the industry longer than I did, I gained great knowledge and both of us made a nice profit from that event. But if I had not grown that professional network, I would not have been able to confidently quote what I did for that grand opening and I would have actually lost money. So I encourage you to grow your professional network with where you live 
and also grow your professional network online and in person at different training events. One little caveat about building relationships with other balloon professionals, please don't expect them to hand you everything they know for free. All right. We live in a world where there is free information out there, like this training conference that we're in right now with the Q Corner. But understand that that doesn't mean that every instructor on here should give you all of their information for free. All right. So it's the same thing with your local competition or other people in your area. Be respectful of their knowledge and make sure that your relationship is a give and take so that they know like, hey, if you don't get the balloons that you need um, in an order, we'll help you out and I'll bring balloons to you. Um, or you can come pick them up if you don't get the color, you know, or somebody asked for something last minute or you need an extra set of hands on a job that other person can go in and fill in for you. So having those building blocks, those relationships with other balloon professionals, with other event um, decorators outside of the balloon industry. And by having that, um, if you're a decorator, hanging out with entertainers, building that network is key to make you more knowledgeable in the industry and more valuable because you're able to help your clients out by giving people the um, referrals that they may need to help them with their events. So the next thing I want to do is talk to you about all the amazing opportunities that are out there. Prior to 2020, Party People Events was known for large scale corporate events where we would go into an event and transform the space for $1,000, $10,000 or more for large corporate events um, in Orlando, Tampa and Central Florida. And then locally, I was known for doing more of the large parties for like mitzvahs, graduation ceremonies, working with high school proms. And so we were used to big ticket items. And when social distancing happened, we watched a ton of events just go right off of our books and we felt deflated, right? But what happened in our industry, those people who have soared over the last year are the people who in the past had done or decided to go into deliveries and gifts. So if you're trying to figure out how do I get more clients as we go through these different opportunities, I want you to write down the things that you think speak to you the most. So with deliveries and gifts, think about all the office parties that happen, family birthdays, teacher gifts, coworker gifts, spouse items, deliveries for your kids, parents, and friends. So deliveries and gifts, I think are going to be able to be stronger than ever because people want to make sure they express to the other people how much they love and care for them, even though they're not able to be together. And so what we're seeing is there's this large demand now for people who are on their website saying, hey, here's the delivery I do, and here's my delivery zones. You're getting these jobs where you can go do deliveries for people because they're wanting to make the people that they love feel special since they're not always being able to be there in person. But what I think is going to happen is as the world opens back up, we're going to still see a large demand for these delivery gifts. And you just have to create beautiful designs to show them. And this was Eve um, and Orlando at Balloon Boss Summit. She had made all these amazing delivery pieces. So I want to make sure that you guys know Eve is the one that made all these beautiful pieces here. And, you know, this butterfly on top of the bubble, how beautiful is that and long lasting when you add these extra embellishments of the twisting and the curls mixed with the foils, it makes the designs magical. So when you're figuring out if you want to do deliveries and gifts, number one, you've got to think about how far do you want to do your delivery route? What kind of vehicle do you have? And do you have somebody who can help with those deliveries? And then make sure you're pricing for profit, because if you're making all these cute embellishments and they take you a long time, then that needs to go into the price. And if you're ever doubtful of pricing for profit and if people will pay this much for a delivery or a gift, here's the challenge. Go online and look up the local florist where you're living. So look up your city and state florist and go on their websites and see how much they pay or get paid for their small flower designs. Your jumbo 
Balloon designs are worth much more than that. Perceived value, your designs are huge. So if you're ever feeling doubtful about your pricing, I encourage you to go onto your local florist site and see how much they get paid for their small flower bouquets and know that your balloon deliveries are giant and need to be priced even higher. All right, so the next thing I want to share with you guys is that when you are working on your delivery pieces, classic decor typically provides some of the highest profit. I know that there are some amazing marquee designs out there. There are all those cute designs that I just showed you of Eve's, but sometimes going back to the basics and the classic simple lines can bring you the most profit. So this is such a cute top print smiley from Qualitex that I put in as the center balloon in a five petal flower. So it's a total of seven balloons times three. So 21 five inch balloons on sticks into a container. Very low cost, very low time to make, and you can teach anybody on your staff to make it. It's easy to transport and it's long lasting. So when you think of your designs that you want to sell, think of things that are going to look great if you have a retail store that can sit there for a while, that can easily be transported and that anybody that's on your team can make it for you or deliver it. And then on just something simple like this gift, this was from a Tiffany baby shower. So you can make this in any color scheme. It can be for a baby shower. It can be for a birthday. It can be for the holidays. But think of cute and clever things that you can make that will get you the highest return and that can spark people's interest as you're creating your designs. So another area that you can look at is weddings. Over the last year, many of the weddings were put on hold due to social distancing. As things start to open up, you're going to see more and more requests for weddings. Your job is, if you like working with weddings, to network with the people who the brides are going to. Who do brides go with? Well, wedding planners, florists, cake designers, and venues. So if you want to work in the weddings market, you need to build those relationships with the people that those brides are going to come in contact with so that you can make these beautiful, magical moments for them. All right. So if you want to work with weddings, you're going to Number one, probably need to get really good at organic designs. And then I encourage you to network with the people who work with brides and make sure that you are not skimping on things because the last thing you want to do is ruin somebody's wedding. <laughs> so you want to practice things in advance. You want to make sure that your skills are set. But we are going to see more and more weddings happening as things open up again for all the ones that have been put off and all the new ones that are coming up. Birthdays. So many times in the events industry as balloon professionals, we overlook the obvious. Every single person on the planet has a birthday. <laughs> and when we work with our clients, those people who have birthdays, they have them every single year. And you can work with the same family over and over and over again. One of my favorite designs when you're working in a space and having a dance floor is creating a crisscross string of pearls canopy. If you work with helium, it's a fun design, easily done with 11 inch balloons. And in this venue, they had really low ceilings. So what we did is made a double um, crisscross. So there are six columns and then the string of pearls going across. There's four string of pearls. So it's going across a long dance floor with a low ceiling to make it a really fun effect. And who doesn't want to have a dance underneath a canopy and feel like a princess or a store? So when you're looking at your designs, again, this isn't super fancy. It's a string of pearl and um, six columns with curly cues, but it looks fun and festive and it can work on a budget. And when you price it right, can be profitable. So no matter if you're working in somebody's home 
to a venue, classic arches are always a blast. As we're looking at the bright side of things and remembering that the future's so bright, we gotta wear our shades. Y'all got your sunglasses? Are you seeing the sun shining? For me, I'm really fortunate that I live in Florida <laughs> because we get to see the sun most of the days. And I know some of you guys have been dealing with the winter blahs, but I encourage you to be inspired that the sun is coming, that spring is coming, and that when we propose to our clients, sometimes just a classic arch with color blocking or within their themes, it can be a wonderful treat for them where for you, it might feel like, oh, it's just the same old, same old. To your client, it's something special that they may have never had before. So it's okay to use these basic building blocks as your bread and butter of your business. So birthdays, whether they're having it at their home, at a venue, or maybe even in a hotel room, think about how you can be creative with the design and play with items that they've already got, like this little Lego head, and then just throw some balloons around it. And then these fun building blocks made out of the um, quick links were so much fun for this event. And then we did the hotel room stage up because for some people that were not wanting to entertain in their home, another way for people to celebrate birthdays currently is to go to a hotel that's been cleaned, that is going under different social distancing guidelines, and that they go meet up with their family there and can go sit outside by a pool, or they can go out to a meal, or maybe they're meeting in Orlando to go to Disney or meeting at some other place, that having these birthday parties within a hotel is a thing to do to not have to just bring everybody into your home. When you're looking at opportunities like this, I think sometimes we forget to be creative, right? Like we forget that like a birthday party doesn't have to just be the way we used to do birthday parties. Now a birthday party be, can be thrown anywhere. So anywhere that a person might be having a party, let those people know you exist. So party polls, boy, yard art. <laughs> I have so many friends who are like, I don't want to see another piece of yard art. And other people are like, I love yard art. It's great. Well, so many times I see people putting together tons of foil balloons and latex and curly cues that are all having to be taped and adhesive together and that can come apart in the wind. So sometimes when we're looking at party poles, go back to the basics, go to those classic designs of just several quads together and your deco bubble on top or several 11 inch quads under inflated, a 16 inch quad, and then a mix of 350s and 260s as a firework off the top or just your simple topiary ball with some ribbon. Master bow ribbon is amazing to cascade in the wind. Party poles are great for corporate events, for grand openings, to let people know that a restaurant is reopened, to let people know a bank is available to service you. Using topiaries, wind wavers, and basic party poles can be a great way to let people know how to get to somewhere, directional signs at an event, or just to let people know that a business is open. Fundraisers and special causes, yes. Those fundraisers and those causes that used to have all the big arches and the big events, they are coming back again. They might be looking different. Some of them might be needing you to decorate for a virtual area so that it looks fun on Zoom, but other people are holding their, uh, um, their events outdoors that maybe used to be inside in a civic center. They may be moving it to a local park or a um, school football field so that people are outside for these fundraisers. But think about all the special causes that you've ever worked with in the past or that you ever donated money to. Those people are still doing events and need your beautiful balloon decor. This was something that I did for a cancer awareness event. And so we did the cancer ribbon on the stage. And then the other ones here are in a local um, cosmetics area of a department store. And many times it's not the actual um, department store that will hire you, 
but it, it's the separate little kiosk or vendors that are at that space. So when you're looking at getting into a mall or a retail establishment, sometimes it's not always the big box store that is hiring you, but sometimes it's the smaller um, companies that are inside of those stores um, that will have you come in and decorate and make things look special. Patriotic is always um, something that never goes away. So here in the United States, things that are red, white, and blue, and your country, whatever your country colors are, make designs that are just the fun columns with the flares off the top, hanging foil balloons from the ceiling with the click click magnets can make a room transform and look magical without having to take a lot of time to do extras. I want to do a reminder for folks, as you're building your business and as you're looking at the new opportunities, please remember to keep your balloons secured with a string and tied to a weight. <laughs> Sometimes your clients are going to ask you for helium balloons for memorial service because they want to release the balloons to the air and our industry years ago said no to having any promotion of balloon releases. So just a quick reminder to make sure that anytime you're doing helium balloons that you have them secured to a weight and you tell your clients not to do a release. It's the way to protect our industry and keep our industry safe. So with our helium designs, yes, basic helium balloons on a weight can look magical. These are just six balloons on curling ribbon attached to a weight, but it makes the gymnasium look great. And then on the left-hand side, is just a string of pearls out of foil stars. And then the other columns are just three foot balloons with some fabric underneath. Sometimes these very simple classic designs or what your client needs to meet their budget and the look of their event. When you're dealing with schools and corporations, sometimes the simpler it is, the better that it shows off their brand colors and the event without having to be overly creative and artistic. And I know sometimes that's really hard for people who are super artistic that want to make the beautiful works of art. Um, but oftentimes these type of designs are going to bring you more profit because anybody on your team can create it. And going back to those party poles, a three foot balloon, a 16 inch balloon and some 11 inch balloons with some beautiful master bow ribbon that's printed on looks beautiful inside um, out for your client's uh, front yard for a celebration or in front of a school or a corporation. Again, hey, this is where the event's at. Hey, we're here, we're open. This is where the business is. Welcoming their employees back to work um, and welcoming their students back to school. Party polls can do so many wonderful things for people. So just think about what's reopening in your area where they want to make people feel special as they come to that place and market your balloons to them. Flowers are more fun in bunches, right? Is this little girl just adorable or what? Now, this doesn't have any extra bells and whistles. It's just your 12 balloon topiary flowers in different colors set up for a celebration. This can be for Mother's Day. It can be for a birthday. It can be for graduation. It can be thinking of you, Grandma. And then going ahead and upgrading and saying, hey, let me go ahead and put a flower on your mailbox also. Sometimes when we want to exceed our client's expectations, if they haven't ordered this flower for the mailbox, it's something that you can do with extra balloons that you bring as backup in case anything pops and then say, hey, as a bonus, I'm going to tie this to your mailbox for you or tie it to a pole on their front porch or onto a railing. Sometimes we can give a little extra rather than giving a discount to have our clients be thrilled with us and refer us to their friends. So again, classic decor can often look amazing without having to have a ton of bells and whistles. In the midst of social distancing, we're gonna be having this baby boom. So gender reveals and baby showers are a great way for you to get your client's um, theme put out there. So 
with the beautiful polka dot balloons. You can make these lovely flowers and arrangements that can again be used for Mother's Day. It can be used for a birthday, the baby showers. Um, it can be used for a garden club. But think about how you've got designs that are already in your database that you have used these pictures in your gallery and think about who somebody knew I can introduce this to and share it to and then give them the information. Share the balloons and designs that you want to sell. We sell what we share. And if you have a certain design that you never want to make again, then don't put it on your website. Don't put it on your social media. But when there's designs like this that people absolutely love, get it out there so everyone knows they can order it from you. Vacation Bible school. You know, churches during this time um, have been really creative. They've met their clients' needs, right? And they've had outdoor church. They've had online church. And as things go back, they're going to want to make sure that their vacation Bible school and their Sunday school is special. This is a design I did for an under the sea vacation Bible school many years ago. And it was so much fun to see the um, people at the church experience this huge octopus with 20 foot tentacles each direction. So this expanded 40 feet across from corner to corner, and it looked amazing in this church, and it made for an amazing under the sea event for their kids. So I think now more than ever, churches are going to want to make kids feel excited about being at their vacation Bible schools and making it a fun um, experience for them. So reach out to your churches. Events under a tent. In the midst of social distancing and as people are getting their shots and, and their vaccines, there are still going to be areas where people are going to feel more comfortable having events outdoors rather than inside. So simple 12 balloon topiary balls look really great on the corners of your tents. And you can find out how many tent poles they have. And if they've got a big enough budget, put on every single tent pole. But if not, then do it on the four corners of the tent and then make some fun low arrangements for the tables that are weighted down really well so they don't blow away in the wind. And when that client says, oh, we're having an outdoor event and we want helium balloons. Well, it's your job as a balloon professional to educate them and say, you know what? I understand that you have seen helium balloons, but I really would hate for them to hit your um, participants in the head, right? While they're sitting at the table, the last thing they want to do is have a balloon um, land in their macaroni and cheese and barbecue baked beans. So what we're going to do instead for you is I have these awesome topiaries that we're going to put on the tents of the poles and to give you color and fun. And then we're going to make you some air filled centerpieces that will um, sit on the table and not blow away during your events. So they'll look great. And then our wind waver over here is so much fun to draw people's attention. You've got the wind waving the two sixties and three fifties at the top. And on the bottom, you put that cascade of master bow ribbon and it looks awesome for social events, corporate events, and schools. All of those people typically have a theme or a brand message they're going with. So when you tell them, hey, these are some cool things that I can do for you. Let me make you look amazing. They're going to love you for telling them what's best for them. So as things reopen, there are going to be more and more grand openings and reopening events for restaurants and businesses, and they're going to want to show that they're open. So this was a picture done by Tina. Um, she is amazing out of Kansas, and this is a beautifully crafted um, party pole that has that wonderful 260 spray on the top and then has all the beautiful cascading master bow ribbon. It's zip tied to the railing there. So, so many times we're trying to make things really hard and complex, but when we look at the venue and the place we're at, we might have great attachment points that we can use to help people celebrate their grand opening. And sometimes in a situation like this, the client may come to you and say, we want an arch outside of our doors. 
But when you look at the space, there might not be space for you to actually put an arch. So instead you can suggest, hey, you know what? I have these awesome wind waivers that we can do instead for you that will look wonderful. They'll cascade in the wind and really draw people's attention in because it's something different that they haven't seen a lot before. So as a balloon professional, as you're looking with a growth mindset and looking at the opportunities Remember that when a client calls you and asks you for something, you don't have to give them exactly what they asked for, all right? When a client calls you, you as the balloon professional can educate them on what's going to be best for them and to meet their needs and work well. Because a couple of times I listened to the client who said, we want a 30 foot helium arch out front of our race. It's going to look amazing. I said, hmm. That time of year, it's going to rain. And when it rains, your helium arch is going to come to the ground. And um, this was before we were doing a lot of framing for arches, but I, was, I offered them some columns. And they said, no, I don't, I don't want columns. We, we really want the helium arch. And we don't want it on a frame. And so instead of just standing my ground, I listened to him and I said, well, just so you know, I'm not responsible when it rains, when your balloons hit the ground and they all pop. They're like, oh, that won't happen. And you know what? It's six o'clock in the morning. I set up their beautiful helium arch. And as I went to leave, it started to rain and their helium arch came down to the ground. So I had to shake it out, move it over so I could leave because all the cars were supposed to drive through this arch. And I said, well, later on, if the weather gets nicer, whatever balloons are left, maybe they'll still float. And after that, I learned to stand my ground. And when I knew that it was going to be a windy, rainy, yucky day that instead of doing helium, that I was going to always sell things on framework for outdoors to stand up as a balloon boss and go, I know my stuff. And I would like to suggest the things that are going to work best for you. So as we go to wrap things up, this last part, what I want to do is encourage you that people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. Aren't these awesome pool floats? I love it, is working with the Qualitex Taper Balloons and then the Deco Bubble and then a 16-inch balloon inside of it. Um, and then, yes, these designs are air-filled and they're weighted down and we have pool weights in the pool to keep them in place so they didn't blow around. Um, I love doing pool decor because it just really transforms a space where it's unexpected to have decor. And as we get into the summer months, people will be having celebrations at their homes, at hotels, and venues with pools. And pool decor looks amazing. And corporate events also enjoy pool decor along with social events. The key with this is you want to practice ahead of time. You want to make sure you've got the right training because I've seen a lot of bad information out there that's incorrect and can make your balloons look horrible when they have to face a little bit of wind on the day of your installation. So if you want to do pool decor, I encourage you to get training for that. But when you sell pool decor, you are talking about how awesome the space is going to look and it's great for graduation parties and um, it's wonderful for birthdays and corporate events so again as you go through your business process of rebuilding your business again think about what it is you want to do if you're fearful of water and you don't want to swim <laughs> and you don't have anybody working for you then don't offer pool decor but if you don't mind getting wet and you want to try something new that you haven't done before it's a fun thing. I just encourage you to practice it first. Um, then I want to talk to you about sharing smiles. Through this last year, <clears throat> the thing that I have found more than anything is the world wants to give joy to the people that they care about. And there's this group of people who have been isolated more than ever, and that is our seniors in nursing homes. Many of you have heard about the Adopt-A-Grandparent program, and what happened is Liz Romani, <clears throat> who is my marketing mentor, she um, was on a Zoom call, and she was talking to one of her chamber members in her area in Vincennes, Indiana, and this activities director talked about how lonely all the people in the nursing home were and how they felt like nobody cared about them because many of them have dementia 
and memory loss and don't understand why their family's not coming to see them. And they feel like they've been left and forgotten. And so it pulled at Liz's heartstrings and she remembered other uh, promotions that she had done in the past. And she said, why don't we do adopt a grandparent? And have the hashtag lift them up and to help the elderly around the world feel special. And what happened is within our mastermind program, people got together and made graphics to promote it. And then we made press releases to talk about it. And we talked about how do we get people on board to help sponsor lifting up and adopting the grandparents, just not where you adopt a specific person, but that you one assisted living or nursing home at a time get your community to adopt them. And what's been so exciting for me during this process is the balloon professionals who have been depressed, who have been deflated, who had not been doing a lot of work and kind of just sitting on the couch in a ball, just being like, I don't know what I'm going to do next. This program gave them purpose because they felt ignited to be able to bring joy to the elderly, to the people who've been isolated the most during this time, and that they would be able to give their community a purpose and a way to give back to people. So the thing that I want to encourage you through this is adopt a grandparent was not something done for Valentine's Day. It was just something that started in January to help lift up people who are alone. And if you think about it, in society, there are so many people who are alone and that are on their own and would love to be lifted up. And this could be done for so many different types of communities and organizations where you could start a program where different people sponsor and purchase your balloons for you to do a group delivery. So the bottom line is with this pro process is that a community pays for these beautiful smiling balloons to be taken to this home and delivered all at one time. And it has just been like wildfire catching on across the world. And I love seeing all of the posts on social media of how people have gotten multiple homes adopted by following the systems that Liz started and the rest of our group collaborated and put into place so that people knew exactly what to say, what to do, how to price it, and how to be organized and ready for putting the high volume of balloons together. But what this has done more than ever for me, other than just know that this Adopt a Grandparent program is awesome, it showed me how important it is for you to know your why. Why do you have a balloon business? What are the foundations that you've put in place? And what are the systems that mess you up that sometimes you avoid doing with your business because you don't feel comfortable with it? Because what we've done through the Adopt a Grandparent program is we're actually having to put something out there for sale. And then we're having to ask people to buy it. And then we're having to be a salesperson and ask, for the sale again and again. And many creatives love making the balloons, but they don't like asking for the sale. They are not confident with their pricing and they're not sure about, will somebody else wanna buy something from me? And so sometimes we falter with that. So what we've done through this process is we're like, oh, if we're doing something in a group purchasing process, then we don't wanna have to take every single phone call and manually process that payment we need to have a way for people to pay us online. So through this process, more people have it set up on their website for people to be able to purchase deliveries, arches, party pools, and other things from their website. The other thing that we've done is people have been able to become more confident talking on the phone, using social media, and using the resources that they need to grow their thriving balloon business. So the Adopt a Grandparent program has been a win, 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 because these beautiful elderly people who felt lost and alone, when they receive their buddies are like, oh my gosh, I named it after my granddaughter because I hated not seeing her and I have no one to eat with. So they, my um, balloon smiley sits here next to me and eats lunch with me and it gives me somebody to talk to. And just hearing from the people who are in these nursing homes and assisted living, the staff, being able to see the energy of their residents, feeling loved, 
feeling appreciated and feeling like they have not been forgotten has been overwhelming the joy. And so more than ever, Balloon Professional, I want to remind you that you have a super important job as a balloon boss. You bring joy to the world. You allow your clients to not just buy balloons from you, but you allow them to create a memorable moment and make somebody else in the world feel special, whether it's that they're sending an anonymous gift for an adoptive grandparent, or if they're giving a specific gift for their grandchild or their spouse or a friend. Balloons create magic like no other medium on the world. Balloons are unexpected. And the amazing artistry that you all put together from classic decor to the most elaborate twisted pieces, what you do matters in the world because it brings joy like nothing else can. And that's why I feel like the balloon industry is at this amazing point in the world where number one, we were able to survive during a time where other event professionals were not able to decorate as much. The balloons have been there and have they've grown and more people than ever want them. We see them on TV and they are booming. So what I encourage you to do is if you're a person who has doubts and that you have that limited mindset and you want to have a growth mindset, what I'm going to encourage you to do is to write down what your barriers are. And then I want you to break through that wall. I want you to break through the barriers and keep moving forward to grow your thriving balloon business one step at a time. So as you go through the next processes in your business, I want you to surround yourself with like-minded people who uplift, inspire you to be your best. Some great ways to do that is there is a free organization online called SCORE, S-C-O-R-E dot org. That's business professionals and mentors where there's free business training online that you can look at. Um, there is amazing training that's offered through Qualitex. So go to qualitex.com and look at the training that is coming up that you can be a part of. We'd love to see you in Orlando uh, at Balloon Boss Summit to take your CBA exam or to see you at the um, actual World Balloon Convention in Orlando. Would be phenomenal to meet you there. Come up and say hello when you're there. Um, but there are, no matter where you are in the world, there's amazing training in our balloon industry that can get you connected and help you sit around the table with like-minded people to help you increase your knowledge and skills to take the next level. And then outside of the balloon industry, network with other event professionals, with your catering companies, with your um, venues, and with your event planners, and let people know who you are. As we talked about earlier, the future's so bright, you gotta wear shades. These are some of the amazing people that I get to hang out with on a daily basis that are showing off that life is pretty darn cool as a balloon professional, from being able to go on special vacations with the people that you love, to creating beautiful balloon decor for your clients. As you go through and prepare for the future, think about your why. Why are you creating balloon decor? Is it because you want the money to go on that special fun vacation or Holland and Sean, where they've got the cruise ship in the background there? Are you wanting to do something special with your family and friends? Is that you do this so that you can help your child have a better tomorrow and have money for college or for a private school? Is it that you're doing this to have flexibility so that you don't have to clock in and clock out in an office? Is it that you want to be your own boss and that you just love creating joy for other people? As you go through this process of re-emerging and rebuilding your business, think about your why and what makes you unique and special and know that the opportunities are endless for the people who want to purchase balloons, but you have to believe it in yourself that you are worthy of being paid at a high profitable price. And that's not minimum wage.
that the overhead that goes into having business from insurance to a vehicle to transport your balloons with to a location to store your designs, that all of these things are a part of profitable pricing and you deserve to be paid well for what you do. When you decide to be a balloon boss, you take a risk because you now are no longer an employee. You are a balloon business owner. And as a business owner, business owners take risk and get paid more for it. And eventually as a balloon boss, you will be a manager of other people and giving them the opportunity to make money. And it's such an awesome journey. So I'm so glad that you're here and you're a part of the balloon industry. The future's so bright, you have to wear shades. The thing is, is you want to make sure that each day you take action to thrive. Growing a thriving balloon business is not an overnight success. As we talked about earlier, as John Maxwell has said, the journey to success is not a destination, but it's a path that we go on and we walk it together. And that yes, we are going to have failures. We're going to have disappointments and sometimes people are going to say no, but we sell what we share. And if you don't ask, your client cannot say yes. So you've got to ask for the sell, be confident in your pricing and go for it. If you want to follow me, you can on Instagram at Balloon Coach Joette and Facebook Balloon Coach. I wish you an amazing day and I can't wait to see you in the future. Remember to wear your shades. Thank you, Dominique. We are super excited to be chosen again to be instructors in the Two Corner Convention. Thank you, Qualitex, and thank you, Pioneer. We will introduce ourselves. I'm Avital Shechter. And I am Nir Shechter. We are the owners of Nir Balloon Company in Israel and also husband and wife. Yeah. We specialize in balloon decor, but we also do balloon twisting, balloon shows, and balloon training. In today's class, we're about to show you a new creation of ours, a mini version of hot air balloon. The hot air balloon has become a symbol of journeys, hopes, and dreams. It became a trendy balloon design for all types of baby celebrations. In today's class, we are about to show you how to make this sweet and easy mini version of hot air balloon that will surely get the wow effect. So, are you ready? Let's, Let's get started! Okay, so um, the hot air balloon is made out of 10 horizontal and 10 uh, vertical uh, lines. Um, so in total, we have 100 uh, quick links, uh, six inches quick links in total for the hot air balloon. Uh, each line is made out of 10 balloons. So when you get to the point that you need to choose the colors, uh, you need to make sure that it will be visible from all sides. Today, so we will show you. Today, we will show you um, a colorful uh, hot air balloon that is made out of six colors. Uh, so the other side won't be perfect because we can divide it into ten balloons. Uh, but if you want, would like to make an hot air balloon that it can be seen from all sides, you need to choose one color, two colors, or five colors. Uh, the colors that we chose. Uh, are the color combination that we just love. You can see it from all of our other designs. Uh, it's the Caribbean blue, it's um, a lime green, yellow, yeah. orange, orange. Wildberry, and wildberry, and spring lilac. So we're going to start with the horizontal uh, chains. Uh, the first one will be a two and a half inches uh, chain. We are using the Qualtex uh, uh, sizing box. It is very uh, easy to use when you need to um, change the sizes all the time. Okay, so we start with the first horizontal chain. We are using 
six inches uh, thickness, inflated to two and a half inches. We recommend you to press the balloons to make them round. You will see that later on when we will get to bigger sizes, you can tell which balloons are uh, rounded and which are not. And of course, it's prettier uh, to press them. So uh, don't uh, forget uh, this step. It is very important too to tie the balloon tightly together and to put the balloons in the same order of colors. As, as we said, we, get, we, we have 10 balloons in each chain. More. Another tip is to use stickers. We will have eventually 10 chains. Uh, and if we don't want to mix up the, the sizes, we just use stickers with the correct size and we put them on each chain and it just makes life easier when we combine them all together. A very, very tight. Okay. okay, so we get the first chain. We move on to the second chain, which again is six inches quick link inflated to three and a half inches. All the links that we are using are six inches quick links. First chain was two and a half inches. Now we move on to three and a half inches. Again, same order of colors. And to save us time uh, for later, I will cut all the ends of the chains. Would you fly in a hotter balloon? Would you? Would fly? Fly. In hotter balloon? Yeah. I wouldn't. I'm afraid, I'm afraid of flight. I'm willing to be in a balloon, harder balloon. Okay, all the time, Avital, all the time, very, very. Make sure that the connections are very good, very tightly together. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, and it's made again. out, each chain is made out of 10 balloons. <laughs> okay, and one, two, three, four, one, and again, two. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you are doing this design with other person, we recommend you that one person will make the inflations and the sign together because each one has its own way to tie and its own press and it's better for everything to be even and symmetrical so today Mir is doing the inflations hey. Okay. Okay. We will fix the last, the last one. When you have six colors, um, it's easy to make a mistake. But it's the last time you're doing mistakes. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. This is the second one. Don't forget to use the stickers. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, other card, other card. That's all. That's all. Yeah. And orange. The last one is orange. No orange. It's because we're too excited as it was our first time. Okay, so the third chain is six inches quick link inflated to five inches.
pai vinte, pai vinte. Don't forget to press the balloons to make them round and cut all the nozzles. This is actually the third time that we make this hot air balloon, this mini version. We made the, the big hot air balloon, the three and a half meters, for many times, but this is kind of being new to us to make the small version. So again, don't forget the colors order. We have six colors, but we have 10 balloons in each chain. So um, probably the other side of the harder balloon won't be as symmetrical at the front side. But today we just wanted you to, to show you, to demonstrate this design because we just love this six color combination. Uh, but if you want it to be shown from all sides, again, you could use Choose one color or two color combination or five colors. Okay, after the spring lilac, we get the Caribbean blue. Colors makes it challenging. Okay. Ready to cut? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Yeah. And. Come on, so. Yeah. And another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and orange. Yeah. Okay, the Makom Nagid, she will not shesh a monomon swain, the me odd mod mod nebelbe, the thin lev, the mukat, shogin, the yaha, the zigot. And again, use the stickers, five inches. Okay. Then next. A chain will be six inches quick link inflated to five and a half inches. All the sizes that we mentioned uh, are in the sizing box, in Qualitex sizing box, which we love. Okay. You could use uh, other um, electric uh, inflators um, but if you want to get the very specific sizes that we mentioned we uh, recommend you to use the sizing box okay one two and yeah. we will actually now have two chains of five and a half inches uh, we invite you to write down your questions in the chat room. We are here live to answer your questions. Okay. So again, I'm repeating the sizes. We started with two and a half inches, then three and a half inches, 
then five inches. Now we're doing five and a half inches. We will have two um, chains of five and a half inches. Then we're going down with the sizes. And finally, orange. Okay, and now the sticker part, five and a half inches. And tell you are the best. Okay. Okay, another chain of five and a half inches. Again. Again. להגיד שבא, אה? כן, אפשר להגיד שבכדור פורח כל הזמן, אבל כל הזמן הבלונים מנופחים בדיוק 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 במידה. מאוד להקפיד על סייזר בוקס. אוקיי, מה שניר אמר בהיבו, זה שזה מאוד 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 להיות מאוד קורקט ומאוד אקורט סייזר, כי בכל זאת אתה תהיה את הפרפקט חדר בלון. בכל זאת, המחירות של החדר מיני חדר balloon is one meter and 20 centimeters mine 1.2 uh, meter tall versus our me a uh, large harder balloon which is about three and a half meters so this is the mini version globus <laughs> Globus. Globus. Okay. So. Okay. But I think I'm going to be more and 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 more. Okay. That was five and a half inches. You are the best. <laughs> okay. And now we go. We are going down to five, five inches. Inch. Okay. 
We are waiting for your questions. In the chat. Because now we have time. Because this was pre-recorded. אני גם אגיד להם, אני ככה, אני אגיד בעברית, אבל חשוב מאוד מאוד ליהנות מהעבודה. כן. אני אגיד שזה מאוד חשוב להשתמש בזה, לעשות את העבודה שלך, כמו שהיא עושה כבר 22 שנים. ניר התחיל את העבודה כשהוא היה רק 16 שנים. אני מרגיש שזה כן עכשיו. הוא מרגיש כל כך חשוב. You're kind of old. No, keep on with the job. No, 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 keep yeah. on. No. Okay. Good friend. Again, we have 10 chains, 10 horizontal chains. In Hebrew, yellow <laughs> is tsaov. <laughs> and green line and line. yarok. Line green. Yarok. And orange is katom. katom. Okay. This was five inches. Now we are going down to four and a half inches. One, two. Okay. Yep. Right. Now four and a half. Rapido, rapido, rapido. Vamos, vamos. Actually, you can save all those nozzles and make nice earrings hmm? out of them. You can go to our uh, Instagram account, Near Balloons, or in our YouTube channel and see how you could do that. Okay, and that was one and a half one inches. One minute, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Test uh, if I'm Okay. The next one is four inches. Six and six inches. Quickly inflated to four inches. 
We have only three chains to go. Okay. Okay, four. Four. Do you love this color combination? If you can suggest us new colors uh, combination, just write down in the chat and maybe we'll try them later on. Okay. Okay, and whoop. Okay, and finally. Okay, okay. Here we come. Right there. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so this was four inches chain. The next one is three and a half inches. Okay. Okay, so. It's very important that when you are tying uh, the balloons together to stretch it very well because if you're not doing it then when we'll cut the ends it might might uh, deflate the balloons so just make sure that you are tying it very very good so you won't have any problems אני לא יכול שלא שלא לחשוב לא לספר לכולם גם לחברינו כאן בישראל וכל מי שרואה אותנו מכל העולם זה את תרגמי להם כמה פעמים יצא לנו לעבוד כאן ביחד במשרד ושלביא הילד הקטן שלנו הגיע לכאן וראה אותנו עם הבלונים הוא יחזיק בלון קטן ביד תרגמי להם, לא כולם הבינו מה אמרתי. אוקיי, כל הזמן טס, אוקיי? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it's good. Now we are going to our last horizontal chain, which is 3 inches. 3 inches. 
זה היה שלוש אינץ'. זה שלוש וחצי. לא, זה שלוש. ניר עשה את זה, ונפלט את זה שלושה אינץ'. אז אנחנו פשוט נשארנו את הסטיקר, ועכשיו אנחנו נעשה את זה שלושה אינץ'. שלושה אינץ'. אוקיי. אז אני מפרידה את כל הסייזים. We have started from the top to the bottom of the hot air balloon. We've started with a two and a half inches, then three and a half inches, then five inches, then five and a half inches, and another five and a half inches, and then five inches, four and a half inches, four inches, three and a half inches, and the last one is three inches. Overall, we just, we have 10 chains. 10 horizontal chains. להזכיר לכולם כל הזמן, all the time, אנחנו מנפחים את הבלון יותר גדול, לוחצים אותו ומעבירים אותו בסייזר. Don't forget to first press the balloon and then use the sizer. Not the Finish. Okay, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Together. One. Great. Okay. So we are done with the horizontal chains. We have in total 100 balloons for the horizontal chains. Now we will have a uh, 10 vertical chains, um, 10 vertical lines. Um, so in total, we will have 200 uh, quick links, six inches quick links. Um, for the vertical uh, lines, we will uh, use one color for each time. Um, and the sizes are not even like here. I'm gonna um, say the sizes. Uh, for each one, from bottom, from top to bottom. So we're starting from the chain with two and a half inches, then two and a half inches, then again, two and a half inches, then three inches, three and a half inches, three inches, two and a half inches, two and a half inches, two and a half inches, and two and a half inches. So you have three lines of two and a half inches from the top, then three, three and a half, three, and we end up with four uh, balloons of two and a half inches. We will write it down. We've made a PDF uh, for you, so it makes it easier for you. So you will get all the sizes. And again, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to ask in the chat. Okay, what I'm doing, Vital, I'm going to cover the balloons, three inches, the size of and sizer box 2.5 inch. אני לא עובר מידה, כי יש לנו למעלה 3 אינץ' ולמטה יש לנו 4 בלונים של אותו מידה. זה אותו מידה שלי להסביר לנו. אוקיי? אוקיי. אז עם הדקה. זה 2.5? זה 2.5 ומה זה זה. אוקיי, זה מאוד חשוב להשתמש עוד סטיקרס, אז אתם יודעים כשאתם מתחילים, איפה יש לך את הפרט? כי הסיזות לא סימטריות מכל הסיזות. So just put sticker or something um, in the uh, top part and then you, when you combine all the balloons together it will be easier for you to find your 
first balloon. So we're starting with the white berry, then we will move on to the other color. In the meanwhile, I will cut the left tree. The vertical um, balloons are not you, do not, you do not need to make chains out of them, just lines. It will need to be open, not closed. Okay, after one, two, three. Okay, two and a half inches. Yeah, and three five inches. In, five in. No, three and a half. Three inches. Yeah, that's the combination. That's about the balloon. Okay. Okay, so we have three balloons of two and a half inches, then three inches. זה חרש, Okay, we have 10 balloons. We move on to other chains, the same sizes, but change the colors. Here also, we um, take off the nozzles. Don't take off the nozzles of the first and last balloon. Tamida madbeka b'cheleka elion b'cheleka ze madbeka. The sticker is in the top part. Okay. Ani mocher latchil pashut me'emza latbedim. Then if it pashut niral yiter yiter kal. Just one five. Then after the latbedim, we take the other side. Okay. And we said now we are going to. Don't forget again to mark your top balloon. Okay. Okay, we're going to start um, with combining the horizontal and vertical lines. Uh, we pre-inflated some of those chains. Uh, so we're gonna, gonna start with the fun part. Okay, we start with the top uh, line chain, which is two and a half inches. 
אנחנו שמים לב תמיד מאיזה צד אנחנו שמים את הבלון. You need to make sure that, um, that you're repeating the same order of colors uh, when you're adding more and more chains. זה הלמעלה בעצם. The next one is three and a half inches. אז תמיד אנחנו שומעים אותו מימין לבלון. אוקיי. אוקיי. You're, you're putting, you need to put the chain, the vertical chain, uh, and on the left side of the color. If it's wildberry, then it's the chain is placed on the left side. Orange. Okay, and as you could see, the first one is above the chain. Okay, we're just twisting it together. Again, you make sure that the sticker is in the top part, and then you're twisting it on the left side of the color that you chose. Okay, we need four more chains. In total, we have 10 vertical chains. Vertical size in lime green, in yellow, in orange, and then we're finished.
on. Now yellow and orange. Marshall? Yellow. Yellow. And the last one is orange. Have you done? Yeah. You are the best. <laughs> okay, look at I did it. 
We're just whisking it around. Okay, let's see if you can do it. Okay, as you could see, we have one horizontal chain and 10 vertical chains. Okay, so the first line is two and a half inches. We are now connecting the second line from the top, which is three and a half inches. So, we have the sticker, so it's easy to find the three and a half inches. Now you need to make sure that the colors are in the same order. Okay, no, 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 Okay. No. Okay. We are just twisting it around the second uh, balloon in the chain. We are just connecting the second chain with the second uh, vertical line. There's no need to tie, we're just twisting it. It's like knitting something. It's very fast, very cool, and easy. It's very easy. It's very easy. It's very easy. Again, notice the colors, especially if it's more than one, two colors. It is very important to make sure that you are doing it correctly because it's not fun to make it over and over again. Okay, now two, two chains are connected and we move on to the three, which is five inches. Let me check the stickers. Five inches. Okay. You're placing the chain from the inside and then just twist around the vertical lines. Okay, we are done with the three, with the third um, horizontal line. We're moving on to the fourth, which is five and a half inches. Okay, and again, we have the sticker, so it's easy. Placing the chain and twist. Place the chain, twist, twist, twist. This is a fun part. Fast, fast, fast. And we're done. <laughs> nah. No. Okay. okay. Another chain of five and a half inches. Ta -da. Where is the sticker? Well, there is. No, 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 no. Five and a half inches over there. Okay. Thank God we have stickers. Well, there is. Okay. Good, yeah. 
The next one is five inches. Okay. Wild berry. Still no in yes. yet. Half inches. Okay. 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 four and a half inches we get four inches hello <laughs> okay don't forget to take off the stickers Last one is three inches. This is the bottom side of the hot air balloon. When you're um, Connecting the final uh, bottom uh, chain, horizontal chain, you need to tie the knots together, not twist around. You cannot twist it around, you need to tie it.
Okay, we're not done. But this is the first part of the class. In order to make a, a really nice shape of the hot air balloon, we will use three feet balloon inside uh, of the hot air balloon. It will make it more structured and have better look. We, have, we are using a clear balloon. So you will need one piece of three feet clear balloon. You can use an um, electric uh, pump, an electric machine, electric inflator, but we are using um, outdoor machine, which is faster. Nir is using this machine in order to inflate the balloon uh, for his balloon shows. But if you do not have it, you can use any other electric uh, inflator. Okay, so this is the top part of the other balloon. Before we will close uh, um, it this way, we are uh, putting the three feet clear balloon inside. We are gonna inflate it and then we will tie them all together. Okay. Okay. okay, so we do not give you a specific size of the three feet because it is very important to um, see the, the shape that you would like to get. Uh, so you can inflate it more that you would like, then look at it and, uh, and choose your perfect uh, shape that you would like to get. Okay, now I'll show you. Now it's time to tie them all together. Again, this is the top part of the other balloon. You can choose a uh, three feet in each color that you would like. You can choose one of the, the colors that you chose for the other balloon. Um, it's up to you.
Okay, just make sure that uh, you have a nice center at the top part of the hot air balloon. You can take this off. Okay, now in order to uh, cover all the um, connections, uh, we will use five inches balloons. Uh, we will use five inches inflated to two inches, and then we will just connect them um, according to the colors, of course. So we will get a really nice shape of hot air balloon. It's important to tie the balloon, make the knot as close uh, to the inflation, to this part and not to the nozzle, as far from the nozzle as you can. And it's very important to make it round. You can make it round by pushing the air. By pushing the air and then tying it as far from the nozzle as you can, like this. Okay. Now you just tie it up according to the colors. Don't forget to take off the nozzle here too. We would like to get a very clean and perfect result. Time for questions. You can um, offer this design uh, to baby celebrations, but we um, found that our uh, customers, our corporate customers, love this as well for their celebrations. So. No, just for babies. Okay, so part one of the other balloon is complete. <laughs> what do you say? Nice. And now we move on to the basket. All right, now we are making the basket of the after balloon. We are using the weaving technique. For that, we will need eight to 60 cube balloons. The color is mocha brown. Uh, we are going to inflate it and leave about 10 fingers uninflated. We um, tie pairs together and then we will twist all the eight balloons together so they all start from the same point. Fingers bubble. One, two, three. Three fingers and 
small pieces. We're going to do it in all the eight balloons. Three fingers bubble and then small pinch twist. Small pinch twist. Some of you is not familiar with the weaving technique. I uh, recommend on do practice on it. It gets easier and easier within your practice. So we get eight balloons, 262, mocha brown. You combine them together and then we make three fingers bubble and small pieces. So let's check the okay. Ukhanim. Next, we are going to make a two and a half fingers bubble and then wrap it around the next pinch twist. One. Again, two and a half fingers bubble, and then twist it around the next pinch twist. We continue on and on until we get a round base for our basket. questions feel free to ask and the chatting okay so this is the base of our basket now it's time to go up and make rows we're going to add five rows we're making small bubble and then again two and a half fingers um, a, a bubble and then we are making a small bubble from the other balloon and we wrap around and we continue on. And then two and a half inch bubble, small bubble, and then we wrap it around and continue on and on until we get the first row, and then second, fourth, and fifth. Avital, you are the best. Thank you. Okay. You too. <laughs> One. It is very important down, to push down um, the balloons push. while you're doing it, so it will be tightly together yeah. if you will make uh, big uh, bubbles between the rows then you will have gaps so just make it correctly small bubbles in between the two and a half uh, fingers bubbles okay now we have our this is the second row right yeah okay now we finish our One, second two, row. Three, four, five. We have three more rows to go. All of the and rows are the same. Uh, the bubbles are uh, two and a half fingers long. Squeeze down the balloon while you're doing your weaving. While Nir is doing it, I will explain that until now we didn't use any framing for the upper balloon and we will need a water weight inside of the basket to make it more stable. So that we will, do, we will use a double stuff 11 inch uh, mocha brown balloons. We double stuff them just to make sure that the water won't go out and we will place it eventually after Nir will end. We will place it inside the basket. We will tie it together to the middle part of the basket. So we will add weight inside of the basket and it will be more stable. And then we will add four more water weights. Actually, they are meant to be sand weights of the basket uh, of an original other balloon. So we are just, uh, we put uh, water inside of five inches and the, some of the colors of the other balloon. We will need only four of them uh, and next you will see how we add them uh, to add a little details to the design and it makes it a little bit more stable. So Nir is finishing up with the fifth row of the basket. And it is important that you will not take out the rest of the balloon because next we will show you what we will do with the uh, extra part of the inflated balloon. Okay, this is our basket. 
Next, what we are about to do is to make out of each, uh, um, uh, each balloon wow. five small bubbles, Two. really small bubbles. Three, four, five. It is five. more for decoration to make it more detailed. Five because one, two, center, one, two. Okay, we will yeah, make it five bubbles, so one of them will be in the center, and later we will show you what we will do with the center bubble. Wow. So we are creating five small bubbles, and then we just twist it around with the next balloon. We are doing it all around the basket. Rapido, rapido, rapido. Vamos, vamos. Vamos. <laughs> not take uh, off uh, the extras yet because we're about to make pin twists after we will end up with this detail. After we Neil will surround all the basket with the, those small bubbles, we create pin twists, small pin twists in every, um, from every balloon. And then we'll take the rest uh, out. One, two, three, five. Okay, next, as I said, we are creating small pin small twists. Pin twist. Okay, on. You can take off the rest. Okay, again. Perfect. Okay, again. I'm very used to the next. No, 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 big, small. Okay, three. <laughs> I don't believe it. Okay, here. Ah! Okay, and finally. Whoa. This is beautiful. Boop. <laughs> okay. Okay, you do those. Now. Now what we will do is to use a small uh, round glue dots. We will... Again, one, two. Yes, we will uh, glue the middle um, bubble of each a detailed extra and just glue it down middle one glue it down that way we will get more clean uh, look
We've used only eight to 60 few balloons for the basket. Okay, next we're about to add the water weight inside that basket. You just connect the nozzle of the water weight into the middle part of the basket. And, oh, beautiful. <laughs> and for, uh, to get even more detailed basket, we're adding our sand water, which is water weight, sand weight, water weight. that I look like sand weight. Um, wow. And we will add them And we will add them between two, uh, in, in, in two between two balloons. Okay, between two bubbles, we one, place two. one and uh, water weight. One, two. What do you say about our basket? Of course, you can create your own basket by using other techniques. We're not actually done with uh, this part of the design because what next, what we're about to do is to add clouds. All right, so we're not done with this part yet because next what we're about to do is to add clouds um, in the bottom part of the basket. For that, we will need a white six inches uh, thickness and white uh, five inches balloons. And first, we're going to start with the links. We're going to uh, use ten thicknesses uh, that are inflated to three inches. So as I said, 10 balloons in total. The lint will be the base and what will help us to create a very fast and easy clouds. We just make a chain and place it in the, at the part, bottom part of the basket. Next, we are about to add five inches and in multiple sizes just to have a look of an organic cloud. of the links to add the, the clouds around. You can choose whether or not you want them to be small uh, clouds, larger as you wish. Just place a 
that's the fun part. As I said, you can choose whether you want them to be large clouds, small ones. You can choose if you would like them to be uh, all around the outer balloon or just from the front side. It's up to you. Okay, so we finished with our baskets, the clouds, the top part. Now it's time to combine them all together. For that, we will use four metal sticks um, they are 53 um, centimeters tall we have four of them to make them look better and to fit to our design we will uh, use 260 mocha brown balloons okay we're going to inflate the balloon then deflate and put the metal sticks inside of the 260 cube balloons it is important to use uh, the extra uh, 260 cube balloon uh, do not take it off because we will use it in order to um, tie it into the base of our design Again, we inflated the mocha brown 260Q, then deflated it so it will be easier to put it inside the metal sticks. And then, then we um, put it inside of the balloon. We made, we made a knot and we will use this knot in order to connect it to the basket. Those sticks will make the design be stable. Uh, without it, it probably won't uh, be stable enough. Um, for those of you who might ask um, what will happen if we will fill the thrifted balloon with helium, um, so we, we've tried it, it doesn't work. There are too, much, too many balloons uh, on the top part of the a design so the helium yeah, cannot uh, float. Okay. Okay. So what One, we're doing two, next three, is four. using those sticks. We're going to place them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In between two bubbles, we will place one stick. The the place with the knot will be uh, in the bottom part because what we will do is to connect the, uh, the knot of the 260 to the uh, bubble that in the bottom part of the basket. One. It is very important that the stick will go down to the base of the basket. If you wouldn't do it, it won't be stable. One, two. In between two bubbles, you will place it. You need to remember to tie um, the nozzle of the 260Q into the bubble at the bottom part of the basket. Oh, 
Now it's time to add our hot hair balloon. As we said in the beginning, each chain is made out of 10 balloons. But now we have only four sticks. So Neil will demonstrate where the place of the stick that we're connecting to the hot air balloon. Okay. One. This is the first place. One. Two. This is the second place. One, two, three. This is the third place. One, two. This is the fourth place. And one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Arba amudim. So what we have is three balloons on the side and two balloons on the other side. So we have one stick here, one stick here, one stick here and one here. Now what we're going to do is to put it on top of our basket and then we'll just wrap around the nozzles of the five inches in order, in order to lock it in place. Okay. So, this is the final result. Did you like our hot air balloon? Please leave your comments in the chat room. We are there live waiting for you. We would like to say thank you very much for hosting us. It was a pleasure being part of the Q Corner Convention 2021. We were a Vitalis Neil Schechter. Enjoy the rest of the convention. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, I am LaRonda, the creator of Butler Balloons from New York City, and I am here today to show you how to create some unique custom colors uh, using a technique called double stuffing. Generally, inspiration for me comes from fashion, um, interior design, just all over. Like I pull things from some of my cookie front, cookie art friends, nail artists. Like I just will look at a photo, and something will pop in that photo to me, or just be very visually um, pleasing, and I will save it and then try to recreate that in blooms. Okay, so let's get started. Today we're just gonna make a fun color palette, which is, you know, some colors that I've pulled that I feel will kind of fit into the inspiration that I'm feeling. Like, I, I love this peachy pink color. And normally you would think immediately go for the blush, but I think that with ivory silk, cause I, I know ivory silk, does, it, it can mute a color. If you put a pink inside of ivory silk, I might achieve the peach that we're thinking. And what part of my process is sometimes I just inflate a single balloon and I look at the colors that's in that balloon. So like ivory silk is very heavily, like has a, a lot of like yellow undertones to it. 
Um, I hold it up in different lights just to kind of see, you know, how it's gonna look in, in like less light or more light. Um, but like, it's kind of like a recipe. What I tend to do is like, when you're cooking something and you taste it and you say, does this need, what does this need? It needs salt, does it need pepper? Well, I do the same thing with balloons. I'll hold an original balloon up and I'm like, hmm, what's the color we're trying to achieve? Um, we want to blush, then we need to add red or pink or orange. So I play around with multiple colors. I just don't stop at, you know, putting one color in. So let's try a few and see what we get. Um, and see how the pink with ivory silk over looks. Definitely giving you a very peachy color. I want a little bit more pink to it. So, you know, a, a technique actually that I use a lot when I'm in the family of what I'm thinking, like the color that I like, I tend to use different sizes to double stuff. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, for instance, I will grab a nine inch ivory silk, but a 11 inch pink. Let me see if I have a solid pink. Give me one moment. We all have that bag of random balloons, tons of leftovers. Uh, that's my bag that I go and I play around with because that's how you create these, you know, unique shades. But that's a 11 inch pink and a nine inch ivory silk. Can you see what I mean where you want to make sure that you don't over inflate the nine inch because it will pop because the 11 inch will inflate a large, obviously a lot larger than the nine inch. But you can see here how these are the same colors that we used, but just different sizes. And you see the difference in the shade. This is definitely a lot pinker and you know, it's a subtle difference, but you make the difference. <laughs> um, I want to go for something a bit more pink, still in the same family. So I will, I will use like, you know, ivory silk, maybe as a base and try a pearl pink. Now, when you're stuffing with pearls, I actually love stuffing with pearls because um, pearls are a bit more opaque, uh, sorry, sheer. So the color underneath, you can really see. So like you can really transform a color with, I'm just gonna try that again. Yeah, so that's pearl pink and ivory silk on top. And you see what I mean when I say with pearls, um, they're really good for s double stuffing and, and creating a unique color because, you know, you get this like shadow of the pink, but you really can see the ivory inside and it's just really making another blush color, which if you put this in a palette together, it looks beautiful because it's like they just complement each other. They're very similar in tone, but different balloons, totally different, like, you know, standard pink and ivory silk and then pearl pink those i love it anyway <laughs> let's move on um you know generally when you think of creating a pastel or it's just like one of the basics in double stuffing is you put a white over a pink or a, a more vibrant color and you get that like macaroon look which is very pretty i love it but you know, another option is to putting a lighter color inside that more vibrant color. It still lightens it up and it gives it a different, you know, a different tone that we don't see as much in the balloon world. Let me see if I can find an ivory silk because I do want this to be more in the peach family. That is too pink for me. 
All right, let's see. Maybe I'll try a larger ivory silk in this to stretch the balloon so it's not so pigmented. Um, just kind of working through it. And this is my process. It's like you, you try one thing, you don't like it, or sometimes you love it. It's not for this project and you put it aside and you know, you save it for later. No, that's not it either. Let's see. Created a color here. I can't remember what it was. Okay, well, I gotta figure it out. <laughs> and <laughs> actually, I'm known for that. Um, one of the biggest questions, like on my on my Instagram, like everyone's always DMing me and asking, um, where what color is that? Like, where can I find that color? And a lot of the times people don't realize that I've created the color. It's not something that you can buy. But when, you know, other balloon artists who know that it's a double stuff color, they're like, what combo did you create? What, you know, like, how did you get this? The honest answer is I don't know because <laughs> I don't write any of it down. And the reason why I don't write it down is because I try to stay creative. So like if I just rely on all of the things I've done in the past, then you know, you don't have that that push to, you know, create something different. And that's part of the process of well, for me, that's part of the process of how I continue to create something unique because I don't rely on the things that I've done in the past. Um still trying to create this pink and you know that's also part of it it's like um you have to just try different like i know it's hard to just you know i'm teaching a class about <laughs> i'm teaching a class about how to create something unique but this is the process of creating something unique it is just you know trial and error like I I look at I look at certain colors and I'm thinking that like oh this is going to be amazing and I you know I inflate it and it looks awful and then I keep going and that's part of the process you know um okay so let's see what color we're trying to get something pink let's try white inside of a I know what color we need to try Let's do a small, so let's do a nine inch 11. I mean, sorry, a nine inch pink and a ivory silk 11. Okay. So you see how we're still staying in that blush family. Also, you know, sometimes you just keep it back to basics like a peach color would be like just a muted orange. And a lot of the times with these palettes, it would have just like a basic color mixed in with some unique colors. And because those other unique colors are so different, it, it makes like just the run of the mill type of color look like it's something else. And that's pretty as well. We got a palette going on here. Let's see. We do need some green. Let's see. I'm gonna put these down. We can pull them all back up. And... Okay, so green. When I was looking at this photo, I mean, I wanted something a bit brighter, but mute it. Um, what I tend to do, I do um, try to put, I use pearls a lot to mute my colors. So like if I have a vibrant color, I will use a pearl, like maybe silver or gold, just to kind of like tone it down a bit because that pearl, it doesn't, it's not as opaque. So it kind of just gives like a shadow and it gives it a very like muted look. 
Let's try um, silver. So I do like that. It's a little bright for me. Let's see. That's nice. I mean, we, I just inflate. See what I like and then put it together. I'll show you a bit of the process um, in terms of final, picking the final colors for the palette. But what I, what I like to do is I inflate multiple shades that are very similar and then I pick from that what's the closest to the inspiration that I've uh, kind of chosen for it. I do like this green. This is a pretty color. Sometimes you just need to like try a color that's unexpected. Um, this is pearl pink and lime green. Like I said, the using a color like this, I tend to put the balloon further, like I inflate from the top because I want to make sure that the color's not pooling at the top. All right, I like this. Now this is an unexpected uh, find. <laughs> and, and that's what I mean when I say you, you should play around with that extra bag, the, the scrap bag, because you pair two colors that you wouldn't normally pair and you get something that's just like so beautiful. And, and like if this was in a larger display, it would just look very unique and very, you know, everyone would be asking you, what, what color is that? <laughs> but like, yeah, this, we just created like a cool sage that has like, you know, the shadow of pink that blends into the display. So I love that. Put it down here for now. Okay. Um, this was green and silver. Let's try the technique that I mentioned about putting larger balloon inside of a smaller balloon. So I have there uh, an 11 inch lime green and I'm putting it in a nine inch silver, standard silver, not chrome. And you wanna make sure that your nozzle is like as, as far in the balloon as possible because you don't want the color to pull at the top. There we go. I like that. Now you can also do the reverse, not put, you can put a um, smaller balloon inside of a larger balloon and see what you get. Um, this is so this is the same. This is 11 inch and a 11 inch. This is an 11 inch and a nine inch. And let's um, inflate a five inch inside of, so let's go with a smaller balloon inside of a larger balloon and see what we get. What I tend to do is I inflate the smaller balloon just to stretch it a bit so it can fit better into the larger. Um, this is a nine inch. I know it looks a little big, but it, is, it said nine inch. It's a nine inch silver. Um, what I sometimes do is I roll the neck to make sure that the color that I can get the smaller balloon inside and it really gets to the top so you can see the color. Just, all right, or I fold the neck. Okay. And you wanna just stick the smaller balloon inside the larger. Because I, I want a very muted green. And that happens sometimes. But let's, Especially when you're um, 
double stuffing with different sizes. If the larger balloon is inside, you have to be very careful when you're inflating because you don't want to over inflate and then it pops. This is same size, 11 inch, 11 inch. This is nine inch on top, 11 inch on inside. And this is nine inch on the outside and five inch on the inside. And they all, I mean, they're similar, but they're still different. So like if you were doing, for instance, a monochromatic display, you might want to use this technique because this would give you the depth that you need. It's still the same color, but then it gives you that variation of, you know, of color slight, very, very subtle, but it gives you that depth that you might need. For the colors that I that I was looking at for my inspiration, I do want a green that's a, a bit deeper. So I'm gonna try a standard green inside of a nine inch silver. And again, I roll the neck or fold it up just so I can get the, I forgot a step. I need to inflate the smaller balloon first so it stretches a bit and it just fits the larger balloon better okay so make sure it's at the top and that's as far as a five inch can go but i have too much silver at the top so i need to adjust this roll this neck a little bit more and I know it seems like a lot if you have to do like a huge display um, but once you get a hang of it it is it, faster <laughs> it's not as it's not as tedious also what I tend to do let me just backtrack a little bit what I tend to do is I make sure I pull the balloon tight when I'm inflating. There we go. Now that is a very inflated five inch, but it works. And so that's the color that I was thinking. I just want it like a very subtle green um very muted um there was an ivory that i liked and you know sometimes you think we we think of like oh a, an off-white or an ivory putting an ivory inside of a white but what i've noticed with um ivory silk it has really strong yellow undertones so when you put that color inside of a white and you'll just start to see what colors do what so like you know we all we we know that like whites give you that macaroon color over a more vibrant color um ivory silk has a lot of yellow undertones so when you put it inside of a white it just looks like a pastel yellow and I'm looking for something that is a bit more of a true ivory, off like creamy color. Um, let's try blush inside of white. is using a larger balloon on the outside and a smaller balloon in the inside. Now the reason why you would do that is that you would want the outside balloon to be more prominent than the inside. So let's stretch the smaller balloon just so it fits better again. little just so I 
and make sure that we're inflating the bulb of the balloon. And I pull it tight at the, at the base just so I can make sure that the color is, um, so that like the, sometimes when you inflate a smaller balloon inside of a larger balloon, the color will pool at the top and because the balloon inside isn't big enough to inflate um, fully, it will just be like a big mass of color here. So you wanna prevent that by rolling the neck and then also pulling it tight as you're inflating. And if you're using like, you know, a electrical inflator, inflator you can um, do the same thing. Just, you just hold it tight. Um, just for video purposes, I'm not using electrical. And you wanna kinda fully inflate that 11, and I think that's good. I stumbled on this technique by not having what I needed, which we all know with all the shortages going on, there's plenty of times where you don't have a certain color that you absolutely need for a display. And um, basically I used, I had like, I needed a 16 inch to stuff with and I didn't have that 16 inch and I was just like, you know, okay, well, let me just use what I have. And then I realized the difference in the color. I was like, this doesn't work. But then in some cases it does work. So that's what made me kind of come upon this technique. <laughs> but here we go. Okay, so here, Ooh, that looks pretty similar in this light. But normally the 16 inch looks whiter um the 16 inch over the 11 looks lighter than the 11 over the 11. all right let's see what we have for palette i think we're good oh i wanted to show you another technique that i really really love or just color combo combo um so chromes are everything and what I like to do is put chromes and pearls because it, it just creates like, I call it satin. I love this finish. Um, and they're really good accents. They're really, you know, like a lot of people use chromes as accents. Well, this uh, finish is a really good accent for me. You don't want to over inflate because again, the chrome is a seven inch and you're putting it in a five inch. Um, when I see the pool at the top, I, 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 I like deflate and I start to go over. But that's just me. You're gonna have to do that. <laughs> You're gonna have to do that. Okay, there we go. All right, so I like that. That's my satin finish. Okay, we got a nice little palette going. The palette that I was working with actually. It's perfect for Mother's Day coming up. Um, I know Mother's Day just passed a couple of Sundays ago in the UK, but for our American audience, you can you you can totally use some of these colors for Mother's Day. Let me just show you them again. There we go. I like that. And it kind of you you can see where the inspo photo is very influenced with the final colors that I picked. So now that we have our balloons prepped and ready, I wanna show you guys a really cool technique that I love. If you're familiar with me, you know I incorporate a lot of paint into my displays and I just wanted to show you a cool little technique that can take this display to the next level. Okay, so we have everything we need to create this really cool effect that I really love on balloons. It's um, the speckled look. And uh, what we need for that is paint, um, a toothbrush, some water, because you want to thin the paint out a bit. First, first you want to do is put a little bit, of, if, you're, if you're doing a black speckled, um, what I use is just acrylic black paint. I put a dab in a plate. Next, you would want to add a little bit of water. Where's my little Doppler? Don't, there we go. A little 
but you don't need uh, a lot of water. And a toothbrush to mix it up. You can also use pouring paint. I've never used um, pour it, pouring um, acrylic paint, but I've been dying to try it. So it's, actually, I think that would work really well. You could do, you can use pouring paint or you can just use basic black acrylic paint and add water to it. I think pouring paint is probably just thinned out acrylic paint. I don't know, but if I had to guess, that's what I think it is. Okay, I need a little bit more water. You want it to kind of, you don't want it too runny, but you want it where if you are, you want it where it runs a little. Okay. What I do is I punch, like I just get a cardboard box and cut it out or whatever cardboard you have. Um, and I punch holes in it. So that holds the balloon. So now you just want to run your finger like you want to pull the bristles. And basically what happens is the paint splatters in front. But you do wanna put a tarp down for this because these little dots go everywhere. Darker dots, harder. You, you pull the brush towards you. No, no, you pull your finger towards you. <laughs> Now I'm gonna try it with the pouring paint and see if there's a big difference between the two. You do wanna wear like an apron or something that you're not concerned about it getting paint on it because you will find little specks <laughs> later on all over the place. So make sure you put down a tarp and wear something you don't care about. Okay, so this is the pouring paint in a more like conventional toothbrush. Let's see what happens here. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so this definitely is the, so this is like a thicker toothbrush, like the bristles are thicker. And it's giving me the effect I really like. You can leave it there or you can go and add some gold to it. Okay, let's see how the gold looks speckled. I actually got a lot of inspo from this cookie designer. Is it a cookie? She, she's a dessert designer um, in the UK. And she does a lot of speckled work and I love it. So yeah, I mean, again, it goes back to pulling inspo in from like all over the place. A little bit more paint. And again, this paint, so this paint is called brush bronze, but any gold metallic acrylic paint will do and you're adding water to the paint so it thins it out a bit and it's easier to splatter i tend to go with like bronzier golds just because like sometimes the gold um paints like for instance this one it's just it's too yellow for me 
or mix your own paint. I do that a lot. Okay, here we go. So this is a cool speckled egg effect. It's very like abstract. Um, another way I did, I haven't tried it yet, but another way of getting this effect is dangling a brush above it and tapping. Not a toothbrush, like just a regular like paint, um, like a regular just like paint brush. Um, but it has to be coarse bristles and you're tapping it and the paint is just dropping down on it, but the paint needs to be really thin for it to like drop down. Um, that's another way of getting a speckled egg look. Um, you can go another step with it and if you want to do a splatter, you start splattering here. If the paint's too thin, it will start to like run. So like if you want like just more dots, you wanna make the paint just a little, like the body just a little heavier. But I love this, I think this is very pretty. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed these tips. Um, if you want to catch me on Instagram, my handle is Butler Balloons, and I will see you next time. Hello guys, my name is Nikita and I came from Slovenia. Thank you for joining my class. Uh, I will be teaching about mosaic frames and I'm using a Nikon frame shape of a fish. So, it came in a box. Inside you have instructions, how you assemble the pieces together. So, we'll be doing this now. Now we have the body. Make sure for for now you just put pieces outside the box and then we will glue it together. Now we have the whole piece on our tables and now we will glue it together. I'm using the low temperature glue gun um, 
If you will use the hot one, the styrofoam can uh, melt. So be careful if you're using the low temperature one. Uh, I'm putting the, the glue just a little bit inside the puzzle and then I am assembling the pieces together. You don't need to put much of guns over here, so just put the wheel. So now we have our shape, all the pieces together. Inside the box you also have this side wall. It's made of paper and it's very flexible so you can use it to go around and make a frame. Uh, and I will show you now how. Actually, in uh, about this shape, you actually it doesn't matter where you start. You just pick your corner and start somewhere. I'm putting the the glue at the bottom of the sidewalk, so and then just go around and around the shape. So you can see, just putting a little bit of glue at the bottom and just go like around. very flexible so you can make it very fast and it's very easy to
For every shape, you need around 15 to 20 minutes to put all the pieces together and glue the sidewall around it. So it's very easy, very fast.
now we are at the end. So I'm cutting the rest of the sidewall. So now we have a beautiful brand new shape of a mosaic frame of a fish and now you can make your own design. I will be, made, I will be using uh, Chrome uh, 260 Q um, purple violet and some foil balloons. Nine inch and four inch foil balloons, different colors. And I will be starting here with a tail. This design will be a little bit different than uh, usual ones. You can use like 5 inch, 11 inch balloons. Uh, you can use whatever you like and I just put glue on the balloon and push it to the sidewall so it's very strong and won't fall off. In the middle of the tail, I will just twist three times and you will see why at the end. And now again I'm putting glue and So here I see the balloon is too long. I will just twist, cut at the end, and tie. And it cuts the rest. So we just have a little knot here at the end.
And again, I'm cutting the extra part and applying a little bit here. Very easy, you can use your own imagination, use your own colors, techniques. I just pre-inflate it a little bit more and then lose the air out so your balloon will be a little bit softer and easy to work with. Thank you. 
I put a little bit of glue also on the side wall, on the other side, so all the pieces are perfectly together and aligned. So we have a but at the end I will add something on here. Now we are going on to make a body and I will be making with a 9 inch sh uh, round shape for your wounds in these three colors, green, sapphire blue and magenta. Also with a low temperature glue gun, just put a little glue here. You can use more natural colors or more than one color, but I choose like this, a little bit of a rainbow blast colors. So it's more fun and colorful. I'm making the scales on the fish's body. I think this metallic look of a foil just makes this increased value of the whole design. Mm. are the same colors just in four inch size. I'm gonna just make it like colorful and shiny.
saving this for later. Um, here, I will use seven inch balloon, same color, purple. They are all inflated differently, so here is really not uh, doesn't matter how 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 much is big or not. Just do it. Maybe I can show you one. You just need an easy well, a balloon pump just take a balloon and you can deflate it inside the frame and then tie make sure you cut the rest and then glue it inside Just put the glue a little bit on the side and push it inside. For example, here in the corner we did a really, really small one just to fill the hole. Just make sure you push all the air up so you this shiny look and then you just stir it a little bit and tie it inside so you have like this simple and really everybody can do it at home
really easy and super excited to work with this it's really something different and you can use it like in every party this little holes so when the fish will be standing up it won't be like white inside so I will be using this size really really small It's super easy and fast. I'm gonna use 
pastry is here. Add some extra. Maui Chrome 260 Cube and I will just add some bubbles first I will make pinch twist and tie You just need to hold it all the time and tie the last one to the 260 purple. This is what happens. One extra effect on your tail uh, or, or on any of your designs you're making.
for the mouth, I will be using 9 inch red uh, heart balloon and I will be gluing it here. We can use a little glue here at the side now. Now we have an eye, which is 4 inch silver round shape balloon, uh, and here is the sticker. And if we go just right here.
metallic effect so I think it's uh, really uh, different and but you can also use just layered balloons um, in whatever color you like so now we saw the shape of a fish and now we will be going to the uh, sea and let's see what we have for you more. Welcome to the sea. Here we have 10 different brand new Nicolon frame designs uh, all about sea, summer and scuba diving. Here we have a scuba diver, octopus, shark, crab, starfish, seahorse, anchor and here we have mermaid and a shell. Here we have a design which is made double sided. As you can see, the side wall is good in the middle, so you can make this double sided effect, different colors. It's very light, so it's only tied with the nylon up there. Here we have scuba diver tied on the tied on the rocks. Here we have a stand inside, and here we have nylon all around side. So this is not going anywhere. On the shark, you can see some special stickers, which are just printed. Uh, with the usual printer uh, and just glue on the design and the shark have teeth uh, which are the part of the frame okay so here we have the, the mermaid which is glued on the stand only with a blue gun it's super easy and you can make an amazing design with it. Thank you for joining my class and I will be see you next time. Thank you for everything and bye bye.
Hello, welcome to CC's Bag of Tricks. My name is Cindy Cronin. I'm the owner of Balloons Instead Events and Entertainment. Been in business for 35 years. I've learned a lot of um, efficient ways to do things and I'm hoping that you will enjoy a few of my tips I have for you today. So let's get started. Um, one of my favorite things to do is uh, use a newspaper um, for recycle uh, reasons as well as efficiency. Um, I spray whatever I need to spray or glitter on this surface. Uh, I use uh, 3M spray, which seems to be my favorite. When you spray this, you spray it in little bursts over your surface. Allow it to, to prime. Don't stick your uh, glitter or paper on it right away. Um, you want it to prime and it, then it adheres to it a little bit better. Uh, I, I've done it for years and I love it. So I've glued my surface. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to change my page. It gets me so excited. And then I'm going to have a fresh surface for my glittering. It makes me happy when things like that work out. So, And I have lots of pages here for a lot of glitter projects. So that's one thing. So um, another thing too though is this is what it, um, it looks like after I uh, glued the paper onto it. It's kind of pretty, huh? So we use that as a base. So why don't we just move on to a centerpiece with it then since I have it there. I was at an event and found these uh, tubes that had glow sticks in them in the garbage. There were 50 of them literally 50 tubes. So I said, well, you know what? I can do something with those. And lo and behold, I did. Got a roll of paper, laid out the paper, put the roll in it, rolled it forward, cut it, clear taped it. I use a packing tape. Always use really good packing tape. It adheres to everything and it's worth the money. Do, do buy the good stuff. And I wrap this. I then take the top, fold it in, the bottom, fold it in, and now I have a base for a centerpiece. I also found that if you put a hole through it, which I did, and put a 650 balloon through it, I can now attach a topiary to the top of it. Um, the only thing is, is it, it wobbles. So another thing I came up with was to use these votive candles. I found one that is actually the same size as this tube, so I can put it in the bottom. Now I have weight in it, right? I put it right down here. I'm gonna put a topiary on top of this, and for those of you uh, that are familiar with topiaries, you use 12 balloons in duplets, which are two, you wrap them together and it gives you this nice sphere. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that sphere. What I noticed too in topiaries is that you always have a gap. If you look around it, you'll see a place where there's a wider gap. I use the wider gap and then I place it right over the top. I hold on the top and then I bring up the 650 here and the 650 there. And all you have to do is tie it in. You can wrap in or tie in, whichever you prefer. I prefer to tie it in. So we tie it in and it's pretty round, not too bad. What I'm going to do in addition to that is I'm going to put feather boas through it because you always want to cover your mechanics and you want to give it some, some fullness. Add some curly ribbons to it. Add some votives around the bottom and it, it's a nice presentation. You can use Qualitex foil balloons and do a pattern on top of your round. This is a nine inch cake plate. You get them at any bakery. You can actually get them at Hobby Lobby, any of your craft stores as well. Uh, and then you have a nice base where you could customize it and it's, be creative, it's fun, right? So I did another centerpiece to go along with this. Again, I used the votive. The reason being is I found these great light wands. And if you press the bottom, they change to uh, a, a variety of different colors, so three or four different modes. I'm not fond of the, the flashing lights, so I prefer the, the soft, hold on, we'll find it, that soft light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, because the mechanics of the light are only in the bottom of it, there's a little disc in there. All this space can come off according to the size I'd like it. This was another one of the centerpieces for this event. This is a Dollar Tree container that I decoupage, glittered, uh, I'm encouraging you guys all to go to your dollar stores because it's it's such a huge amount of really inexpensive things to play with and go and look and so that you can sell. Um, you don't have to you don't have to see it the first time you go see something, grab it and then then sell it. All right, so if you see this little tube here, if you look on top of my tooth tooth box, my tooth box, hello, my toolbox, I have two pieces of this that I then cut down the center and put on there. When you're on site and your crew um, is not quite sure how to behave, sometimes we've all been through it, 
And it, I, if I hear who's got scissors one more time, you know, right? So I always put scissors up on a rack like this. So when they use them, if they didn't bring their own, we have backups and they're visible for everybody to see. So I'm going to cut this according to the size of my jar. But the really cool thing is that because the mechanics of this light are on the bottom of it, you can't put it right in your container. So I am going to put it in my, or turn it on, because I just turned it off. Okay, see that beautiful color variety there? I'm going to put it in my Votive, and silly me, I found one that fits perfectly, and you push it in. Now you see there's about an inch top, right, on the top here that is not gonna push that button on or off. Very carefully, make sure it's snug. Go with, into your centerpiece, excuse me. Go into your centerpiece, oh! Boy, it didn't, it's not the right size. Do I have to do it again? I do. I have to cut it again. So you could just keep cutting this until it's the right size for you. Cut it off, push down, and there you go. You take your beautiful Qualitex balloons, helium balloons, beautiful ribbons. You have a centerpiece that not only lights in the base, but it also lights up the balloons and you'll see light in the bottom of each of your beautiful balloons. So this is a, it's a great uh, thing to use as well. Again, back to the Dollar Tree or the dollar store that you can um, purchase at. This was a dollar. This was a dollar. I made this centerpiece for under $3 with all the accents in it. I can put a feather boa. You can have uh, agates and beautiful balloons again on this. You could probably put a post in here, build a topiary on this one as well. Um, I just think this is the cutest thing for a black and white party. Half of them black, half of them white. I found these wonderful wire lights. You can get them online. Some of your suppliers might have them, but they're really easy to manipulate. I like to bend them and turn them around and you can wrap them around a post, whatever you need them to do. In this centerpiece, you could put it right inside. That'll light the bottom of it. I think you can see those nice white lights in there. And then take one of these wonderful Oasis glue dashes and put one on the back of this light. And then you take the white little square off. These are available at most of your floral uh, suppliers and your balloon suppliers now, I believe, I actually have them as well. And I just stick that right on the top. I like to um, put wonderful uh, balloons coming up out of here. You could do a topiary out of here too. I uh, put it on a foam round base, ostrich feathers around it, and then you're done. And this is a rental item, so reuse, reuse. That's the, that's the motto. So another thing about these crazy lights, which I want to tell you about, is this is how I store them. I wrap them on a piece of paper, cardboard preferably, and I tape them on here. Reason being is, if you've ever had Christmas lights and they're all tangled up, and we know your husband gets really mad, if you do it this way, you can bag them and drag them, put them in your, in your uh, bins to go work, and they come up nice and tidy. Okay, so that's another uh, a little tip for you. Okay, so this is the latest. I found this, again, online. One side of it is a sealing tool, a heat sealer. It's got two AA batteries inside. The other side is a bag opener. So if I have a bag of balloons that I need to open, I take it like so, and I go away from me. And guess what? I just opened this bag almost perfectly. The reason why I like this tool is because if you have a toolbox and it's readily available and you have a foil balloon that needs to be resealed, that's sprung a leak or you have an issue of something that needs to be sealed, you can then turn this little beauty around and again, just go to the, to the bag itself and you squeeze this, that's how it, it engages the battery and you just go along the line like so and then it seals the bag. I love it. One of my favorites. The next thing I want to show you is, I know for covering bases, a lot of people like to do a clean, swift base cover. You have it wrapped and it's tight and it's taped and it's pretty, and that's fine, but I'm a fabric girl. I like billowing fabric on things. So if I take that pillowcase, which I got online, um, take the non-opened end. Here's the open end. We're going to take the end that's closed and I'm going to fold it in half and you do want to press these. Don't go with them all wrinkled. Cut the corner like so. Then you can take this wonderful thing and I'm just going to use an example of this particular post because this is what we're going to show you next. 
Um, you just put this pillowcase on it, like so, top to bottom, before you put your balloons on. Oops, let's get rid of that. And now you have the most wonderful billowing effect on a piece. Now I know the balloons sit on top, but it's just lovely to see such shiny material, especially if it's one of the colors in your piece. I just love this concept. And then going over the top of it, everything could, you know, can be built right on top of that balloon wise. So here's another thing I came up with. That's another one that excites me because it saves time because usually you're sitting there playing around with them because they're waving in, this, in the air. This is a 650 on top of a Lomi pedestal on top of a tile. When I built topiaries for a centerpiece, they are wobbly, they don't seat properly. If you go like this, they kind of ploop over. It, it's been, a, it's been a, a process trying to figure out how to get them to seat properly. So I'm going to take my balloons. Again, this is a topiary, so it's 12 balloons. This one is actually one short. This is only 11 balloons, but it'll work. And I'm going to place it on top of here. I'm gonna grab the top of the post. I can feel it. And this is where all the magic happens, because it's the coolest thing. I'm gonna take my 650 over the top, over the bottom, and I'm gonna figure eight it. And guess what? It is there, and I can do this. This is exciting for me. Crazy. All right, another thing I'm gonna show you is this. A funny thing is, is that when we curl ribbons, you get all the static. If you have forgotten, forgotten, excuse me, your static guard in your um, toolbox, funny thing, lo and behold, hand sanitizer will do the same thing. Put it on your hands, wipe it around, and go like this, and your ribbons will sit still. It's, sometimes it's a, it's a problem, not all the time, but it's a nice thing to know. Okay, I wanna seat a three foot balloon inside this cone. This is part of a knot lamp. We're all familiar with knot lamps. This is the, the crazy uh, balloon stand that everybody seems to, uh, to love. In Illinois, it's um, purchased at Ikea. It's $10 or so, and it's got a wire through here, a torch here, and um, it comes in one foot sections. Each of these black sections are one, one foot on here. So I, I don't know, until the last year or so, I've never had a reason to have to keep this top part other than to, number one, put a foam ball on it. I figured out if you glue a foam ball in it and you have the beautiful plumes, you can seat those in there and then you have a beautiful uh, feather tree on top of the, the real clean looking knot lamp base. Uh, the other thing I found though is I had a, an event where I had to mount a three foot balloon on here. So this is how I did it. I, I, they were all in a row, like little soldiers. I'm gonna go grab a balloon, hang in there for one second for me. I'm gonna grab this three foot balloon and I'm gonna just do this demo for you so you guys are all set and ready to go. So I have a clamp on here. It is a hemostat clamp, it's a medical clamp. Um, it just holds things in place. You can get them at a medical store. They're, they're available, science stores have them too. I now have the 650 up here. I'm going to tie it in. Just like so. Tight quarters. Okay, and I'm gonna tie it in. And I'm gonna tie it again, because you always wanna double tie everything. Don't trust one single tie. If you do this twice, it's called the sailor's knot. It won't slip, it stays tight. And then I can put this balloon on top of here, pull with this part. I'm now going to flip it over take the hemostat off. This is what the hemostat looks like. And now I can just take this as tight as I want, go around here, and believe it or not, that's a finished thing. You do have this hole on the bottom, electric tape, uh, duct tape, anything like that. Once you put it in place, tape around it, cam uh, camouflage your mechanics. Always camouflage your mechanics. We don't want to see that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a beautiful presentation, a nice, easy way to keep it nice and tight on there. Another item that I have come across that I really like to work with is a cubicle clip. Cubicle clips are when you go into an office, you see the padded walls inside the cubicles in an office. This is a pin that actually has a sharp piece right here, a prong, and it has a clip here. So what I do is I can, on the back of a chair, I can slide this in the fabric, 
I can slide this on a curtain in the fabric because it's built for that. It's got the pins on there. I can put it in the front of a table in three spots and drape lights because not only does it have a pin that I'm just going to show you on this box that I pin in here, it has the clip, right? So now I can place these on the front of my table and clip my lights in at each end in the center. And then all you have to do is just camouflage your clip with your florals, with your balloons, whatever you want to camouflage it with. But this is such a great thing because it's super sturdy and it's got a great, a great clip on it. Again, these are office cubicle clips and they're, they're available at your office supply. You can get them online too. So uh, here's another example that if you'd like to see it on a dark, on a dark surface, if I open that up, you can see it pretty well. Three foot balloons and light pucks. I happen to be a huge lover of lights, right? So here is um, a brand uh, light that I use. These are remote, which is really a good thing. Again, these are available through your balloon suppliers. Um, it's an on off light. I've found that these don't work well in one mode. They burn, they burn out fast. So what you want to do is try and get them on a cycle mode or just know that they're only going to last three or four hours and that's it. But what you have to do is when you take this wonderful Qualitex three foot balloon, you use your strength and your might and you stick your fingers in there. Seriously, this is how you do it. And if you have a hundred tables, you best have help because you're going to be not able to move after that if you try it anyhow. So fingers all the way in, pull it apart and I've put a 650 on it so that I can then take it and push it right inside there and I won't lose it. There's the 650. And just one single line on it. I put the nipple part of it on the bottom of the puck just so it's got a little more resistance to it. Again, that sailor's knot, I'm gonna show you again. You go around your fingers. If you go once and then twice and pull it, that'll make it a permanent knot. So I have this in here. I just turn it this way, blow it up, tie it like you would a regular balloon and then you have it seated in something like this and you can change the color of it at, at random. You could, you know, the clients you can give them for a few problems I've done, give them the remotes and just say during the night, just click it on another color and, and it's fun and people enjoy, to enjoy doing that. Um, when it comes to design, I also like to build things in an A shape or a Mercedes shape. If that doesn't make sense to you, let me just show you this hot air balloon. When I put the net in it, you can see it's in three spots where the blue ribbon is. One, two, three. That just makes everything uniform. If I'm doing a design with flowers, I start it the same way where I do, I do a three point uh, Mercedes sign. Uh, again, I don't have a Mercedes, but, but it's just a great rule of design. It's, it's very easy to work with. So if you take your three, your three spots and then you build between those three spots and then you build between those three spots, you get the most beautiful, design ever. So this is another thing that I'm, um, I'm going to show you. And I just think that I learned this this year. Seriously, if you do hot air balloons, which I do, I think they're a great money maker. You put your three foot balloon on a weight at the height you'd like it in the room. I do them in two heights. I do one as a three foot or one is a, one is a, is this size and I'll pull one down a little bit. You have to make sure that your sight line across the table is visible. You don't want a three foot balloon in your face. It doesn't work well. So just make sure you always have two different heights and it doesn't look like a sea of, of one color. It gives you some, some, uh, some different uh, uh, structure in the room so it doesn't look so busy. And what I found out is that if you do it this way, you can then put your nets on it without holding the balloon at the same time because you know you have secured this, this uh, this balloon on here, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna stay right where you put it. So then I take my nets, and don't laugh at me, but I have another tip for you. If you know anybody in the medical industry, this happens to be an IV stand, a portable IV stand. I use it for tying ribbons. I use it for anything I need to not hold on with both hands. So it works out really well for me. So what I did was I put the, in the Mercedes pattern, I've put three rivet, three ribbon, rivets through on the net. And then what I do is because this is seated, I don't have any trouble putting this in the net because I have the liberty of not having to control the balloons. So then I put this on the floor. 
I can now put this over the top like so, right? I just made my life so easy by doing that. Okay, and I just pick this up, my net's in there, put my weight in the basket, and then you arrange your, your ribbons how tall you'd like it. And I'm just gonna say, let's try, you know, let's just try this tight. I've already pre-tied these, so um, this is the one I used. So anyhow, I'll, I'll do this quickly because we've got other things to discuss. So um, put it in your net, tie in here, and then when you're done with the, with the tying in at the base and you know everything is even by these knots all being in the same place, you then cut your center line and the balloon becomes taut in there and it'll stretch these um, connections out. Brilliant, brilliant idea. Uh, all the years that I sold these and had to hold that balloon and trying to net and hold and stick the balloon in there all at the same time, life-changing. Put it on a weight, put your net over it. It works like a charm, works great. Um, a couple more things I just wanna show you. Um, if you do use a floral tube like this, always cover your mechanics. I have a tile on the bottom. I have a, a piece of cork on the bottom of that so it doesn't scratch, anybody, scratch anybody's tables. I uh, put the ribbons on it. You can then put lights in the tube. You could put lights around the tube. You could put pearls in the tube, whatever you want. We could put that beautiful topiary on the top of that now um, to make that pretty. And that, it's just a nice presentation. What I'm trying to get at is always cover your mechanics. A few other things I'd like to go over before we close for today is my toolbox. I uh, go on a job site and I always make sure that I have enough supplies to, um, to do just about any task at hand. So I um, always check my toolbox and it's per job. I make sure that if I know I'm going to rig uh, an organic that I have things to rig organics with, if I'm going to build columns, I have screwdrivers and such. Speaking of screwdrivers. Another thing uh, that I just found recently was a good way to mark your tools. The Phillips um, screwdriver has a cross on it and the uh, straight edge has a, a dash in it. This allows you, especially when you have a toolbox that looks like mine, to uh, when you approach the toolbox to find your, the tool right away, in addition to the, to the crazy scissor holder that I've, I've put up here. So a couple things that I find that are really um, important in your toolbox are, um, first of all, some mounting pieces um, in case you, you need to fix uh, anything that you've brought in already um, completed. This is a uh, shish kebab skewer, which I love. It's a flat head. You can spray it any color you'd like. You glue this onto your um, product that you want to put into your centerpiece, and it's really a nice um, uh, presentation when you get that finished. Um, in addition, I always carry a couple extra dowel rods just to make sure if I have to mount anything that I do have it. Um, one thing I think is uh, probably the most mandatory thing in your toolbox is a side cutter. That looks like this. It is a tool that you can pull with, that you can snip with, easy to handle, and it's just a great thing to have in there. My trusty hemostats, I always have these in my bag. I have a small set of screwdrivers, Phillips and, and such, just in case any of my batteries go out, if I have to change batteries, uh, I have that ready for my use. In addition to that, for those of you that use helium or compressed air, if you have a valve and it springs a leak, you um, can take a piece of this white plumber's tape and go around the uh, outside of the um, the valve and hopefully when you put it back on your tank it will have sealed that leak and you'll be set to go so it's a nice emergency thing to always have in there um, I also have a side cutter uh, excuse me a, um, a wire cutter that's a great thing to have I always have a Qualtex hand inflator just something that is uh, always good to have in case you need it I do carry a six foot extension um, some people will say it's a little bit crazy but I like to have an extension cord in there I also carry zip ties and fishing line, which is mono line. And I carry it in a couple different um, uh, sizes. Usually 25 pound test is about the, the strength you need. If you're rigging and you have something from the ceiling, you want a little more strength, 
you could probably go up to a, a 50 pound, but usually you can do about anything you need to do with that, just that, that um, thickness of line. I carry rubber bands, different colors, different sizes. These are the um, braid rubber bands. They're real small, but they stretch out nice. In clear and in black, just keep a couple packages of, the, packages of those. I carry the um, famous clips in there. I carry my heat sealer bag opener, as I demonstrated to you earlier. In addition, I carry a bag full of command strips and clips. When you do organic work, a lot of times you're in a window or you're in a, on a window ledge where you really need to have a real tight um, connection. Conwood tabs work pretty well for that. In addition to that, I always uh, carry a clamp. Let's see if I can find you on here. I carry a clamp that I can clamp onto a ledge that is a tight fit, and then you put your uh, 260 or 650 that and connect into your organics that way. Just a nice, um, quick rigging point. If it is in a window or something um, like that, then you really need to make sure that you felt in between that so that you don't um, scratch their windows or paint, anything like that. I carry a pipe cutter because if you're doing anything on conduit or building anything with conduit, you need to make a quick cut. Quick cut. Uh, I always have one of these in there. Make sure that the blade is clean and new because that will make a big life change for you. I also carry adapters for power for a three prong to go in a two prong and a two prong to go in a three prong. It's best to have them in there so you're always prepared. Also, duct tape and pins, straight pins, pearl pins. I do a big variety. I actually also carry a plastic case that's in my truck um, at all times that has Velcro strips, that has conduit connectors, that has screws. Anything I would need to repair anything that I'm building or have brought in done, please make sure that you have adequate supplies to to repair because you don't want to be you want to be caught and not only that but if you do a freelance for another company and you're helping someone else out always bring your things with you because if you're prepared you'll look professional and and people will appreciate you more so another thing i have in here is one of the all-purpose tools that has all the different pieces in it i don't use it generally but i do like to have it um there will be an occasion where i might need it so i would use it um, some of my staff uh, like to work with these so I just make sure that I have have it available to everybody too um, Also, I have a pen. I have glue sticks. I have a tape measure I'm gonna go quick because we don't have much time left. I have a first aid kit always great to have a first aid kit um, have some uh, uh, Tylenol or Advil or something like that and just for your workers to make sure that everybody's feeling good and last but not least, I'm going to tell you about this because I believe in my heart that this is the biggest thing in a business, that if you're not prepared for this, it's not a good thing. So this is a wallet. Yes, a wallet. I put it in my toolbox. I have in here a real big stack of business cards. Always carry business cards. I put some in my back pocket and I put some in my toolbox. I have some in my truck to back those up. If you build a centerpiece, you can tape them underneath there. Do, do yourself a favor and advertise for yourself. If you're leaving something there that you've made, make sure everybody knows who made it. And the last thing I have to say is I always have cash, dollars and five dollars in my bag. And the reason why is that there are people in this industry, um, catering and um, door caps and those kind of guys, and they're just... They do something nice for you and make your life easier and, and help you along in your business. You need to make sure you take care of them. So I always have a few dollars and say, you know what, thank you for opening the doors for us and have a cup of coffee on us. So I am done. So I have lots more ideas, but this is the time we have for today. So I'd just like to tell you all, thank you so much for having me. Again, I'm Cindy Cronin, and I hope you learn just one thing, because if you learn one thing, it's going to be a great day. Have a good time at the convention. See you soon. Bye-bye. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you very much. Wasn't Indeed. that? Indeed. I, I don't know. Have we got, Info, have we got audio? Because the studio mic's off, I think. Because it's
blue over there. I'm going to say that it's blue on that side. No, you're looking at the wrong one. It's okay. It's that one you need. It's to all try. right. You're good. Okay. We're good. We're, we're good. golden. I was just double checking. You were distracting because you were thinking about that hemostat thing. Yes. Going, where can we get one of them from? Absolutely. Yes. Where can we get one of them from? Well, I hope uh, you enjoyed that as much as we did. We've been, we've been, we've been on the other stream as well for those guys who haven't. Yeah, we were over on the competition stream as yeah. well. We've been backwards and forwards, keeping an eye on between this one well, I and the I other was watch, one. I was watching the competition, I know. and I was watching the Kida. And then we also, as well, oh. in the middle of that all that, we had another load of information passed ooh, on to ooh, us ooh. that we need to pass on to you guys. No, no, sh no. no we have next to. Next stream. Tell them the right, next stream. Before we go on to the next what? stream, no, before we go on to the next stream, right. we have a bit of an announcement, um, which is really good for a lot of you guys. Uh, and I'm going to put it on the back screen if I can Do click it. the right button. How many hours in are we? There we go. Can we go full screen? We can. That, that's not full screen. That is full screen. No, that NDI is... Uh, there it is. Now you can do it. Now you can go full screen. There we go. It wasn't like um, it. So no, Qualitex, it so Pioneer, have um, created the Qualitex.myshopify.com store. You can get yourself over to there. And for a limited time, there limited. is um, uh, an exclusive for Q Corner viewers. What? Um, you when you guys. go over there, it will actually tell you that the store's, um, closed. the store's closed. Yeah, that it's coming soon or something. But in the top right, it says enter with password. You can use, make sure it's case sensitive as well. So it's uh, a capital T, capital V, and capital B on the very best. Put it back on okay. the screen. Thank you. So you get, yeah, so you get yourself to over to here and use this password, this one here, the very best. But it's capital T, capital V, capital B, the very best. Yeah. Um, you can get in, check in the top your right hand corner. Now, once you do that, what that will do is it will take you on to this uh, website. Let's see if do I've it. got this correct. Have you got I it? Is this. it there? Here we go. Look at them balloons. It will. Um, it'll take you to this website and um, you can um, click on the wrong thing again. That won't work. Uh, you can go through here. There's some grab bags. I'm going to give you a full screen. Access. Thank you. Uh, birthday grab bags, mystery grab bags, uh, seasonal grab bags, love grab bags, and it's saying as well. This is um, retired Qualitex balloons and educational um, materials. So this is great. This is what uh, some of the old conventions they used yeah. to do. You know, take along product, which is nothing wrong with the product. It's just you've got to at some point say, oh, we can't sell everything. Yeah, we've got to limit the range well because there's so much new stuff coming in. Let's Old make stuff some does space that be and they're bargains. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a look at Balloon Keith, Images Magazine. Put the away, please. We'll there's, a, uh, there's a few of the Balloon Images magazines that I don't have. I want to see if there's this any of these. True. But anyway, these are all issues of the Balloon Images magazines. Okay, what else we got up? on there as well? Balloon grab bags. Let's have a look at this mystery grab bag. Oh, it's a mystery. What's this? Oh, all sorts of different stuff in there. Look at that. So it is giving you an idea of what's in it, which is cool. So you're yeah. basically getting some idea. But this is a great way to build your inventory, a great way to have some stock to practice with, Absolutely. a great way to do displays for your store. I mean, it's $650 worth for $300. That is that's, a lot, really. That's right, so let's good, go back off to good, We'll get that off of there. Price. And I shall take that Thanks, Mr. Q. off there. So thank you indeed. I'll put that one back on there one more time on there yes. just so you've got the website qualitex.myshopify.com um, and the password is com. the very best but with the capital t the capital v the capital b absolutely so now, what we're going to do is we're going to have to close down we are, this we stream are half an hour behind schedule at the moment which yes. is i think for everyone well, being 27 on. minutes at the moment but yeah. half an hour by the time we finish here i think that's fantastic yeah we'll really catch you up on the next Yes, on. but what we're we going to do aware. is we're going to disappear, um, and because we have to do a full reset, because this has been going live so far for ten and a half hours, wow, uh, we have to do a full reset. So it's going so to this take us. Stream will stop. So make sure that you 20, go 20, to the 20, new stream. Twenty-five minutes. It's going to take. Yeah. And you can go to the new stream. It will be Let me be see if I can on. find the link. Go on. Let's get that in the, uh, the chat um, straight away. If I because you go, to you can here. go to it, and be ready for it, and we'll know you're waiting. So we'll yeah. know you're keen. 
Let me. So you can wait there for us. But whilst you're waiting, you can go and get a cup of tea. You can go and get yourself I'm, a sandwich. I'm doing my best. I'm going as fast as I Have can. Have a little nap, perhaps. We won't be. We'll be busy. But you can. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have yeah. to say though, for the first our first part though, thank it's you to crazy. all the instructors yeah. because they have done a fantastic job. Well, um, so much information. Yeah. I mean the. Uh, I'm comments, still trying to do two things at the same yeah, time. Yeah. You'd concentrate on that. The comments have been ban. Fantastic. We really appreciate it. And the instructors in the chat, I think, I don't know how fast to type with some of the questions. Oh, I'm looking on there. People are already over there. People are already oh, on we've stream got waiting two already. waiting. So I'm going to copy part. that link. You oh. can do it. But yes, the instructors in the chat are doing a fantastic job as well, along with all of our other uh, admins in there, keeping the translations going, the help, the hints, the tips, all that kind of stuff as well. So we really do thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts for that because it does make our job a whole lot easier. Right, I'm going to put this you in got here. It? Somebody's you found probably it? already done it, but... Uh... It doesn't harm to have it in twice. But if you're lost, lost, and you can't find it, you lose the link, don't know where you're going, and this stream shuts down, just go to the channel. Go to Q Corner. Yes, it's on there now. And it's you'll in the find chat. it, okay? So um, that's, that, says, uh, that is the, the link to go it. there. On the next um, on the next part, we have um, Stephanie Morris. We have Myra Machado. We have Zoe Adams-Jones, Jacenia Orantes, Dylan Rowe, Garlis Bolivar, Teriyaki Ito, uh, Dia Savana, Savania, and Nicole Gregg. So yes. we've got tons more content coming for that next section, it's which leads you through the morning. Again. It's absolutely packed full, so you won't be seeing very much of us. But we're going to disappear for the next we'll twenty minutes, in the chat though, twenty-five minutes, well. yes. and then we will be live on the other stream. So, uh, while you've got some time, you can actually visit the qualitex.shopify.com. Get yourself a bargain because remember, um, it's limited time and limited stock. Only with this password, Q Corner viewers can that get. That is right, though, isn't it? Limited uh, time and limited stock. Oh yeah, it's all limited stock because yeah. it's discontinued product. When well, it's, it's gone, it's retired, gone. Sorry, retired product. So yours for. 72 installments now. Right, we're going to go One say bye-bye for minutes. now. We're going to eat some um, snacks on sticks while we do a, refor a, a refresh of all of this. Uh, switch off that stream. <laughs> and you guys, get yourselves over on the other stream. Yep. The link's in the chat. Bye-bye. <laughs>